Today, we are gonna see Rimuru that time I got reincarnated as a Nekamata. So let's move on to the video. I honestly believe some higher being is out to get me. And I think they have a scooter. I know, it sounds ridiculous. Don't say stuff like that. It will get better. Thanks. By the way, I am not depressed enough to receive peptic like that. Thank you very much. It is a logical, factual conclusion that I arrived at. What? You don't believe me? Well, let me give you a rundown. I woke up this morning. That was my first mistake. I should have went back to sleep. But I started with a horrible migraine. It's cool. I can fight it off, pop a few aspirins, send it down with a shot, and I can be on my way. I walk out the gate of my apartment building, and for the third fucking time this month, some fucking tourist, speeding down with a scooter on the sidewalk, slams into me. I'm sturdy thanks to some self-defense classes I take it hurt, but the idiot got it worse. He skidded along the pavement and busted his face. Taking a deep breath, I made sure he is at least okay before I walk away. I didn't want to deal with this bullshit first thing in the morning. I couldn't even get two streets away before some idiot on the second floor knocked a flower pot down. It didn't hit me, but the freshly watered dirt sure flew everywhere. That was mainly all over me, because I stood not even a meter of war from the impact zone. Deep breath, deep breath, keep walking. I reached the store where I intended to buy my morning ritual dot energy drink, a box of cigarettes, and some pastries for breakfast. What I managed to get is a fucking bruised rib, because some fick nugget knocked one of the shelves down and who was standing there? You guessed it. The store owner got all Motherhin style and started fussing over me. I appreciated the care, but my blood pressure was over the 200 mark at this point. So after I assured her that I'm perfectly fine, but incredibly agitated, she treated me to my usual stuff. I even got some extra chocolate. It did help me calm down. Resuming my journey to work, because all this bullshit happened on a weekday before 6 a.m., why wouldn't it happen on a weekday before 6 a.m.? But I made it. Being a sous chef in a restaurant isn't the most relaxing job, but I have the personality and the love of food, so it's perfect for me. Walking in I can see my boss is already bitching about something on the phone. I could feel how good this day will be, routinely ignoring him. I changed into workwear to let the hell begin. It was an average day. We yelled at each other with the colleagues, wished cancer on everybody's mother, telling the currently loudest person every hour that the only reason they don't bark is because the dog wasn't fast enough if you don't get it stay innocent then the day was over i could feel my throat getting a bit hoarse we calmed down hugged it out drank a beer or two and came the time to go home which is where we approach the present i walked out of the restaurant a deep breath of the cooling air as night takes over day it's the best part of work honestly i could feel the tension leaving my shoulders as i was walking home and i could have known better really i was about to start my two weeks paid holiday i can't have it start on a good note now can i as I was nearing the crosswalk I leaned against one of the poles that usually stand at the side of busier roads. Because of that, I was off balance. And could you guess what happened next? Hmm, I'll give you a hint. It happened once today if you guessed another stupid tourist on a scooter, you'd be correct. As they turned the corner and tried to skid to a halt, they knocked me over. Right. Into. Oncoming. Traffic. Have you ever got hit by a fast approaching pickup? The impact from the scooter shocked me enough that it took me until I finished rolling from the car to register what happened. And it hurt. I sort of noticed people rushing to me, but my mind was occupied by the pain and my not-so-subtle anger issue filled thoughts. Fuck this pain. Arg. I wish I could ignore this shit. Confirmed. Pain nullification acquired. It feels like I'm burning up from the pain. It's too hot. Can someone get an ice pack? I'd prefer the cold. Confirmed. Thermal fluctuation resistance acquired. I bet if I were some big beefy dude this wouldn't hurt so much. Maybe I could just shrug it off and walk away. Confirmed. Impact resistance acquired. So much for my two weeks of getting lost in fantasy stories. If I could use magic I would blast these fuckers away. Like an all-powerful witch or something. Confirmed. Unique skill. Magical prodigy acquired. I should have known better. I was always studious. I learned quickly, if only I could have done something with what I learned. Instead I stagnated, while being content in a restaurant. Confirmed. Unique skill, Akasic records acquired. I felt my mind slipping into darkness. So this is it? Huh. If I get the chance at a next life I want to be a cat. Confirmed. Constructing a compatible body according to the individual's intent. If I were a cat, I could get away with everything everybody loves cats. It would be such an easy life. 
confirmed. Unique skill, loved by nature acquired. As my vision turned completely dark, I had one last thought. I hope my next life will be easier, if there is a next life at all. As I slowly came to my senses the first thing I noticed was that I wasn't dead. I know, shocking. The next thing I noticed was that the place I was in didn't look familiar at all. It looked like a cave, am I dreaming? I feel weird all over my body. As I tried to stand up I fell back down. My limbs felt off, bending at a wrong angle. I looked at my legs, and it took me a minute to put together what I was seeing. Naya? Wait a minute Naya. Looking at my body I couldn't really deny what happened to me. Dark blue fur covered my everything, and I had two tails for some reason. But other than that, I'm a cat. How did I speak? Cats can't speak. And I have such a high-pitched voice. Answer. It is because your physiology is a monster. Who was that? Answer. It is your unique skill, Akasic Records. My what now? Answer. It is your unique skill, Akasic Records. Okay? Could you explain to me what's going on? From the beginning? Answer. Your soul has been integrated into the system as your life was expiring. According to your desires in your last moments, you received multiple skills and were reincarnated into the body of a feline monster known as Nekamata. I am a cat monster. I see aren't Nekamatas are a type of yaokai from Japanese folklore? You said that I can speak because I am a monster called Nekamata, right? Answer. You are capable of speech, because you are a monster. Monster physiology consists mainly of magicules, which is why your biology differs from regular animals. Magicules? What are those? Answer. Magicules are the building blocks of life. They are everywhere and are the main source of energy for beings such as yourself. So basically mana. Answer. It is an inaccurate comparison. According to your memories, mana is a fictional energy that fuels magic. Magicules are molecules that exist on the spiritual plane. Then how can my body made from it? Am I a spirit monster? Answer. Monsters are beings that are closer to spiritual ones than physical ones, but they still pose as a material body. You also mentioned some sort of system, and that my soul got integrated or whatever. What system were you talking about? Answer. The world system was put into place by the stellar king dragon, Veldanava to aid the world he created, and those who live in it. It monitors and regulates every individual and their skills, strengths, desires, achievements. And how did I get integrated into this system? Answer. This information is unavailable. Of course it is you said that I gain multiple skills. What are they? And what do they do? Answer. You receive thermal fluctuation resistance, which grants you resistance against both cold and heat. You received pain nullification which blocks any form of pain. You received impact resistance which grants you resistance against kinetic energy. You receive the unique skill, magical prodigy, which allows you to learn any type of magic with significant ease. It allows you to minimize the cost of spells while maximizing their efficiency. It removes the need for chanting and allows you to cast spells instantly. It also grants you resistance against every type of magic. You receive the unique skill, loved by nature, which makes other living beings trust you and like you on an instinctual level. This effect can be negated by other unike skills, if someone possesses a strong enough will, or if other emotions override their affection towards you. You receive the unique skill, Akasic Records, which allows you to accelerate your thought process by a thousand times. It allows you to gain knowledge that is recorded and available to you according to the world system. It allows you to analyze anything you come in contact with. It allows you to acquire skills at an accelerated rate. It also grants you resistance against any attacks that can directly affect your mind or spiritual body. Well goddamn, I am one overpowered cat. All of my skills sound powerful. Answer. The previously mentioned skills aren't all of sour skills. You also possess the intrinsic skills of the feline monster known as Nekamata. And what are they? Answer. Shadow movement which allows you to enter and move through shadows. Air walk which allows you to move through the air like on the ground. Yaokai flame which allows you to summon fire, filled with spirit magic. Petrified idol which allows you to turn into a statue. While using this skill, you are unable to move, and you are immune to physical attacks. In this state you cannot be moved either, against your will. Well I ran out of questions. One thing is for sure, I am not dreaming. Standing up on all fours was weird, but after a few minutes it kinda felt natural. With that out of the way, I looked around properly. The cave didn't have anything outstanding. It looked barren, in fact. How can I see without any light? Answer. Predator monsters are able to see in the dark. Oh yeah, you can hear my thoughts too. Anyways, wouldn't that be a skill on its own? Answer. It is an ability of your material body. And my skills aren't? Answer. Skills are the manifestation of the soul, and such they are abilities of your spiritual body. 
I see dot by the way, where am I? Answer, you are in the sealed cave in the great forest of Jura. Okay, it's no use standing around like this. Let's explore the cave. There wasn't much to explore. Everywhere I looked, there was nothing. Just an empty cave. And then more empty cave. Seriously, I figured since it has an ominous name and everything, this place would at least house some monsters. The hours started to blur together as I walked and walked and walked. How long was I walking? Answer, it has been three days, four hours and twenty-six minutes since you started walking. Wait, what? How did I walk for more than three days? I don't feel hungry or tired at all. Answer. The closer a monster to a spiritual being the less their material body requires material maintenance. What? Answer. Spiritual beings sustain themselves on magicules and do not require food or sleep. Nekamatas are monsters that were formerly superior spirits, which is why you don't need to consume food or require sleep. So I can't eat or sleep. That's a bummer. Answer. You can consume food. Your body will convert it into magicules. You can also sleep if you wish. That's good to know. I'm a cat after all. It would be a shame if I couldn't sleep. And I just like eating in general. But back to my previous problem. There is nothing in this cave. Akasic Records. Can you point me in a direction where there is something? Anything. I am just bored out of my mind. Answer. If you follow along this path with the same speed you have been moving previously, you will find what you are looking for in two hours, according to your parameters. Whoa, what is it? Answer dot. Wait, no, don't tell me. I want it to be a surprise. Two hours? Huh. What if I run? Answer. At your maximum speed you can reach your goal in 20 minutes. Well then, time to run, like a cat out of hell. I started sprinting as fast as I could. It felt surprisingly good to run. Maybe it's the cat talking from me. The minutes ticked by, and soon I started to see light. I was getting closer. As I neared my destination, a booming sound shook the cave. It felt like an earthquake. What was that? I peeked into the large opening where the light was coming from, and I honestly admit, I nearly pissed myself. There was a huge fucking dragon there, pitch black body littered with scars and glowing golden eyes. Then the dragon started to laugh. It was his laugh that caused that earthquake? Dear lord. Suddenly the dragon looked towards me. Ho ho, another unique monster spawned in my cave? It seems the world itself gave me company. Kuha ha 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 come here little one, I won't hurt you. Well, shit. I mean he is intimidating because he is a dragon, but he doesn't seem like a bad guy. Kuha ha 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 ha. You aren't afraid of me either? What a surprise. Come here and let's talk, the three of us. Three? I walked towards the dragon and true enough, I saw a small blue blob peeking around a rock. A slime about the same size as me. It looks cute. Hello, uh, mighty dragon. Indeed, I am the great storm dragon, Voldora. One of the four true dragons. It's good to meet you, Voldora. And who is the slime? The slime in question rolled towards me and waved two small appendages in place of greeting. I lifted a front paw in return. It looks really cute. This little one doesn't have the ability to speak, but he says hello. I can open up thought communication between you two if you want. Sure, it sounds good. Suddenly I felt a small tingling in my head. Akasic Records, is this the thought communication? Answer, that is correct. Allow Voldora to establish the link? Yes. Hello, I heard a high-pitched voice in my head. Is this you, Slime? Yup, nice to meet you. To think I'd have two unique monsters born in my cave. The world is full of surprises. Tell me about yourselves. After you, Slime, you were here first. He bobbed himself like he was nodding and started his tail. It's not that interesting of a story. I was living a normal life as a human in my old world. I got stabbed and after I died, I woke up here as a slime. With nothing better to do, I started eating everything in the cave out of boredom. And after some time, I ended up here by accident. It is one hell of a coincidence then. What do you mean? I was walking home from work as a human when I got hit by a car. Next thing I know, I wake up here as a cat monster. So both of you are reincarnations. It is quite unheard of, actually. There are plenty of otherworlders who were summoned here. But never have I encountered someone who reincarnated from another world. Truly fascinating. The slime perked up at the mention of other people from our world. I wanna meet these otherworlders. You want to leave already? Are you pouting? I felt stupid for asking, but I couldn't help with how flabbergasted this made me. I idiot. Of course not. I locked metaphorical eyes with the slime, and it seems he is on the same conclusion as I am. You're definitely pouting. Are you perhaps stuck here? This place is called the Sealed Cave for a reason I assume. 
You are correct, I've been sealed away 300 years ago by a hero after I accidentally burned down a town. Or was it a kingdom? I can't really remember. Anyways, the hero used her unique skill, unlimited imprisonment to lock me here, and I've been terribly bored and lonely for a long time now. Slime shimmied up to the translucent barrier and touched it. He was humming to himself for a bit before he spoke up. I might have an idea. Do you have a skill that can free him? Maybe. My unique skill? Predator can eat anything. I could eat Voldora with his seal and analyze it from the outside, while he does the same from the inside. Hmm. What do you think, Voldora? You would do this for me? Of course. We are friends, aren't we? Said the slime to the dragon. That's a fairy tale if I ever see one. FF friends a slime and a cat being friends with the great storm dragon? Oh my god, he is embarrassed. I am a naughty embarrassed. Very well. I shall allow you two to call yourselves my friends. Feel honored. Just can't be honest, eh? Either way I like people like you. Tough on the outside, but a softy on the inside. He is pouting again. So freaking cute I can't. Reminds me of my old boss. Okay Voldora, are you ready? Before we do this, I shall give you two names. It will give you my blessing and divine protection. In return, you two come up with a name. It will be what humans call a family name. It will mark us as equals. I looked at the slime and fell in thought. Voldora is the storm dragon, right? Slime, I'm thinking something thunder related. Something cool. What do you say about Tempest? Doesn't that mean time? Oh, it just sounded close to Tempest. So I thought it means the same. Wait, that's it. Tempest. It sounds awesome and relates to storms. Giving it some thought. Yes, it does sounds cool. Yeah, okay, I like it. Tempest it is. What do you think, Voldora? Ha 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 ha. Tempest, I love it. It sounds strong and magnificent, like I am. Excellent. From this day I shall be known as the mighty storm dragon, Voldora Tempest. He seems to like it, I whispered towards the slime. He sure does. As for you too, you, little slime, from this day shall be known as Ramuru Tempest, and you, little Nekamata, shall be known as Vitandi Tempest. I felt a sudden surge of energy course through my very being. The name Vitandi Tempest has been engraved on my soul. And with that, I gain a family. Vitandi Tempest. Just saying it makes me giddy for some reason. To my side slime, no, Ramuru was feeling the same. Ramuru Tempest my name is Ramuru Tempest. Because we share a name it grants us a connection. With that, you can always talk to each other using thought communication, no matter how far apart you two might be. You can even share your skills with each other. And once you've grown stronger, my skills will be available to you as well. I was shocked at that. So much power granted to us, just like that. There has to be a way I can return this kindness. Then an idea struck me. If we are connected permanently, maybe I can help analyze the seal. My unique skill can do a lot of things. Rimuru looked towards me in anticipation. What can it do? Akasic Records. Can you use the connection between us to help with Rimuru's analysis? This time, both Voldora and Rimuru heard my skill. Answer. It is possible to utilize the Soul Corridor to aid Ramuru Tempest with analyzing the unlimited imprisonment. Whoa, your skill sounds just like mine. Great Sage, can you work with Akasic Records to speed up the process? And now it was my turn to be surprised. A somewhat different feminine, but robotic voice sounded in my mind. Notice. Performing the analysis in tandem with the unique skill, Akasic Records will expedite the process exponentially. We both have talking skill. Perhaps it's not so rare after all. Answer. According to the recorded information available in the world system, Akasic Records and Great Sage are the only two unique skills capable of communication with their users. Notice. The extra skill, Sage is capable of limited communication, but it doesn't pose as the autonomy of the unique skills, Great Sage and Akasic Records. Looking at Ramuru, I was sure we were thinking the same thing. It seems I hurt their pride a little. Apologize then. We can't have our skills pouting. Notice answer. The unike skill, Great Sage Akasic Records, do not pauses the trait you referred to as pride. Rimuru snorted a laugh which is impressive, seeing as he did so in his mind. Now they teamed up, so it would seem. I'm sorry Akasic Records, Great Sage. You two are awesome and unique. Answer notice. It is unnecessary to apologize. Skills do not possess emotions. With that settled. Voldora, are you ready? Yes. I await your suckses. Make sure to gather a lot of interesting stories to tell me. I smiled, or I did the equivalent of a cat smile, at him. Once we get you out, we'll tell you every adventure we went through. So just you wait. You won't hear the end of it. Exactly as Vitandi said. We'll gather a lifetime's worth of stories to tell you. 
so you don't get bored ever, all right? Great sage. Notice. Use the unique skill. Predator? Yes. I watched an Oz Ramuru sprung over the barrier, enveloping all of it. He started to shrink down, and in less than 30 seconds, Voldora was gone. Notice. Analyze unlimited imprisonment? Yes. Vitandi. On it. Akasic Records. Answer. Commencing aid towards Great Sage's analytical process, utilizing Akasic Records access to the world system. Well then, what do you say, Vitandi? Should we leave the cave and explore the world? Lead the way, my slimy friend. I have you know that I'm incredibly soft and squishy. The epitome of a cute sly what are you doing? Jumping right on top of him, I relaxed into his soft body. You're right you are really comfy carry me Ramuru. I heard him heave a sigh as he started moving forwards. You really are a cat. Next time you will carry me. If you can get yawn smaller, sure. I don't need sleep, but you are so comfy. I think I'll doze off a bit. I'll wake you if something interesting happens. Ramuru's pov. She is sure fast asleep. I was more of a dog person, but I like cats too. I wonder reaching up with a small slime hand I started petting her head, and she started to purr. So cute. Going through the cave I encountered some monsters, but none were a threat. Quickly beating them with water blade, I ate them to get their skills. There was a dinosaur with body armor. A spider that gave me steel thread and sticky steel thread. A large snake that gave me poison breath. I ate every single one of them. My favorite was a giant bat that gave me an ultrasonic skill. And with that I gained the ability to talk. I decided to use it as a little surprise to wake up Vitandi. She was still asleep on top of me. PST. Vitandi. Hey, wake up. She stirred and slowly opened her eyes. Huh. Now that I see it closer, her eyes are glowing. In fact, every part of her is blue. The fur, the eyes, even the toe beans. Guess what I learned? She blinked at me a few times before it seemed to register. You can talk. How did you do that? Ha ha ha. My predator gives me the skills of everything I eat. I ate a giant bat. I'm using its sonic attack to speak. Wow, that sounds handy wait. How did you fight a monster without me waking up? I killed like a few dozen, while you slept. Seriously, you are a heavy sleeper. Maybe because I'm a cat. Or the monsters just weren't big deals. No, they weren't. I one-shot them all. Hmm. Did you get any good stuff? I dunno. I have some sort of body armor, spider silk, poison breath, and some resistant skills. They sound kinda boring. Although that spider silk sounds interesting. Share it with me. Great Sage, how do we share our skills? Notice, you can link a skill to the soul corridor connecting you to the individual, Vitandi Tempest. Hey Ramuru, do you think we can link all of our skills? Answer, aside from intrinsic skills unique to the biology of a monster, you can share every skill between yourself and Ramuru Tempest. Thanks Akasic Records. Okay then, let's share every skill we can. Notice, unique skills cannot be shared. Why is that? Answer. Unique skills are the manifestation of an individual's desires, which is why it cannot be used by someone else. It is possible though to share certain subskills from unique skills. So what does that mean? Notice. The subskills of the unique skill, Great Sage cannot be shared. The subskill mimicry from Predator can be shared. And what can I share from my unique skills? Answer. The unique skills, Akasic Records and Loved by Nature, cannot be shared. From the unique skill, Magical Prodigy you can share the subskills, Universal Magic Resistance, Chantless Casting and Instantaneous Casting. Awesome. Let's share everything and we can sort it later. I found the exit thanks to my magic sense, so we can finally leave the cave. Why didn't you say that sooner? Rimuru, I didn't spend as much time as you did here, but I'm extremely craving for sunlight. All right, all right, just stop scratching me, it feels weird. We let our skills sort the sharing and move towards the exit, finding a huge door. Before we even had a chance to examine it, it started to open on its, well, not on its own. There were three humans pushing the door open. Vitandi and I rushed behind some rocks to hide. We didn't know what to expect, so it's better safe than sorry. The three casted some invisibility spell and walked inside a cave. Sneaky pervs. I have to befriend them later. Suddenly a chill ran down my back. Turning around, I saw Vitani staring at me. And why would you need to befriend them? Uh, it's not what you think. I just want to make sure they don't use it for bad. Use what? That invisibility stuff. She kept staring daggers at me for a minute before turning around and walking out with a huff. Perverted slime. I rushed after her, trying to defuse the situation. I'm sorry, okay? It just crossed my mind unintentionally. I'm a man, these thoughts just come up on their own. She gave me another piercing glare at that. I swear I would never do something like that. 
really? She sounded skeptical. Crap, I promise, look before I died I didn't really have anyone dot ever, like that, you know. So it just crossed my mind. Her glare lingered before disappearing. So you promise you are not some creep? I promise. She looked me over, before trotting over and slumping down on me. If I catch you doing some weird hentai stuff, I'm giving you the worst cat scratch fever ever. I promise I won't. How did you know I was Japanese? She looked at me quizzically at my question. You're Japanese? You didn't know? No. Then how do you know what hentai is? We had a stare down that I know I shouldn't win. My reasoning was off as well. So, I looked away a bit embarrassed. So, where were you from? I mean before. Austria. That's in Europe, right? Yup. Right in the middle of it. It's a nice place. Good weather, good food. Lots of stupid tourists. Not a fan of them? Considering I was hit by one, no. But regardless of that, I worked in a restaurant. People aren't exactly the dot comest in a kitchen. Work for nearly two decades in one, and you develop some anger issues. And tourists tend to be the rudest. Yeah, we fell silent after that. The forest was calm around us. The sun peeking through the canopy, it was warm. Maybe it's spring here. I wonder what this world is like. Well, if it's a standard fantasy world, then probably Middle Ages. Vitandi's Pav. We fell silent for a while. I was enjoying the warmth from the sun and the cool sensation from Ramuru. My thoughts lingered on him. He said that he didn't have anyone. He was probably lonely. Not like I'm any different. You know I didn't have anyone either. Back home. I see. It's not like I didn't really try. But when I was younger I wasn't the easiest person. And it just sorta stuck with me. You seem like a good person to me. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Doesn't change the fact that I have a difficult temper. Hey, don't be so gloomy. We have each other now. I can be the calm scatterbrain, and you can be the temperamental focused one. I couldn't help the laugh escaping me. Smooth. How did you manage to remain single? I was kinda shootin', and I didn't do more than the obligatory socializations. Hmm, maybe we should try to make new friends here. Have a social life. Rimuru? I looked at him curiously, but his focus was elsewhere. He was staring straight ahead. It's weird how I can tell where he is looking without distinguishing features. I looked up to see a bunch of small green people staring right at us. They look scared. What happened? Answer. These creatures are goblins, one of the weakest races living in the great forest of Jura. They appear to be scared of you and Rimuru Tempest. Be you caught that Rimuru? Oh yeah, it's good to know that thought communication works too. A goblin with a red bandana stood at the front of the group. He was shaking, but stood firm. May I inquire, W what business do you have here? Strong ones. V what? R. Does he mean us? Notice. The aura exuded by the individuals Ramuru Tempest and Vitandi Tempest, showcases their strength which frightens the goblins. V O. That explains it. R. I think we should play into the role a bit. I don't think they would calm down if we just said we mean no harm. V after you, oh great slime ward. Are very well, my fascinating feline friend. So you could sense our auras. I commend you. We are merely traveling through. Or perhaps you have business with us. V nailed it, Ramuru. It sounded cool. R, thanks. Why yes. Could you please come with us to our village? We would like to ask for your help. R oi, he is kneeling. What do I do? V my turn to act high and mighty. Raise yourselves. We will hear you out at your village. Lead the way. The goblin scrambled to his feet and bowed to us. Thank you. This way please. We followed them down the path to their village. Our nice acting. Vitandi. You sounded regal and everything. What's your secret? VDND. Lots and lots of DND. R let me guess. You were the decimeters? V of course I was. Lore galore from the Gorgal Lord. RPFT. What's with the cheesy title? V one of my friends came up with it after we ran a horror campaign. R I haven't played that much DND. So I don't really know what's that. But I can guess. We arrived at the goblin village. Well, calling it a village is generous. It was some shoddy sheds and ripped tents. I don't want to be rude, but they are in a really sorry state. We were led into a bigger house to meet with the elder. He told us what's going on in the forest, and how they are in danger from a pack of deer wolves. Our poor things. V yeah, Akasic records, what would happen if we refused? Answer. The goblins would face complete extermination. V ouch. We should help them. R, they are scared though. Would they feel safe if we just offered free help? V, what do you suggest? R, play along for now. Ramuru put me beside him and started petting my head. It was surprising, but it honestly felt good. Dot, am I purring? Wow, I really am a cat. I understand your plight, but this begs the question. What can you offer in return? V, is this really okay? 
or trust me, I don't want anything. But this way they will trust us more. They won't think we have any hidden intentions. V makes sense. The elder and his son looked at each other then bowed down to us even more. We swear our loyalty to you too. R, uh, V now what? R we will figure it out. V if you say so. Very well. Then in the absence of the storm dragon, we shall protect you. First, show me to your injured. We went to another house. About a dozen goblins laid there in dirty bandages. I watched as Ramuru swallowed them whole, only to spit them out healthy. V what was that? R I have a bunch of healing potions in my stomach from the herbs I ate in the cave. V so that's why the cave was so empty. R yeah, I ate everything. Thank you Lord Ramuru. You're welcome. What should we do next, Vitandi? What indeed? I didn't really try out any of my skills yet. Using thought acceleration I decided to ask Akasic Records about what I can do. Answer. Utilizing your unique skill, Magical Prodigy. You can use any type of elemental magic if you want. This would be the most beneficial against your wolves. Would you like to learn universal elemental manipulation? Yes. Wow, just like that? This skill is broken as hell. R tell me about it. I had to get dunked into water and mess around with it to get my extra skill, water manipulation. V well, now you have this to use. R all right, let's get back on track. What's our next move? V, hmm, I have an idea. Looking at the elder and then the rest I came up with a game plan. Elder, gather the goblins who can do physical labor. They will build a fence around our village. We can't build something sturdy, but we can have it as our line of defense. We'll get right to it, Lady Vitandi. Ramuru joined in to the planning. Elder's son. Do you guys know archery? Yes. We hunt small animals frequently. In that case we have our plan. Build the fence, and you guys will be standing there, shooting arrows at the deer wolves. Me and Vitandi will be the attackers at the front. Ramuru. We should probably try to hide our auras. It might cause us trouble with the wolves. You're right. Okay. Everyone. Get moving. If what you gathered is correct, the wolves attack tonight. A resounding chorus of affirmatium later the goblins rushed to do as they were told. Or how do we hide our auras? Notice. By focusing your magicules inside your own body. I watched as Ramuru focused on the task. He looked like a constipated slime. Suddenly the air felt emptier around us. Huh. It worked. Can I do the same? Answer. You are capable of the same feat as Ramuru Tempest. Focusing on my own magicules. I tried to force them to stay in my body it worked. Nice. Are now we look like just an adorable cat in a squishy slime. V what kind of cat is blue? Not to mention I have two tails. R and I'm a slime. Your point? V touche. Night came rather quickly, and we heard the howling of the deer wolves. It was time. Rimuru and I stood outside of the makeshift fence the goblins put together. On top of a nearby hill, we saw them. About a hundred deer wolves, their figure looked imposing against the moonlit sky. But according to magic sense they weren't anything we should be afraid of. R, they look intelligent. You should give them a warning. V you give them a warning, your voice is deeper. R what? V it was a movie reference. I always forget that only Hungarians and Austrians like those movies. Forget it. I'll play the menacing one. Listen up, little puppies. I'll give you one warning. Leave this village alone. Or else. R that sounded kinda generic. V would you like to give it a try? R no, no, yours was perfect. V M H M. Sure. The pack leader sent out about a dozen wolves to attack, but most were cut down by the steel threads we put up. The leader rushed in, biting through them, only to get caught by the sticky thread in front of us. I told you. One warning. I conjured a blue lighting bolt and struck down the wolf, its lifeless body dropping to the floor. V it's quite ironic. R. Hmm. V my first kill in this world is a cat monster. And it's a dog. R ironic indeed. V eat it. Scare the rest off. Rimuru engulfed the corpse and turned into the wolf. He activated its skill, menaced to make the rest of the pack scatter. The wolves pushed forward and suddenly laid down, whimpering. The one in front with a star shape on its forehead spoke up. Our pack yields to you. V what? R did we win? V I guess, and with that, we achieved our first victory in this world. The next day found us with a group of goblins and deer wolves staring at us expectantly. V what now? R we set some ground rules for them. Okay, before we move forward we need to have some rules. First, don't attack humans. Second, no fights between each other. Third, no belittling other races. V I think we should clarify the first. R what do you mean? To make it clear, the first rule about humans is in place to protect you. Humans are numerous. If you attack one, they retaliate in groups. You can protect yourselves, but don't seek out fights. R.I.C. Now then um what are your names again? Monsters usually don't have names, Lord Ramuru. Then we will name you. 
are you sure? The others looked equally surprised. Yeah, I'll name the males, and Vitandi will name the females. What do you say, Vitandi? Eh, hey, why not? I'll leave the wolves to you though, since I'm a cat and all that. All right everyone, form a line. Male goblins and the deer wolves to me. Female goblins to me. We proceeded to name all of them. At the end I felt like a freight train hit me. V I'm so sleepy. R yeah me too. Everything went dark. It felt like I was floating. After who knows how long I started to stir. Slowly opening my eyes I found myself in one of the houses, laying on something soft and squishy. Looking down I confirmed that I was sleeping on Ramuru. He looked to be asleep too. Hey Ramuru hey, wake up. He came too, also a bit confused on what happened. Vitani what happened? I don't know. I just woke up. The tarp at the door lifted, and a beautiful green-skinned girl stepped in. Lady Vitandi, Lord Ramuru, it's good to see you recovered. I'll bring Elder Rigard here. And with that she walked out. V who was that? Are you tell me you named the females? V I think I would remember a pretty girl like her. The tarp moved again and then walked, what you would call, a chad. Jesus, Lord Ramuru, Lady Vitandi, it brings me great joy to see you awake. Rigard is that you? Indeed my lord, the name you granted me allowed me to evolve. He was flexing his arms hard. The Akasic? Answer. Naming a monster consumes magicules from the name giver. A monster who receives a name grows stronger and in some cases, evolve into a new species. The male goblins evolved into hobgoblins and the females into goblinas. R that's why we passed out? Notice. In order to speed up the recovery of magicules, the individuals Ramuru Tempest and Vitandi Tempest entered sleep mode. R the more you know. V the less you want to. R touche. W well. Congratulations on evolving. Thank you, my lord. A sudden gust of wind pushed us back and in front of us stood a giant, and I mean bigger than a bear, wolf with a horn on its head. My masters, it fills me with happiness to see you awake. Renga, wow, you grew big. V, that's the wolf with the star. What happened? Answer. Renga evolved into a tempest wolf. Things are getting more and more weird. At least we have some good stories to tell. Rimuru, deal with your pup. I'll take a look around the village. Things were going well. The hunting party returned every day with abundant catch. That is as far as the good news go. Housing was an issue, because none of the goblins were architects. Not to mention the clothing situation. I could see Ramuru trying his very best, but when some of the goblinas' clothes just simply fell apart in front of him, there wasn't much he could do. Rigard, where did you obtain your clothes before? There are some kobold merchants who travel through here once or twice a year. Aside from them, Sometimes we travel to the armed nation of Dwargan to get some supplies. Dwargan? Yes, my lady. The nation of dwarves. You mean the race famously known for their kratzmen? Indeed. I see. Rimuru. Oi. Where you at? Rimuru rolled out of one of the houses after I yelled for him. What's up Vitandi? What do you say about visiting the nation of dwarves to get some professionals for our village? He was positively glowing with excitement at the sound of that. Dwarves, yes, that's exactly what we need. Rigard, you'll be in charge of the village while we travel there. And just to make sure everything will be smooth while we are gone, I hereby name you the Goblin Lord. I could sense Rigard growing stronger from that. Huh, it seems we can give them titles, not just names to make them stronger. Oh yeah, Great Sage told me about it. V food for thought once we get back. Does anyone here know how to get to Dwargan? Yes, my lady. My son Rigor and Gobda can guide you there. Vitandi, we can take the Tempest Wolves to get there faster. Good idea. Well then, no better time than the now. Go get the wolves. I get Gobta and Rigor. We grabbed our guides and went on our merry way. These wolves were fast. What would have taken months, only took a week. One night we were asking details about our destination. It seems that anyone and anything is welcome in Dwargan, as long as you obey the law. That includes monsters. Rimuru got stuck on the elves though. I can't really blame him. Elves are beautiful. V Rimuru, I won't stop you from daydreaming, but please try to focus once we are inside the city. R don't worry Vitandi, I'll remain laser focused. V alright? We reached our destination and got in line with Gopta, Rimuru and me. The others set up camp at the edge of the forest, and of course we ran into trouble instantly. Some thugs tried to attack us, but it went as well as you would imagine. The cherry on top was that we got arrested. Luckily for us Rimuru got us out by giving them a barrel of potion so they can heal some injured dwarves. The guard who took us in, showed us a bit around and introduced us to a master blacksmith named Cajun. I'd be happy to help you out, but I have to get this order ready. 20 Magisteel Swords by next week. He was sadly I don't even have the ore for it. Oh, really? Rimuru, I think you can help out our newest friend, don't you think? 
Hmm. Oh, oh, you are right. Hey, old man, what do you think? He spat out an entire cluster of Magisteel. Would this help you out? It took him a minute, but when he realized what he was looking at, he nearly face landed onto his anvil with how fast he tried to get around it. Oi, 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 oi. That's an entire cluster of purified Magisteel, and the highest quality I've ever seen. Where did you get this? I gave my best cat smirk to answer. Perhaps you can find out at our village. Rimuru played the good guy with the negotiation. Or if your heart keeps you here, we can settle for some om you recommend to come with us. Also, can I see the sword you already finished? S sure. He brought out a straight sword that was glowing a magical purple. It was really pretty and simplistic. Rimuru got to work immediately. He gobbled up the weapon and in a minute spat out 20 exact copies. Consider this a gift. I hope the craftsmen you recommend will live up to their hype. The nice one. R thank you. After that they invited us to a bar. Yup. I could have guessed. It was a hostess bar. With elves. I could feel Ramuru's dot intrigue with them. I won't complain though, because these ladies were very gentle with petting me. I was feeling like a queen. R I'm glad you like it. V shash. We don't talk about this once we get out. R yes, yes. The dwarves were chatting around us. The blacksmith and his brothers. Whom were the dwarves that needed the potion by the way? The world is small, but then again, we are inside a mountain. One of the elves asked Ramuru if he wanted to have his future read, or well, seen, or something. It was a crystal ball seeing, so that. Sure, but what should I ask about? How about your destined one? V maybe you won't die a virgin a second time? R said the one who is literally a pussy. V oi, R you started it. V find my loss. Who knows, Ramuru? Maybe it's another slime? Ha ha, very funny. Okay, show me the one who is meant for me. In the cradle bowl we saw a girl who looked to be Asian, Japanese to be precise. V an otherworlder. R she looks sad. V then you'll have to make sure that she will be happy with you. R, you're right. Sadly, the moment was interrupted by some stuck-up minister who, after insulting Cajun and his gang, proceeded to pour his drink on Ramuru. I was ready to fry the asshole, but Cajun beat me to the punch. Literally, he socked him in the face twice, before the guy ran away. Was that really alright? That dude is a minister. Ramuru, would you accept me as one of the Kratzmen to go with you? Of course, I wouldn't want anyone else. And we got arrested. Again, Cajun told us what's the deal with that minister, Vesta. We were put on trial, right in front of the hero king, Gazzled Wargo. In short, the trial was a farce. But the king knew the truth nonetheless. So he settled by exiling us and the dwarf brothers. And thus we received our professionals. At the edge of the forest we realized that Gobda was still in his cell. But to our surprise, he rode out of the gate on the back of a tempest wolf that he summoned. Nice one Gobta. None of the other goblins managed to do that. V Gobta has more going for him than I originally thought. Or yeah, maybe we should put him in charge of village security or something. See how he deals with an important role. V food for thought for later. It's been a while since we returned from Dwargan. The village started to turn into a town. The neighboring goblin villages seeked us out for protection. Rimuru and I named them all with the same male-female setup. The chiefs have been named goblin lords as well, with Rigard as the goblin king. We were growing steadily. One day though, Rimuru came back with a group of four humans. They were an interesting bunch. Loud. R Vitandi Dot. V what's up? You sound excited. R the one wearing that mask. She is the one we saw in that crystal ball back in Dwargan. V the girl who is meant to be with you? R that's the one. V well then, good luck tiger. R wait, wait, wait. Don't go away. I need moral support. V relax, you got this. R what am I supposed to do? V maybe start with talking to her? Are all right, but stay. You are also a leader of this place. V okay, okay, I'll stay. Go on, say something. Nice to meet you. I'm Ramuru. I'm not a bad slime. Other than the mask girl, Shizu, the others just stared confused. Shizu on the other hand laughed a little. V well, at least your girl found it funny. Or I'm trying my best. We found out that a nearby human kingdom, Bloomend, was curious about what's happening in the forest. That's why this group is here. From what they told us, Bloomin probably won't care that we are building a town of monsters here. Later that day I found myself on top of a hill with Rimuru and Shizu. V why am I still third wheeling? R because I am a nervous wreck. Rimuru, Vitandi, am I correct that you two are otherworlders? V ah, she has a nice smile. Good job buddy, don't mess this up. Why yes, we were reincarnated here. As you can see, I became a slime. And Vitandi is a Nekamata. She picked us up 
holding both of us in her arms. It feels good to be hugged after so long. Are you two Japanese? Only Ramuru. I'm European. I'm happy I could meet people from my home one last time. V Ramuru, you're up. Cheer her up. What do you mean? She looked sad as he looked over the developing town. You see I am a summon. That, sadly, explained a lot. Who summoned you? It was a demon lord I set out for this journey to get some answers from him. But I'm afraid I won't be able to ask him my questions. Dodd. It's been many years since he summoned me. Too many. When did you get summoned? I don't remember fire was falling from the sky. Everything was burning. V the bombings of WW2. I have an idea. I could feel Ramuru opening up his thought communication towards Shizu. He started showing him pictures and videos of how Japan recovered after the war, and how it grew to be one of the most thriving countries in the world. It was really tranquil for the few minutes that it lasted, but suddenly Shizu convulsed in pain. We jumped up from the sudden motion. Shizu, are you okay? Huh? Yes, don't worry about it. It happens sometimes. That just makes us worry more. Akasic, what happened? Answer. Unable to comprehend. One of Shizu's items is blocking every type of magic. Shizu tried to reassure us that everything is okay. We didn't believe it, but there wasn't much we could do. The humans turned in for the night because they planned to leave tomorrow. Rimuru was snuggling into my side for comfort. Akasic didn't find anything either. I'm sorry. She is leaving tomorrow. What if she won't make it back here? Tomorrow we will talk with her again. Maybe she will tell us what's wrong, then we can help her. I started purring while curling around him. Thanks Vitandi. No problem. Try to get your mind off of everything. Rest a little. MHM. I can understand him. Shizu seems like a kind person. And she is suffering from something, while we can't do anything. It's frustrating. The next day came sooner than we would have liked. Escorting the human quartet. I occupied the loud trio, while Ramuru talked with Shizu. A sudden surge of magicules draw my attention towards the duo, followed by Ramuru's panicked yell. Shizu, what's wrong? Our group turned towards them only to see Shizu suddenly fly up in the air, her mask falling away. Her eyes were a glowing red. Answer. Shizu's body is housing a superior flame spirit, Ifrit. It is attempting to take control of her. One of the humans, Cavill I think suddenly exclaimed. Wait, Shizu Shizu Azawa, the conqueror of flames? The girl next to him, Irin, looked shocked at that. The champion of the guild from 50 years ago? All right you three, get out of here. A superior spirit is insider. Me and Ramura will deal with it. But, you are in the way. We will have an easier time if we don't have to protect you. They looked hurt, but understood the situation. V. Ramuru, this guy is all flame attacks. We can't get hurt by it, so do your thing. I'll protect the people. Are on it. Ramuru's pov. Vitandi started to handle the people, so I could focus on the fight. This spirit thinks he can just take over Shizu? Not if I have a say in it. All right, you underfed Sauron. Show me what you got. I started throwing water blades at him, but it evaporated before reaching him. Water won't work. How about ice? Shooting a barrage of icicles, I cornered the spirit quickly. It tried to incinerate me as a last attempt, but I just tied him up in some steel thread. Great sage, can you separate Shizu from Ifrit? Notice, it is possible using Predator. Proceed? Yes. Enveloping him. I ate Ifrit, leaving behind an unconscious Shizu. Gently lifting her up I made my way to the village. We prepared a bed for her and tried to ascertain her injuries. Her body was healed, but she didn't wake up. Our Vitandi, Great Sage couldn't find anything. V. Ramuru. R. Could you ask Akasic records? V. Akasic. Answer. The superior spirit, Ifrit was keeping Shizu's body and soul stable from the amount of magicules in her body. Without Ifrit, Shizu's body is going through a rapid degradation, aging to the point of her actual age. According to the available information, she won't survive. V. Ramuru. His body prevented him from doing so, but their souls are connected. She could feel his grief, the unshed tears. R. I became so strong since I got here and I can't save one person. V. Ramuru, you freed her from her pain. She was suffering. There is nothing more we can do. Only hope for a chance to say goodbye. V. I'll leave you two alone. I need to check up on the three humans. If when she wakes up, tell me. I'll bring them here. Vitandi's Pav. The three humans were also filled with sadness when I checked on them. Especially the girl. She must have looked up to Shizu. Miss Vitandi. How is Shizu? She looks broken. As much as I want to reassure her, lying wouldn't help here. She won't make it. The gasps of the trio quickly turned into sobs. Erin looked at me with barely held back tears. What's wrong? Ifrit the spirit that tried to take over her all this time, was also the one that kept her alive. Without him, she started to age rapidly. There's a chance that she will wake up one last time, but there won't be another. 
The sobs became cries. Erin was trying to muffle her pain gasps, but it was a losing battle. See, can we see her? Ramuru is watching over her. The moment she wakes up, I'll take you there. And so we waited. Hours passed before Ramuru contacted me. Arvitandi. V, we're on our way. She woke up. Let's hurry. The three got up and followed me right to our tent. Shizu just started to gather her bearings. It's good to see you are okay. I walked up behind Ramuru to give him some support. He needed it. How are you feeling? Tired. It was clear that her body was getting older by the second. She reached out to Ramuru and pulled him closer. Ramuru, what was your name? Satoru. Mikami Satoru. Satoru, I wanted to ask the demon lord, Leon Cromwell. Who summoned me? What was the point? What was my purpose? What was the meaning behind Shizu Azawa's existence? I know it's a lot. I'll do it. I'll ask him for you. Then I'll punch him as hard as I can. Thank you, Satoru. Yes, Shizu. Please tell Eren and the others that I was happy, that my last journey was with them, and they should be more careful. I'll tell them. The mentioned trio was quietly crying behind us. Satoru? Yes, Shizu. Can I ask one last selfish thing? Anything you want. The same way you ate Ifrit the same way you ate my curse could you eat me? Shizu I, please I don't want to be buried in this world that I hate so much. If that's what you want I'll do it. At this point, Shizu's hair turned completely white. Wrinkles all over her body. Her age caught up. You said you can mimic what you eat. So this is my parting gift. That way I'll be with you on your journey make it a happy one. I promise. I'll make a place in this world where everyone can be happy. Thank you. Notice. Use predator? Are yes. We watched as Ramuru gently enveloped Shizu to lay her to rest. Everybody was crying in the tent, Ramuru included, as he took on the human form given to him. He looked like a younger Shizu with silverish blue hair and golden eyes, eyes that cried a river in an attempt to alleviate the grief. I crawled into his lap, bumping my head against his chin. Ramuru, I'm here for you. He hugged me back, stifling the sobs that escaped him. Eventually the tears dried up and we just sat there in silence. Erin was the first to break the summer quiet. Ramuru thank you, for saving Shizu form her pain. The other two joined her soon. She looked happy spending time with you. Thank you for honoring her last wish. It took a few days to get back into the groove of things. We had the dwarf brothers give the trio new equipment, so they can stay safe. They promised to tell their boss about how hospitable and non-hostile we are. Eventually we saw them off and things went back to a somewhat normal. Vitandi. Hmm. Why didn't you try out a human form? You have access to mimicry. Shizu gave her body to you. And she also said that she was happy to meet us. Us. Plural. Are you sure? He smiled at me encouragingly. Yes. Come on. Let's get you some clothing and check out your human form. We gathered some stuff and went straight into our tent. Ramuru put down the stack of clothes and started to walk out. Where are you going? A, you are about to turn into a human form. What a gentleman. But we've been together for months now. I don't mind if you stay. He sputtered a little, but eventually sat down. Your new form can blush too. You look cute, Ramuru. I'm a guy though. Even if my body is genderless, because I'm a slime. Hmm, a cassock? Answer. Mimicry allows to change one's gender. If the user wishes to do so. There you have it. I I see. You. Are. Adorable. What about me? A cassock? Ramuru's default is genderless, but what's mine? Answer. Your default is female. Alright? In that case, give me a human form. I felt my body change. I became taller, standing on two legs. After the change I checked myself out and. I look like a furry's dream. I had pristine white skin like Ramuru, mostly. The same blue fur covered my arms from the tip of my fingers, up to my biceps. I still had retractable claws, and I had small poppids on my palm. Similarly fur covered my legs up to my mid-ties. I still had my two tails swishing around. Reaching up I could feel. I had cat ears. My hair reached my hips, being the same color as my fur. My body overall looked the same age as Ramuru's, prepubescent. So much about hooking up, I bet all those brain-dead idiots from Lolitary would wage a war against me. How long will it take for me to grow older anyways? Answer. Your human form won't age. Fuck. Hey Ramuru Ramuru was busy fighting himself to not peek between his fingers at me. He was failing, but I appreciate the effort. You can look if you want. I saw your naked human form too. I I think we should find you some clothes. Yeah, I'll go ask Haruna for help. He tried to rush out of the tent, but I grabbed him from behind, hugging him in the process. Nope, we already got some clothes. And I want you to stay. You'll have to get used to naked bodies eventually. Once you get yourself a girl, 
still blushing, but not struggling anymore, he peeked at me over his shoulder. It wasn't too hard since we were the same height. What's gotten into you? Hmm. A few months ago you threatened me to not be a perv, and now you're clinging to me naked. Huh, I honestly don't know. We've been doing everything together ever since we got here. I just feel like I want you to be near me. Wait a minute, Akasic? Did I fall for Ramuru? What? Answer. Analysis of complex emotions is beyond my capabilites. According to available information, it is possible that you started developing romantic feelings towards Ramuru Tempest, based on your already close relationship. I could feel a blush spreading across my cheeks. Maybe I like you. Ramuru blushed up a storm at that. But eventually he looked at me again. Do you want to try this? I never had a successful date before. He huffed a laugh in response. Me neither. Yes, if you want to. He just nodded and we stayed like that for a few minutes, enjoying each other's closeness. Ramuru broke the companionable silence. How long will you hold me, while you are naked? PFT. I know you like it, my slimy friend. Yes, I do. It doesn't change the fact that you should get dressed. Then help me pick an outfit. Okay, okay. We walked over towards the pile of clothes when an idea struck me. Ramuru, I just figured something out. What is it? We can eat like humans again. Let's get you dressed and we can get started on preparing on a feast. Come on, hurry up. All right? Sheesh. Who knew you are such a glutton? But I don't blame you. Maybe I can cook something. I wonder what kind of spices we have. We put together an outfit for me quickly. Some black shorts that honestly look like biker shorts. A blue t-shirt and after some consideration. I opted to remain barefooted. I have poppids on the bottom of my feet. Not to mention the fur. I don't want to wear shoes on top of that. Finishing up we went to find the hunting party to inform them about the feast we wanted to make. Gobda made some pervy remark about Ramuru and how much his boobs would grow. Apparently he didn't get the memo about Ramuru's gender before. Now he got it for sure. Attached to the heel of Ramuru's boot. Nice roundhouse kick. Thanks. I apologize on Gobda's behalf, Lord Ramuru. Don't worry about it rigor, just focus on the hunt. Yeah, I think I'll help with the cooking tonight. So get us some good meat. Of course, Lady Vitandi. You can count on us. We saw them off and went back to our business. Ramuru wanted to test his new skills, especially Shizu's unique skill, Degenerate. In the meantime I went to find the goblin cooks. I had many recipes in my head, but I needed to know what I'm working with. I hope we have some stronger spices. Maybe I could make some curry bread. Things were hectic for a while, but now it seems it finally settled. Let's hope it stays like that. Ramuru's Pav. Man, my skills are sure jerting out of hand. Good thing I'm doing this in an isolated place. I'm currently in Voldora's cave to test my new skills. Shizu's degenerate is one overpowered stuff. I can make new skills from basically anything. For example this thing I'm surrounded by. I mixed my black lighting with Ifrit's flame, and the results are terrifying. This black inferno around me is something I should keep under lock and key. If I'm not careful, I could incinerate a good chunk of the forest. Shizu's mask was also something really useful. It has some extremely powerful anti-magic stuff on it. Putting it on makes me look like a human. I wonder. Notice. Incoming thought communication from the individual, Ranga. His voice conveys urgency. Ranga master. We've been attacked. Ramuru I'm on my way. Hang in there. What could have showed up? Ramuru Vitandi. Someone attacked Ranga's group. Vitandi what I'll be there as fast as I can. Rushing out of the cave and through the forest, I arrived first to the battle. Except from Rigor, Ranga and Gobda, the others were unconsciously laying around the ground. Guys, fall back. Ranga, report. I tossed some healing potions on the injured and got ready for a fight. Yes, master. The fallen are not dead. The pink-haired one put them to sleep and you healed the injuries already. None of those wounds were severe, so it's clear they didn't intend on killing them. Hopefully we can talk this out. Turning towards what seems to be the leader of this group. A red-haired guy in his 20s maybe. I tried to start up the conversation. Look, I'm not sure what happened here, but let's talk this out. I'm sure we can. Silence. I found it weird from the beginning. Hobgoblins and Tempest Wolves. How is that possible? Then you, a masked magin shows up, and it all makes sense now. It was your cohort behind all of it. Dude, I don't know what you are talking about. This mask was a gift. Enough. None of your lies can save you from the vengeance of the ogres. I knew those pigs couldn't possibly defeat us on their own. I was starting to panic a little. I didn't want to hurt anyone, but this guy was dead set on a misunderstanding. Thankfully my better half showed up just in time. Instead of shouting bullshit, how about you actually tell us what's your grudge? Vitandi, I'm glad you could make it. Wow, that mask really is something. I can't sense any of your aura. 
yeah, it's cool, but we have bigger problems. A cassock filled me in through our links so I know. Now about you, ogres. Just because you have your partner in crime. Shut the fuck up. Sounds like Vitandi snapped. Makes sense. She was very enthusiastic about the feast tonight. We never even met ogres before you. Now you march into our place and attack us. Who the fuck do you think you are? Instead of all this nonsense, speak. What is your goddamn problem? She seems a bit winded after all the shouting. Rimuru hey Vitandi. I think you should take some deep breaths. It's not healthy to get so angry this easily. There was some silence, but eventually she replied. Vitandi I'll try. Good enough for me. Back to the ogres. They seemed a little humbled after the verbal assault. The old looking one stepped forward to speak. Still on guard, but at least he was willing to talk. Our village was attacked and destroyed by orcs. They were led by a masked magin. Their mask was similar to yours. Prior to that, we encountered a different masked magin. And now here we are, another masked magin before us. Commanding a group of evolved monsters, and having an equally powerful magin as his ally. Yeah, that sounds understandable. But still, I'm just a lovable slime. Maybe I should show them. Taking off my mask, I released my aura. This put the ogres on high alert immediately. But before they could attack I turned back into my slime form. As you can see, I'm just a slime. I understand where did your misconception came from. But I swear I have no idea about what you're accusing me of. My mask is a keepsake from a friend who passed away recently. They looked shocked from my reveal, but it finally got through to them. The other four came forward as well and knelt down. Their leader speaking on their behalf. I apologize for my rash judgment. It seems I was mistaken. MHM, he can admit when he is wrong. That's the kinda guy you need as a leader. Vitandi well, I still want that feast tonight. So since they interrupted our hunting party, they can help us out as recompense. Ramuru sure, go ahead. We forgive you, but you attacked our hunting party. So, I expect you to help them out with procuring food. After that, we can discuss everything that happened to you. The red one looked surprised from the light punishment, if it can be called that. Even after we attacked you, you would still invite us to your village? You will listen, me and Ramuru only recently got the ability to turn humanoid. We are having a feast tonight for that. If you get me food, I'll forgive you. I'd rather focus on cooking than a grudge from a misunderstanding. You are quite the food maniac aren't you? It's all water under the bridge. No one died, the injured are healed. And Vitani already gave her price for forgiving you. I think it's settled. Thank you for your generosity. We'll help out, of course. Excellent. Me and Vitandi will go back to the village. The hunting party can lead you back. And with that, our encounter with the ogres were thankfully resolved peacefully. Bidding them goodbye, our duo turned back towards the village. So Vitandi, what were you up to? Before this, checking our spices to see what I can make. MHM. And what's the verdict? We have the most important things. Salt, pepper, garlic. That's it? Well, I'm not an expert on wild herbs, so I have no clue about the other things. Some smells familiar, but I don't know their taste. You sound disappointed. I wanted chili. Maybe we'll find some. Once we get around some nation's markets. I really hope so. For me, I want rice. MHM. Rice is the best for curry. I wholeheartedly agree. And we talked about food until we got back. Vitandi's Pav. The hunting party and the ogres returned with some really big wild animals. And so I set out to make something for tonight. The goblin cooks insisted on making the food. But it's been far too long since I had a chance cooking. The pink-haired ogre joined as well in cooking. And she seems to know about wild herbs. Which means I can learn what they are. So what can I call you? People called me princess back home. But you don't need to. Alright, princess. Tell me about these herbs. I want to know everything. She seemed a bit flustered, but got over it quickly. Launching into explanations, she taught me and the goblins about what to use for what. It looks like I have everything to make some killer soup. Working together, we made a lot of food. Of course, we didn't just make soup. We made some meat skewers with mushrooms. MHM, I can't wait for Ramuru to try it. Thanks, princess. I'm sure Ramuru will be very happy to eat these. And so am I. You're welcome, Miss Vitandi. Setting up for the night, everything was ready. I dragged Ramuru to the biggest campfire, and excitedly waited for him to try the food. You seem eager. Of course, I haven't cooked in months. I'm sure. Shut up and eat already. Ha ha ha. Okay, 
Every cook was watching with bated breath. It seems that's a common trait of those who make the food for others. We didn't have to wait for long though. Ramuru's face was showing pure bliss. It tastes so good. He immediately dug in with vigor. Everyone else joined in, cheery chatter permeating through the air. And yes, the food was awesome. It's sad that we don't have any strong spices, but I'll live. These skewers were even better than I expected. There is a reason why I love grilled food so much. After eating what's way more than our body could physically fit, we went over to the ogres. They were currently talking with the dwarves about what happened. To summarize, a masked magin offered their strongest a name. They refused, and the magin said some rude stuff as he left. And a few days later, an army of orcs showed up, slaughtering them. They were led by a different masked magin. And judging by the fact that every orc had full plate armor, they're most likely being helped by a demon lord. No wonder you're so lost in your hate. Ah, Miss Vitandi, have you finished eating? Nah, we're just taking a break. And you said I'm a food maniac. Haha, <laughs> anyways, it seems you guys had it rough. So, what's your plan forward? We'll prepare and strike back. Hua, do you know where are the orcs? How many are there? I listen, Red, you need a plan. And there's only six of you. So, how about you stay with us? Miss Vitandi, I. It doesn't have to be permanent, but you are at a disadvantage, and if that orc army marches through the forest, they will get here anyway. Why don't we work together? Vitandi is right. We don't have much to offer, but you'll have food, shelter and clothing. Let me think about it. Of course. We left them to think about what they want. Ramura poor guy. I can't imagine how it's like for him. Vitandi from what I gathered, the ogres are a prideful race, and he has to shove that pride down, otherwise his people will suffer. Ramuru if they stay, even if temporarily, I think we should name them. Vitandi yeah, even if they don't stay at all, I'd feel bad if we just let them go to their death. Some are thoughts like that accompanying us, we return to eat, while munching on some skewers. I decided to have a skill check. If we're expecting battle, we have to be ready. So a cassock, what can I do and what should I try to do? Answer. Your most beneficial approach would be utilizing the unique skill, magical prodigy to learn new spells and extra skills. Oh yeah, I can learn basically anything thanks to that. But why is it an option-based skill? Why not just get everything I possibly can? Answer. Because it would overwhelm your soul. Could you elaborate on that? Answer. Learning spells wouldn't cause issues, other than the trouble of sorting through them, during an emergency. Skills on the other hand are directly affecting the wielder's soul. Having skills permanently takes up magicules. If you were to obtain too many skills, it would destroy you. That sounds terrifying. So if I got this right, if I get a skill, I get weaker in magicule count, but I have a skill in return, but it's limited of how many skills I can get. Answer. That is correct. But wait a minute. My unique skill is called Magical Prodigy. Emphasis on the magical. How can I get skills from that? Answer. Possessing a skill that has an equivalent in spell will help with its usage and magical cost. So what? I just get a skill that does the same as the spell would? Just easier for me in exchange for a permanent weakening. Answer. That is correct. Could you give me an example? Answer. The extra skill, Universal Elemental Manipulation, allows you to conjure and control the basic elements without the need for spellcasting. If you cast an elemental spell, the skill can be used to optimize the magicule cost and the control over the spell. Wow, okay, I can see why skills are so useful. So I have to be careful with what I get or I overburden myself to oblivion. Answer. Common and extra skills obtained through the unique skill, magical prodigy, will be incorporated into the unique skill itself as subskills to lessen the burden it puts on your soul. Any magic-related common and extra skill obtained separately will also be incorporated as subskills. So I have an advantage over others in regards to skills, but it's still not omnipotent. Answer. That is correct. Anything you recommend for me to get? Skills I mean. Answer. It requires more information about the enemy. All right, I'll leave it at that for now. I've been spacing out for quite a while. I'm tired. Now where's Ramuru? There he is. He's talking with the ogre princess. She really gets along with everyone. Walking over, I turn back into my cat form and land in Ramuru's arms. What's up? Vitandi. Sleepy. I'm gonna use you as my napping place. You really are a cat. It's getting late. So how about we call it a night? MHM. Sounds good to me. Good night, princess. 
Good night, Miss Vitandi, Sir Ramuru. Returning to our tent, Ramuru turns back into slime form with me on top of him. He really is the comfiest. Makes me regret never investing in a waterbed. Ramuru, I'm not a waterbed. Vitandi, he, you're right. You are way comfier. Ramuru, you look like you were in deep thought before. Something on your mind? Vitandi, just preparing for battle. Ask Akasic, I'm spent mentally. Good night, Ramuru. Ramuru, good night, Vitandi. Ramuru's pov. So, Akasic, what were you two talking about? Answer. I sent over the information to Great Sage. Thank you, buddy. Great Sage, notice. The individual, Vitandi Tempest was analyzing her skills in order to prepare for the battle with the orcs. She was studying how skills and spells function, and how can too many skills hurt the wielder, by damaging their soul. She also figured out that her unique skill, Magical Prodigy, converts every magic-related skill into sub-skills, to lessen the burden from the overabundance of skills. Well, that was a mouthful. But I got the gist of it. We really are in danger, huh? An army of orcs, I guess that's how this world works. Let's do our very best, great sage. Affirmative. Heh, even my skill is raring to go. After that, I just dozed off till morning came. And it seems the ogres had their answer. Their leader approached us. Sir Ramuru, Miss Vitandi, I'd like to accept your offer. We ogres were always a warrior clan, so we are no strangers to serving others if they are worthy. But could I ask that our agreement only last until we defeat the orcs? Of course, you don't have to worry about it. In that case, I'll look forward to working with you. He looks relieved. It must have been hard for him. All right, Red, bring in your friends. Yes, Miss Vitandi. Now we had all six of them here. It's time for the usual, all right? Now that we are allies, it's time to give you names. What? All six of us? Are you sure? Don't worry, princess. We got this. Ramuru names males. I name females. We named everybody else here too. But all six of us, we accept. Brother, I know naming is a big thing, but there's only six of them. It will be fine. Vitandi, they have an Asian style, so I wanna give Japanese names. I have one for princess, but the other I haven't figured out yet. Give me a good one. Rimuru, she looks strong. Hmm, how about Xian? Vitandi sounds good. I like it. All right, your name will be Xian, and your name will be Shuna. I look forward to seeing you grow stronger. And you four will be Benimaru, Saoe, Hakuru and Kurub. After we named them, I felt the familiar drowsiness and fell asleep. Vitandi's Pav. Well, that took more magicules than I expected. Just naming two took half of it. Dot, and Ramuru passed out. Wow, you guys are going to be strong for sure. I picked up Ramuru, who turned back into slime form. He will recover his magicules in a day or two. Yawn, I think I'm gonna sleep as well. Go mingle with the goblins. Rest up. Shuna looked worried about us. Are you sure, it's okay? Naming someone can permanently weaken the name giver. Don't worry Shuna. It isn't the first time this happened. Turning into my cat form I laid down Ramuru and got comfortable. Like I said, rest. You guys need it too. They wished us well, and I soon joined Ramuru in his nap. Ah sleeping feels way too good. Well, we slept for two days. Yeah, it appears that ogres take more magicules, because they are a superior race, compared to goblins. Yeah, that's an understatement. All six of them evolved into a new race called Kijin. Well, good for them. Ah, Lady Vitandi, Lord Ramuru, it's good to see you awake. Good morning Shuna, how are you? Wonderful, thank you for asking. What a polite girl. Seriously, all of them grew way stronger than I could have imagined. Not to mention they look even more human than before. They still had their horns, but they looked more refined. The wild monster appearance was gone. Xian looked more mature, not to mention being really hot. Shuna was a beautiful princess before, but now she looks even more stunning. Then Meru was the typical hot guy. Sawe looked like the wet dream of every teenage girl. Hakuru was the wise elder you always asked for advice. And Korob was your friendly neighbor you sat down with every evening to have a beer. Yo, Benimaru, how's everything going? Lord Ramuru, everything is fine. Hakuru is training the goblins they have no idea what they asked for. Looking towards the training field. It was clear as day what he meant. Hakuru was one-sidedly beating up everyone with a wooden sword. Make sure he pays extra attention to Gopta. He has the greatest potential from the goblins, but he is not the sharpest tool in the shed. Yuhu, don't worry. I'm sure if he has potential, Hakuru will beat him I mean train him well. Speaking of experience, then Amaru shuddered a bit, like he remembered something traumatizing. You could say that sir. Well then, it's time we start thinking ahead. I think we should have a meeting to discuss how will we proceed with the orc situation. Understood, Lady Vitandi. I'll call the Kijin. 
Meet us there. But it seems the world has other plans. Sao Wei appeared out of the shadows. I'm here to report that an envoy of lizardmen are approaching the village. One after another. Rimuru, deal with this. I dealt with the Kijin when they arrived. Rimuru, sure, sure. Rimuru's pav. Well, in that case, let's meet these envoys. Me, Vitandi, Benamaru, Sao Wei, Xian, Shuna and Hakuru went to the main road that led into the village. We met up with Rigard and Gobta there. Wow, Gobta, you got stronger dot poison resistance? What the hell happened? Vitandi he ate Xian's abomination. Rimuru her what? Vitandi Huu a Xian wanted to cook. I'm more than happy to see aspiring chefs. But what she made was a crime against humanity. Gobta was the unfortunate taste tester. Rimuru you're telling me that Gobta gained poison resistance. A skill usually obtained by getting near lethally poisoned multiple times. By food. Vitandi yeah, I forbade her from cooking without Shuna's supervision. I'll teach her when I'll have time. I'm still figuring her out. Rimuru on an unrelated note, Gopta is now officially the strongest of the goblins. I did not expect that. Vitandi me neither. But you know what they say. A natural genius is often mistaken for a madman. Our musings were cut short by the arriving lizardmen. They had a perfect formation and everything. The leader who was clearly above the rest, strode forward posing were those two using their shields as makeshift spotlights? Yes, they are. My name is Gabiru. I came here to enlist you under my command. Feel honored. Is this guy serious? Rigard, the ever-collected man, was our speaker for now. You called yourself Gabiru, right? Could you explain what you mean? HMPH. Must I spell it out for you? Very well. An army of orcs has invaded the forest, and I shall take you weaklings under my guiding hand. This guy's serious. He seemed to notice that we weren't exactly weaklings as he put it. Kijins, hobgoblins, and now he is having an impromptu meeting with his men. Wow. Rimuru I don't know how to feel about this guy. Vitani sadly I do. Rimuru enlighten me? Vitani I saw guys like him in my previous life. Most are the same. They have a heart of gold. But if you put a dozen of them together, they will share one brain cell that stopped working ages ago. Rimuru so a misguided, but lovable idiot? Vitandi basically. If I were to guess, it's probably because he has a name. He became stronger, his people admire him, and so far he probably repelled all the threats that were dangers to ordinary lizardmen. Rimuru well, let's hope we can figure this out. Vitandi you mean before Benimaru and Xion kill him? What? Oi, Benamaru, Xian stop, reluctantly standing down. They look ready to strangle this Kabiru. All right, I heard that some of you tamed your wolves. I wish to speak with them, so I can make them officers in my army. Ranga, come out. Jumping out of my shadow, Ranga stood in all his glory. This guy wants to speak with you. Letting out a small growl that had the lizardmen shaking. Except Kabiru which was impressive, he turned towards them. My master told me to hear you out. So speak, lizard. Standing unfazed which again, impressive, Gabiru let out a pleased hum. Hmm. Indeed, you are truly a majestic beast. Such divine fur, that powerful aura. To think a being so glorious was tricked by a mere slime. Ranga, don't hurt him. Do not fret for I, Gabiru. She'll defeat that trickster and give you a place worthy of your might. Rimuru I'm honestly at a loss here. Vitandi. Vitani, I believe in you. Rimuru, uh, give me a hint. How do I solve this? Vitani, think outside the box, like a genius. Rimuru, what does that even wait? Gabiru, was it? You seem to think highly of yourself. How about a deal? If you can beat my strongest hobgoblin, you can try to recruit those who are willing from my village. Ha, huh, I see how it is. This way, you won't get humiliated by the great Gabiru. Fine by me. Show me the strongest this village has to offer. What do you think? Hakiru, is he ready? Ho ho, far from it. But a weak foe such as this lizardman will be no trouble. It seems Hakiru knew exactly who I was talking about. He was looking at Gobta, who was obliviously staring out of his head. Gobta, teach this guy a lesson. What? Why me? Relax. I have faith in you. If you win, I'll have Kajin and Korob make you a brand new sword. Why didn't you start with that? Bring it on. MHM, he is motivated. And if you lose you'll eat what gave you poison resistance. Anything but that. Now he is hyped, and thankfully Xian had no idea what gave him that resistance, judging by the small admiration she showed on her face. He learned poison resistance? Wow, I'd have never guessed he had it in him. Xian, darling, it was your doing. Gabta and Gabiru got into their fighting stance, ready for action. But the battle ended within a second. Literally, Gabta used shadow movement to jump up behind Gabiru and kicked him in the head, knocking him out. Well, that was anticlimactic. It looks like Gabta was too strong for him. I knew you were talented, Gabta. Well, Vitandi seems pleased with the results. Thanks Lady Vitandi. 
all right, lizards, your leader lost so leave. If you want an alliance, send someone who has a functioning brain. The lizardmen gathered up their fallen leader and made a hasty retreat. Now where were we? We were about to have a meeting about the orcs. Ben Ameru reminded me helpfully. Right, let's get to it. Vitandis Pav. These lizardmen were an experience. I have a feeling we will meet them again. Hopefully on friendly terms. Snuggling Ramuru in my arms really helped me think. He was like a fidget toy. Ramuru, maybe we should have the dwarves make you an actual fidget toy. Vitandi nah, I'll keep you instead. It's not like we have any free time with the orcs threatening us. This way I can still enjoy your comfort. Ramuru speaking of, any ideas about a battle plan? Vitandi not yet, other than kill enemy Unga Bunga. Ramuru let's see what Sawe got then. We were sitting in our newly designated meeting room with a rough sketch of a map portraying the forest. Present were the dwarves, the kitchen, Rigard, Ramuru and me. Ramuru started off the meeting. We need to come up with a battle plan against the orcs. We have a theory about an orc lord leading them, but we don't know too much. Sawe, what have you found? One of my body doubles discovered their army. They number approximately 200,000. Well, shit. I couldn't help cursing out loud at that. I agree. Ramuru looks shocked as well. Where are they? If they are heading here we need to act quickly. They are marching towards the marshlands, home of the lizardmen. So that's why Gabiru was recruiting. An army that large is not something anyone can take lightly. Hmm. Sawe, did you check our village? Yes, Miss Shuna. You haven't found any, am I right? That is correct. Any what? What are you talking about? Turning towards us, Shuna looked incredibly grim. Just how do you keep an army that large, Fed? It was something I was wondering. And now that Sawe confirmed it, there is no doubt. Looking towards Sawe, I prompted him to answer BQ's Shuna look to be struggling to say it. When I returned to see what remained of our village I found no corpses. Not orc, nor ogre. I felt like gagging as I put together what they're saying. Cannibalism. I held Ramuru closer for comfort at the revelation. He was thinking a mile a minute to figure out how to deal with this threat. They don't fear anything and they eat their fallen. Defeating them will be difficult. Sawe suddenly looked up in shock. One of my body doubles made an encounter. Orc. No, my lady it's a dryad. Ramuru you mean the beautiful tree spirits of the forest? Vitandi Ramuru, you know what that means. Ramuru we are about to have some eye candy. Vitandi among other things, yes. But more importantly, we are about to get a story quest. And those aren't optional. Rimuru, I guess there is no point delaying the inevitable. They wish to speak with you too. All right? And just like that, we had a dryad sprouting out of the ground. Greetings Rimuru Tempest, Vitandi Tempest. I'm Trini the Dryad. Vitandi she is beautiful, but not my type. Rimuru what's your type? Vitandi well she is a mature beauty. I prefer cute beauty. Rimuru should I take this as a hint to remain adorable? Vitandi yes, absolutely. Ramuru noted, it's a pleasure to meet you, trainee, you wish to speak with us? Indeed Lady Vitandi, as the caretaker of the forest, on behalf of our guardian Lord Voldora, I would like to ask you two to defeat the Orc Lord. Ramuru's story quest indeed, and with a world boss at the end too. Vitandi should we put on a front to protest? Ramuru I actually want to protest. Vitandi good luck with that. That's quite a big request, don't you think? I'm sure to the two who bear the crest of the great storm dragon, it will be no trouble. Vitandi told ya. Ramuru she even knows about our connection to Voldora. Fine. Before I say yes, we don't really know too much about the enemy. We didn't even know for sure there is an orc lord. Could you fill in some gaps for us? The dryad smiled at them. Of course. Joined by her, we learned quite a lot about our foe. The most troublesome is the unique skill, starved. It's an inferior version of Ramuru's predator, extending to every orc under it. But as long as it's in effect, we don't have too much of a choice. Either kill every single orc, or take out the orc lord and deal with the aftermath. Our best bet is to take out the orc lord as soon as possible. Ramuru concluded. And I have an idea. Sawe, the orcs are heading into lizardman territory, correct? Yes, Lady Vitandi. Then we will have our final battle there. Go to the chieftain of the lizardmen and tell him we want to form an alliance. We gather ourselves and head there in a week. Until then, stay there to make sure they don't fall victim to the orcs. The last thing we want is the orcs getting stronger. I'll head out immediately. And he was already gone. What a dreamboat. Rimuru I know, right? So reliable. Hakiru, make sure the goblin riders are prepared. Benamaru, we'll leave you in command. Xian, you'll be joining the battle as well. Kajin Korub, we'll need our fighters suited for battle. Let's get to work. A resounding chorus of yes, my lord, answered in return. And I hope you are also prepared to help. 
Trainee the Dryad. Of course, Lady Vitandi. Me and my sisters will give our full support to you. Excellent. Then no more sitting idly. We'll head into battle in a week. Everyone went their way to start preparations. Me and Ramuru returned to our tent. With a sigh I turned back to my cat form, plopping down onto the bed. Doing the strong leader role is tiring. I heard Ramuru laughing as he turned human and put me on his chest as he laid down. Well, I think you nailed it. Nuzzling under his chin I got comfortable. Ramuru, pet me. I need some pampering. Ha ha ha. Okay, okay. Don't need to whine at me. Here. Oh, right there. Behind my ear is the spot. Contently purring against his chest, I buried my head into the crook of his neck. I'm gonna sleep you should too. Sadly, I don't know how to. M.H.M. Akasic, can you teach him? Answer. Information transferred on how to utilize sleep mode. Oh, thanks Vitandi. All right, let's sleep. And so we succumb to sweet slumber for the night. Sleeping is the best thing in the world. And that's not just the cat talking from me. Ramuru's pov. During the next week we got everything ready. The goblin riders, led by Gobda, were outfitted with light armor made from leather and the fur of tempest wolves, making it quite resilient. On the day we were heading out though, Sawe contacted me. Sawe, Lord Ramuru, I have a report to make. Ramuru did the orcs got there? Sawe some stragglers wandered nearby, but they caused no issues. The main army is still half a day away. The trouble arose from the lizardman named Gabiru. Ramuru sigh. What happened? Sawe Gabiru tried to rebel against his father the chieftain, because he wanted to attack the orcs head on as, and I cout, the proud lizardman should. I captured them on behalf of you, and they are currently imprisoned. Ramuru good job. Sawe I also gathered some useful intel from him. Ramuru what kind of intel? Sawe it seems Gabiru was named by the Majin called Jelmid. This Jelmid's associate was the one to incite Gabiru into betraying his father. Ramuru wasn't Jelmid the one who tried naming you guys? Sawe yes, he was. Ramuru this doesn't seem like a coincidence. Keep an eye out. There is a chance the puppet masters will try to interfere again. Sawe yes sir. Did you catch that, Vitandi? Vitandi yes. I'll relay the info to the others. We have half a day before the battle starts in full. Time to pick up the pace. Ramuru Ranga, we need to get there faster. The orcs will get to Sawe's position in half a day. Can you and the other wolves make it without running yourself into exhaustion? Ranga of course. Master, Ramuru Vitandi, do you have a game plan? Vitani yes and no. I have a plan to battle the army, but I have no clue for the orc lord. Ramuru you can leave the orc lord to me. Vitandi just don't get yourself eaten. Reaching the marshlands we met up with Sawe and the chieftain of the lizardmen. Thankfully he was leagues above Gabiru in terms of brain functions. You must be Lord Ramuru and Lady Vitandi. I'm the chieftain of the lizardmen. Allow me to thank you for giving us your aid in our time if need. The orcs are a threat to all of us. It's only natural to defeat a common enemy together. Not to mention it would leave a bad taste in my mouth if we let the orcs kill an entire race of people. So what is our battle strategy? Our plan is relatively simple. The Kijin, Vitandi and me will deal the bulk of the damage, as we are the strongest present. The goblin riders, along with your people, will form a defensive line behind us, and deal with the ones that manage to get away from us. The dryads are set up at the edge of the forest to deal with any stragglers. Our best bet is to smash our way through to the orc lord to defeat it as soon as possible. Once its unique skill is gone the orcs will become disorganized and weaker, assuring us our victory. Damn Vitandi. When did you become a master tactician? Vitani A. Fuckton of RTS Games. That's all I'll say for now. Forgive me if I might offend you. But are you sure you can deal with an army this large? Do not worry chieftain. I understand your unease. But Vitandi and I are extremely strong, and the Kijin are certainly no pushovers either. Hmm. Very well, I shall place my trust in you. I hope we will come out as victorious. The goblin riders along with the lizardmen went to set up their defense line, while our group went further to face the approaching army. I'll fly up to get a better view of the battlefield. As soon as I find the orc lord, I'll inform everyone. Then Amaru, you are in command. I'll also get a bit higher to maximize my attack range. Understood. Good luck. Remember guys, I do not want any of you to die here. Don't worry, Lord Ramuru. We won't be defeated again. Damn, Benimaru. You look so cool. Vitandi fanboy later. 
A, you are no fun. Flying high up I could already see the orc army. Oh boy, that's a lot of orcs. Hearing the number and seeing it in real life cannot be compared. Below me I saw giant explosions being set off. Then Amara wasn't kidding. Each attack took out about 500 or so orcs. Xian was cleaving them and the ground into fine paste with her berserker sword. Sawe diced them up with his threads. Hakiru was beheading orc after orc, easily keeping up with the kill count. And Ranga summoned a huge storm. What is that? Notice. It is the individual, Ranga's skill, Death Storm. Accurate name. Black lightning and tornadoes everywhere. Suddenly I felt a huge amount of magicules accumulating nearby. Looking around I saw Vitani preparing an attack. She held out her hands that were sparkling with an eerie blue lightning. After she built up a ridiculous amount of power she let it loose, and I could see the Kijin stop in their tracks from the display of might they just saw. Vitandi killed thousands of orcs in a single attack. Notice. The individual, Vitandi Tempest, has killed exactly 12,347 orcs. Holy fucking shit. Vitandi, what the hell did you let loose? Vitandi that was my new technique I came up with. I call it Dragon Chain Lightning. Ramuru how what dot why? Vitandi because I wanted to commemorate Voldora. He is the storm dragon. So I made a lightning attack. Ramuru, that's not never mind. Just don't hit her guys. Vitandi relax. It only hits the ones I want to hit. This girl is crazy. Good thing she isn't a warmonger, otherwise the neighboring nations would be gone by now. Vitandi now that you mention it. Ramuru Vitandi, no. Vitandi Vitandi, yes. God damn it. I swear I'm gonna put a collar on you, so you won't run off conquering. Vitandi dot. What was that? Did I just feel her dot excited? Ramuru you want me to put a collar on you? Vitandi maybe. Ramuru dot. Vitandi see can we focus back on the war? I swear I don't get women back to reality. Great sage, have you found the orc lord yet? Affirmative. Oh, finally. Let's get this over with the sky is huge. At least five times the size of the other orcs. Before I reached him. Someone else flew by me and landed right next to the orc leader. Ramuru guys, I found the orc lord. And if I have to guess, Jelmid just showed up too. The others came around quickly, and we waited to see what happens. But I have to say, this Jelmid guy looks quite weak. You stupid pig, how can you be beaten so easily by this group on lowly scum? And how dare you mongrels stand in the way of the great Lord Jelmid? Sheesh, little man complex much? I handed out all those names just so I could make a demon lord to do my bidding. And now you fill try to ruin everything. I'm not supposed to intervene, but I have no choice. I'll deal with you myself. Vitani Suo, will you kill him or should I? Ramuru leave it to me. You and the others keep the orcs at bay. Who knows when they will rush into attack. Jelmid, was it? You look nothing to be afraid of. I can't even understand how you managed to name anyone if you are as weak as you look. How dare you, you lowly magin. Die. Deep merch dance. He shot out a dozen energy projectiles, but Predator ate them up without an issue. Alright, my turn. Trapping him in my sticky steel threads, I decided to beat the daylights out of him. Feel free to tell me when I'm supposed to be scared of you. I honestly start to feel bad. This is just bullying the weak. With one final punch he went flying back to the orc lord. Oh orc lord, I mean geld. Help me, kill that magin. The orc stepped forward, lifting his giant cleaver. But instead of attacking us, he decapitated Jelmid. And ate him. Yikes. Notice. The orc lord has evolved into the demon lord seed, orc disaster. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold. Up. What? Vitandi we wasted enough time. Kill him before he becomes too strong for us. Springing into action. I let Great Sage take over my body for the fight. It did a wonderful job, but the orc disaster proved to be very adaptive. But that didn't really matter in the end. You might be starved, but I'm a predator. And when it comes to who is the bigger eater, you can't beat a slime. He struggled against me, but he never stood a chance. Before he died though, I got a glimpse into what drove the orc disaster. What drove Geld into this? A great famine left his people on the verge of death. The children born the day before were dying. The children born on the same day were starving. And the day approached fast where there would be no more children if they didn't do something. Do not worry, Geld. I shall take your people under me, along with their sins, so they can start anew. Vitandi we are so passing out if we name 150,000 orcs. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now though, victory is ours. And thus, the war had ended. Vitandi's Pav. After the war we held a meeting at the Lizardman's place. All the goblin leaders, the Lizardman chieftain, the Kijin, the orc leaders, Ramuru, me and Trainee as the holder of this meeting. It was her who started us out. 
Now that the threat is gone, it's time for us to discuss what happens next. Leading this meeting is Ramuru Tempest and Vitandi Tempest, the rulers of monsters. Vitandi, well, that's a title. Ramuru, it sounds cool, but why are we leading this meeting? Vitandi, because we are the strongest here. Ramuru, in that case, take it away, conqueror. Vitandi, please, no, I don't plan on actually conquering anything. Ramuru, they are looking at us. Fine, hello everyone. I know there is a lot of things to discuss, but first I'd like you to hear us out. Our most pressing matter are the orcs. Rimuru and I do not intend on charging them with any crimes. That was the promise we made to the demon lord, Geld. The orcs looked shocked. They came here prepared for death, and now they were being forgiven. After some debate, Benimaru conclude for us. I'd be lying if I said I do not have my grudges. But among us, monsters there is one ironclad rule. Survival of the fittest. The strong are the ones who call the shots. We all acknowledged this when we came here. And I fully trust our lord and lady. And that is why Ramuru and I have an idea. We want to form an alliance between the different races in the Jura Forest. The lizardmen can provide fresh water and fish. The dryads can share the resources of the forest. Our village can make process goods. And the orcs can provide labor. Together we could even build a nation one day, where every race can live together. Maybe even humans. After some debate, everyone was kneeling before us. Even Trani as she spoke. Then as caretaker of the forest on behalf of our Lord Voldora, I hereby declare the forming of the Jura Forest Alliance, with Lord Ramuru and Lady Vitandi, as its leaders. I'm sorry, what? That's not what I suggested. Ramuru, we are not getting out of this, are we? No we don't, my slimy friend. Ramuru, ah, whatever, just roll with it. I'm sure we can figure it out. And so we became the rulers of our budding nation. After naming the orcs and sleeping for nearly two weeks, we found ourselves in a vastly different town. No more was the small village of tents and shacks. We had actual proper buildings. The orcs work fast, that's for sure. We had a lot of paperwork piled up for us. Our greatest relief in all of this was that the Kijin choose to stay with us as permanent residents. Benimaru was named our samurai general. Sawe was our eyes and ears in the shadows. Korub joined Kijin in the workshops. Hakiru became our official trainer, much to the goblin's dismay I mean joy. Shuna was leading our tailors and chefs, teaching them and expanding our production. That only left Xian. At first I didn't know what would be the right job for her, but I figured something out after some long deliberation. She became our secretary bodyguard. I mainly put her in this position because of Rimuru, knowing he had one of our strongest fighter by his side, really put me at ease when I had something to do. Like spending most of my work time in the kitchen with Shuna, trying to recreate dishes from my previous life. We also had some unexpected new recruits from the Lizardmen. First, the chieftain's daughter and some of her friends wanted to train under Sawe. So after naming them, we turned to the other group, Gabiru and his fan club. I honestly thought long and hard what to do with them. It looks like losing his rebellion and being banished by his father really humbled him. To a certain point. Hiwua Dot listen here, I can see that you have potential, but the way you are now I just can't trust you with any important task. I'll do anything to prove my worth. He is determined at least Dot can I even give him a name? He already has one. Answer. If the soul corridor has been severed by an individual and the name giver, it is possible to give a new name. Are you willing to learn? Are you going to do your best, no matter what? I swear I won't disappoint you, Lady Vitandi. Fuck my bleeding heart and all the soft spots for lovable idiots. Pointing at him, I decided to do something unprecedented. Then I shall take you under my command, Gabiru. I heard the shock gasps of the others around me. Gabiru looked at me with clear awe in his eyes. I shall treasure this chance you gave me my lady. I, Gabiru, will work my hardest to not disappoint you. I very much hope so. You know, me and Ramuru always had our work divided between us, even naming people. He named the males, and I named the females. You are the first male I ever named. That's how high my hopes and expectations are for you. If Kabiru was looking at me with awe before, now he looks like someone worshipping a goddess. I can't even find words to express my gratitude. I swear I shall prove your faith in me wasn't mistaken. Good, Ramuru you really see something in him, don't you? Vitandi even if it was only because of his strength, he had the brains to lead the warriors under him. Given proper training where his ego won't go overboard, he can do great things. Ramuru experience? Vitandi training new kitchen workers who think they are hot shit. Replace the humbling experience of his failed rebellion with a verbal first degree from me. Ramuru he got off easy then. 
Vitani yup, now that's dealt with, what's on the agenda, Ramiru relaxing? Hu wouldn't that be good alright, fuck it, now that we settled this, a few last things before Ramuru and I go to do our business. Gabiru, I want you and your men to start growing hippocoot herbs in the sealed cave nearby. Having an ample stock of healing potions is always a must. Leave it to us, my lady. Sawe, keep up your work as usual. I trust that you can work out how to train your new recruits. If you need anything, just ask. Understood. Shuna, I'd like you and Rigard to deal with city affairs. You two always know what to do. Of course, Lady Vitandi. I, Rigard will do my job with diligence, my lady. Hakiru, keep up the training, and give some extra time to Gopta. I just have a feeling about his potential. Ho ho, do not worry, my lady. Gopta is already receiving extra attention from me. Benimeru and Xian, you'll be in charge of city defense. Among everyone here, I can rest easy with you two the most, knowing that you will protect us. Thank you Lady Vitandi. Just leave everything to me, Lady Vitandi. You and Lord Ramuru just rest up. Ramuru, lead the way, my lady. You really got into the mood. Ha, huh. come here, you little slime. Picking him up in his slime form, I turn to leave. You and I are having a day off. Nestling in my arms, he looked at me curiously. What's our first stop? Smirking down at him, I replied amusedly. Why? The hot springs, of course. We are having a relaxing bath first. Even in slime form, he can blush. So cute. Together? Of course. It wouldn't be our day off if we went separately. Aren't cats hydrophobic or something? I don't know if that's the right word, but we are going in our human form so it doesn't really matter. W wait a minute. Nope. You and I are going to have what's usually known as bonding time. Deal with it. He tried to protest, but after we reached our private bathhouse he gave up. Undressing and going into the water, I let out a long sigh. Ah, now that's what I'm talking about. Rimuru was a bit reluctant at first, but he sat down in the water next to me anyway. Hooking my arm around his neck, I leaned on his shoulder. See, it wasn't so hard. Just relax. Soaking in the hot water, I could feel how my body eased up. I thought my fur would feel weird, but it's honestly quite pleasant. Hearing Ramuru let out a content sigh, I looked towards him, only to notice his head draped over me. He looks so cute. What's up? Without even opening his eyes he just nuzzled closer. I could get used to this. Just chilling in the bath with you. All the headaches from running a city, gone. Yeah, it is a good way to relax. Hey Ramuru. Hmm. You still look androgynous. I thought you'd have got back your jewels by now. With everything happening around us, I didn't really have the time for that. Why, you wanted to see me naked as a male? Oh, I see how it is. Two can play the teasing game. Well, you already buried your face in my chest. So it's only fair. He gave me a smirk as he opened his eyes. Not like there is much to bury my face in. Alright, you wanna play like that? You can bury your face elsewhere if you are complaining. You don't need to breath anyway. Ha, huh, blush, you virgin. He lost his wind, but then another smirk appeared, albeit less convincing with his still blushing face. WL, you can do the same, since you were so eager to see my genderless body naked. We looked each other in the eye for a few silent seconds, before bursting out with laughter. We are just two hopeless perverts, eh? You tell me. The cat dragged the slime into a bath. Ha, huh, he is right. No kidding, that's a hentai if I ever see one. Coming down from our laughing high. We just laid against the other for a few minutes. It was Ramuru who spoke up next with a deepening blush. If you want me to, I can you know. Make my body male. I don't want to pressure you into anything. It's not that you are pressuring me. I wouldn't mind dot. But I like the things the way they are for now. MHM. Well, it is an important step in a relationship. But if you want to dot. I'm all so happy with how things are now. Having someone so close to me feels good. In a way I can't really explain. Me too. Hugging him closer I laid my head next to his, our faces touching. To be honest, I'm just curious how it looks. God that sounds weird. Ha ha ha. Yeah, it does. But I understand. I was also curious about you. Was? You are kinda naked right now. PFT. I honestly forgot. How on earth did you forget that? I just sticked my town out at that. I'm a cat, I can do whatever I want. Wasn't I supposed to be the scatterbrain? Details. Besides, I'm only this laid back with you. I could feel his laugh through his chest as he answered. Let me guess. I'm the chosen one of the great feline overlord. Exactly. You should feel honored. Oh, I do dot so, about my body. Like I said, you don't have to. Nah, I'm also curious. This feels kinda weird though. Which part? Cause none of this was mentioned in the dating guides I read. The part where we look like 10 years olds. 
I mean, Japan has quite a large culture revolving around lawless and shodas. Not just Japan, other countries too. But the internet would crucify us if they ever found out. It's none of their business though? Well, that never stopped anyone from spouting nonsense and harassing people. Good thing they have no say in our lives then. We are two consenting adults anyways. Not like we plan to do the deed. We are just looking at each other. Yeah, alright, enough headaches from our past lives. We have new ones here. And right now we are having a day off. So show me your dick. That came off as rather dirty, huh? You could say that. Instead of answering, I looked down towards his crotch expectantly. Rimuru blushed heavily as he made his preparations. All right, here it goes. I'm gonna be honest this felt like watching Bible Black. And damn, how big is that thing? Answer. It is 23.23 centimeters long and 3.51 centimeters thick. Did your skill just? Yup. I can feel my mind going to places, just by looking at it. Rimuru why is it so big? I have an idea, but great sage? Notice. The current male genitalia was recreated, mimicking the one Rimuru Tempest posed in their previous life. Still staring at it. I only had one thing to say. Wow. Rimuru, for his part just tried not to react in a visible way to being ogled by a naked girl clinging to him. I I feel like we got sidetracked here. And maybe we should get out now? I'm kinda hungry, don't you wanna eat something? I really, really had to bite my tounge to not blurt out you as an answer, but I could feel Rimuru getting nervous. Why yeah, we should get something for lunch. Getting out of the water we got dressed in the comfy kimonos Shuna made for us. I still don't know what the hell a helmeth is, but its silk is so soft, like fluffy clouds. I'll make us some food, you set up the table and stuff. Okay. Heading into the kitchen, I wondered what to make. Well, something simple and tasty. We have potatoes, cow deer meat vegetables. MHM, a quick stew will do. Whatever you are making it smells delicious. Wait till you taste it. Finishing up, we started to eat. MHM, so good. You look so cute. Thanks. So what should we do after lunch? Hmm dot what indeed? I have no idea. We've been so busy recently that having an entire day off kinda just threw me for a loop. Hmm. What did you do before? Watching an I'm, reading books, writing small stories for my own fun, playing games. And I really like trying out new recipes. Well, trying out is an exaggeration. I tried to reinvent the wheel by putting things together and hoping for the best. So nothing we can do here. What about you? Same, minus the cooking and the fanfiction writing. Hey, they weren't fanfictions. He just gave me a look of disbelief at my exclamation. Okay, fine. Some of those were fanfictions. We finished our meal, thinking what to do. We didn't really come up with anything. So we moved out to the backyard to just relax in the grass while we were thinking. You know, hugging you like this while we just lay under the sun feels good, said the cat but I agree. Should we just stay like this? It's certainly relaxing. Turning towards me fully, Ramuru pulled me closer so I was right next to him, our bodies pressed together. That would be good too. Now that I'm looking closer his eyes have a really nice glow. They are pretty. His face also looks enticing. A perfect beauty in fact. Pristine white skin, a slightly oval shaped face, beautiful eyes and those lips. Ha! Huh. I wonder leaning forward a little I gave him a soft kiss. MHM. They are soft. Looking into his eyes I saw his surprise, but the dopey smile that took over his face was something to fight for. Realizing what I just did. I couldn't help the blush spreading over my face. Rimuru for his part, decided to be a little shit about it. What a greedy kitty. She just stole my first kiss. Stew up. It just happened. My body moved on its own. Chuckling at my suffering he tilted my face I was trying to bury in his chest. He leaned forward and gave me a kiss too. Ah, it feels so good. Give me more. I tried to push forward, but he broke the kiss. Giving me a teasing smile he spoke. There, I took a kiss from you. Now we are even. But I want more. Attacking his lips again I went for something more passionate. The previous two were the fluffy kisses on lips. This was an adult kiss. He was shocked at first, but quickly joined me in the effort. After several minutes, both of us were winded a little. I don't want to be even. I want more. The small surprise on his face was gone in an instant, and he started kissing me passionately. I found myself on my back with Rimuru on top of me. Our lips pressed together his tounge dancing with mine and exploring my mouth. I couldn't find words to describe how good it made me feel. The subtle moan escaping me was indication of that. Rimuru looked surprised at the sound. He was looking down on my flushed face, our lips still connected by a strand of saliva. He looked just as disheveled as I felt. Vitandi. 
Ah, just the way you say my name is so. Rimuru, I felt like I was burning up from the inside. The wine that came out was exactly how I felt. Rimuru more, reaching up, I wrapped my arms around his neck. Rimuru dot. He leaned down and once again, our mouths connected. We went at it for minutes, only stopping to catch our breaths. I don't know how long we were laying there in the grass, but I could see the afternoon sky giving way to sunset. We were just splayed on the ground, enjoying the care we could give each other. After a while we just hugged each other, feeling content. Ha ha dot vitandi. Who knew kissing feels so good? MHM. This day off was the best idea we had ever since we got here. Watcha think? Rimuru I think we are getting so lazy that we don't even bother to open up thought communication half the time we start talking like this. Our soul corridor is so strong that only intending to talk with the other is enough. Rimuru doesn't Voldora share a soul corridor of the same caliber with us? Then he'll get used to being the third wheel. Rimuru hahaha, or we find him a kind lady dragon to dote on. This just in, operation, get Voldora late as a go, at that we bursted out laughing, I'm glad we had this day off, you can bet your jiggly little butt, that I'll have us more, my butt isn't jiggly at all, oh, but it is, all that adorable slime went into that adorable behind, and to emphasize my point, I grabbed a handful of that little plumpness, Kaya, Vitandi, that sound was so goddamn cute, perverted cat, MHM, but I'm your perverted cat, Oh, he is blushing so hard. I oops. I think I stole his wind again, but then he just gave me a teasing grin. Speaking of, what was that about you wanting me to put a collar on you? Jaya, I forgot about that. I I don't know what you're talking about. He, sure you don't. My little kitty. NGHN, you lucky I like you. Sure I am, that's why I can get away with this. He suddenly pulled me on top of him. Before I could react, his right hand held my head for a passionate kiss, while his left wandered down to my butt. MHM, it felt too good, I couldn't stop squirming. Your tails tell me you like that. My mind was a bit foggy from all the good feelings I got from this, but I tried to respond anyway. Not that my brain-to-mouth filter worked at the moment, which is why my next sentence came out way more sensual than I intended. Touch me more. That wasn't exactly what I wanted to say, but I can't really take it back now. I could feel Rimuru getting in the mood as well, unless he had a flashlight in his pants. Which I doubt, considering the world we live in. Maybe we should take it slower. Yeah, maybe we should. But it's sure as hell easier said than done. I know we got a little carried away here. I wouldn't mind. He just patted me on my head. Me neither. But I want to do this the proper way. Having dates. Making memories together. All the romantic stuff. I don't know how those work. Me neither. We can figure it out together. Sigh you are right dot, but I am not giving up on these passion filled make out sessions, now that I got a taste, I can't live without it, dramatic much, tell me you disagree, thought so, anyways we should go for dinner, whoa wait, it's already this late, you just noticed, I had more important things occupying me, smooth slime strikes smitten kitten, it was super effective, pft, smitten kitten, I'm remembering that, maybe I'll put it on the tag of your collar, alright, all right, I'm your smitten kitten, but I swear to God, if you call me that in front of anyone, I'm making jelly for dessert stupid smooth slime. With that final note we went to have dinner. By the time we finished it was already night time, so calling it a day we headed for bed. Still in human form we got under the covers. I still laid on top of Rimuru. I got so used to him being a part of my bed. I don't think I can sleep any other way anymore. Good night Vida. Vida, I thought I should have a nickname for you. MHM, I like it, but what am I supposed to call you then? Rimu doesn't sound good. Rimi na, rim, rimrum, ha ha ha, you can brainstorm that some other time. Sleep, MHM, good night, and we found ourselves sleeping more comfortable than we ever did before. As I was falling asleep, I remembered one last important thing though. Rimuru I love you MHM, now I can sleep. Love you too. He, Ramura's pov, morning came way too quickly, but having Vitandi asleep on me more than made up for that. She was nuzzled in the crook of my neck purring contently. I could feel her breath tickling my skin. It was a really good feeling to wake up to. Looking outside I could see the morning light, which told me we should also get ready for the day. Stroking her hair I whispered into Vitandi's ear. Hey Vita, wake up, we have work to do today. She started stirring, cuddling closer. Five more minutes. I know those five more minutes. It will turn into hours. If we just lay here dot tilting her head a little, I gave a soft kiss to those enticing lips. Wake up, kitty. I've milk for you. She peeked up at me with one eye open, a small grin on her face. Freshly from my favorite source? What does she Vita? You just woke up. 
Try to be a bit less shameless. Haha, <laughs> you're blushing a lot. I wonder why. Did you think of something naughty? You sneaky little I tilted my head and started nibbling on her ear. She let out a cute yelp, followed by a quiet moan. That's what you get for being a naughty girl. She was squirming in my arms, but didn't try to pull away. NHN Ramuru don't tease me like this. Letting her ear go I sat up, holding onto her hips. Then how about we grab a quick breakfast and start our day? I'm sure we have a lot of work to do. Giving me an adorable pout. She clinged to me tightly. Carry me. I'll make breakfast once we are in the kitchen. Until then, I expect hampering. Lazy cat. Eating went quickly, but I had a thought we needed to discuss. Putting down my utensils, I looked at Vitandi. Vita, do you think we should tell the others about us? She contemplated the idea, but shook her head after a few seconds. We are the leaders of this budding nation. If we tell everyone that we are together, they'll probably throw a festival. Maybe make this day a national holiday or something. Yeah, that does sounds like something they would do. We can't keep it a secret forever though. Once things settled into a norm we can tell everyone. Sounds like a plan. Finishing up and heading towards the main building Vita, what should we call the building we work in? Vitandi technically it's a government building so parliament building? Main office building? Vitandi how about city hall? Works for me. Sao a Lord Ramuru, Lady Vitandi. An approaching force, numbering about a hundred, is quickly getting near the city. Ramuru we are on our way, can you see who they are? Sao a they appear to be Pegasus Nigs from Dwargan. Vitandi Dwargan, get Cajun and the others. Sao yes, my lady. Rushing to the city entrance we grouped up with the others. Benamaru, Sao A, Jian, Rigard and the dwarves. From the skies descending we saw none other than King Gazel Dwargo. Landing in the clearing they walked towards us, Cajun quickly kneeling for Gazel. Your majesty, it's an honor to see you again. MHM, Cajun, it's been a while. How have you been? Splendid, my king. Good. Now then, turning towards us, we felt his piercing gaze. Turning into our human form with Vita, we walked forward a little. You two must be the Magins leading this city. That is correct, King Gazel. I'm Ramuru Tempest and she is my co-leader, Vitandi Tempest. We are also the leaders of the Jura Forest Alliance. Please entries aside, I would like to know what does the king of the armed nation of Dwargan is doing here. Leaders of the Jura Forest, HMPF, quite the arrogant claim. Vitandi, don't. Vitandi didn't take that kind of rudeness though, said the dwarf who barged into our city without invitation. But I can see you are dense, so trainee? Sprouting from the ground, trainee emerged. Right, dryad see everything in the forest. Vitandi and Ramuru Tempest are the leaders of this forest. Their claim was acknowledged by the dryads and the monsters living in it. I'd appreciate if you wouldn't insult our lord and lady King Gazel. He looked properly shocked. A dryad? HMPF, ha 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 ha, I see. I apologize then. It seems my first thought was mistaken. Well then, what can we do to help you? I doubt you came all the way here to say hello. I don't want to fight unnecessarily. I heard that some powerful magins dealt with the orc lord, so I came to ascertain their personality. Are they friend or foe? I have a feeling, but and how would you go about that? By having a friendly duel, of course. I see you carry a sword, Ramuru Tempest. If it isn't just fought show, then I'd like to see for myself what kind of person are you. Vitani don't dot why am I trying? To think that the hero king, Gazzled Wargo would be so barbaric. Are you perhaps incapable of having a proper conversation? The Pegasus Knights looked ready to throw hands at that insult, but the king found it hilarious. Ha 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 what a sharp towns you got there. A warrior's spirit shows in their blade. That is a truth I learned in my 300 years of ruling over Dwargan. And what I learned since we founded our city from a small gobeling village not even a year ago, is that I'll gladly abandon my warrior spirit in order to protect my people. So answer me, Gazel Dwargo. Oi, Vitandi, what are you releasing your aura for? Are you a friend or foe? The knights were on the verge of charging ahead, but Gazel stopped them. If you are not a danger to us, I'm a friend. And if you are, I'll personally lead my army to make sure there will be a threat no longer. There were a few seconds of tense stare down, but Vitandi concealed her aura in the end. You shouldn't go challenging the leaders of neighboring nations. It looks hostile and just plain rude. Not everyone is a battle maniac you know. Deciding to guide back this conversation to a less aggressive exchange, I spoke up next. If you want to spar with me we can, after the pleasantries are over. I'm sure the travel here was tiring, even on a flying horse. Vitandi are you also turning into battle maniac? Nope, but he looks like a good guy. I'm sure it will be fine. Before we moved our meeting to a proper place, Gazel's eyes widened. Is that you, Sword Saint? 
Following his line of sight, we found Hakiru chuckling. It has been quite some time since I was called by that name. You are no longer the scared little boy I found, lost in the forest crying for a guiding hand. It is good to see you, my old teacher. I can see the years haven't taken away from your strength. Ho ho ho. It is thanks to our lord and lady. They gave us a new home, a new purpose, even names. I'm Hakiru, the Kijin Swordmaster. At your service, King Gazzle Dwargo. Gazel scanned us with his eyes again. It seems his opinion rose about us. If my old teacher follows you, then you are certainly no evil. But I still wish to see your sword skills, Ramuru Tempest. Just Ramuru is fine. And sure thing. Let's have some refreshments while we have our talk. Going to City Hall, we occupied one of the meeting rooms. It was set up in a Japanese style. Tatami flooring and everything. The Tandy called it weed style, but to me it's just normal. Shuna brought us some tea and pastries, and we began our discussion. From Gazel's side there was him, and the captain of the Pegasus Knights. From our side there was me and Vitandi, Shuna, Benamaru, Saoe, Hakiru, Rigard Cajun, and to oversee our meeting, trainee. So what brought you here, King Gazel? In truth only a few things, but all important. First, I'd like to know how you dealt with the orc invasion and the orc lord. Orc disaster, actually. He evolved into a demon lord during the battle. That is a terrifying thought. It was shocking, but we won, so no point thinking too hard about it. The Kijin and Vitandi dealt with the army while I defeated the orc disaster. How exactly did you defeat him? Hmm, I ate him. Ever since the beginning of this meeting, this was the first time King Gazel's face turned into anything other than stoic. He was surprised. What do you mean, you ate him? Well, I'm a slime. I can eat anything that's weaker than me. So I ate the orc disaster. I see what about the remaining orcs? I saw them throughout the forest and in the city as well. I couldn't just throw them out. They invaded BQs they were starving. So in exchange for labor, they became part of our alliance. Clever thinking. But how did you manage to convince nearly 150,000 orcs to serve you? There wasn't any convincing. I offered them a place if they were willing to work for it. Compared to starvation and death, it's obvious what they chose. And it's not like they are slaves. We actually had to order them to rest and have days off work twice a week. At first they didn't even have lunch breaks until I told them it's mandatory. Vitandi not to mention the work hours. From dawn till dusk, who in their right minds does that? Grateful people. Vitandi they should think about themselves more. Well, we can only hope. I've been also wondering about the monsters in the city. Not just the orcs, but every single one is an evolved monster. Hobgoblins, Tempest Wolves, Kijin, High Orcs. I even saw some orc generals. We also have an orc king. And how is that possible? Vitandi, who was just sitting next to me quietly until now, decided to answer. Everyone evolved after we named them. You named them? Is he okay? His eyes are getting wider and wider. Yeah, Rimuru named the males and the Tempest Wolves, while I named the females. Except your new project. Yeah, I named one male lizardman. Oh yeah, we also have them Altho they are dragonites now. King Gazel took a deep breath, then exhaled. And just how is it possible that you two aren't dead after giving out names to so many monsters? I locked eyes with Vitandi at the question. That is a good question indeed. I never really thought about it. Vitandi just shrugged. Well, I feel kin to the same for now. We can figure it out later. We are unique monsters. We can recover our magicules without issue, as long as we are alive. This even sounds believable. Not that it's important for now. Gazel contemplated the answer for a minute. It must be a tough spot for him. As a king, he has to decide how to approach us. Whatever he will choose, it will affect his people. Eventually he looked at us with his piercing gaze. From what I gathered so far, this city has developed rather quickly. It even has things I haven't seen before. Not to mention its military strength. And its very fortunate geographic position. Thank you, King Gazel. Vitandi I played enough Civ to know where this is going. And that is, Gazel spoke before Vita could answer me. Rimuru, Vitandi, what would you say to entering a treaty with my nation? Whoa, are you sure? That would mean acknowledging our gathering as a genuine nation. Vitandi called it. I'm sure. If your nation keeps growing as it does now, it will play an important role in the future among the Western nations. As such, having Dwargan's backing would be very beneficial to you. Vita looked straight into his eyes with her doubtful gaze. And what would you get out of it? Isn't it obvious? You are a gathering of nearly 200,000 named monsters, each at least a B rank. Your nation can become a trade center on this half of the continent. Being your first ally and backer, my nation would benefit the most in the future. You could have your first official entry into human territory through Dwargan. 
Of course, details would have to be discussed in later, but I think we can sign a non-agreesion and mutual backing treaty for now. This sounds good. Vitandi it does. We accept. Reaching out, we shook hands on it. Now only one question remains. What shall be the name of your nation? Vitandi it must have Tempest in it. That's for sure. In that case, the Jura Tempest Federation. The others from our side cheered happily at the name. Xi'an even went a step further. Then we shall name this city our capital, Tempest. For our great lord and lady. Cheers. Vitani hey Ramuru, I have an idea. You just sent a chill down my non-existent spine go for it. Whatever it is you planned. Vitani spoke up in a proud, cheerful voice. And to make it even more official. From this day forward, the world will know us as Prince Ramuru and Princess Vitandi. The others cheered even more loudly. Prince and Princess? Vitandi yup. Now we can royally fuck up. You did this only for a pun? Vitandi also because it sounds good. But aren't federations run by democracy? Vitandi I have no fucking clue. Alright, let's just roll with it. Gazel looked at us weirdly. Wouldn't it make more sense to be king and queen? Vitandi well, if we follow the hierarchy of strength and name giving, Voldora is technically above us. Even if he said we are equals, this could be our inside joke. Imagine Voldora jetting free and then we announce to the world's confusion. The king has returned. There would be pandemonium. Nah, prince and princess will do. Rimuru and I have a reason for that. Tone down your scheming grin. Gazel's getting worked up. Vitandi he will live. After the meeting, me and Gazel had a special training session with Hakuru. Vitandi said she couldn't care less about it. She admires swordmanship. But being a magic user, she doesn't really get the tingles from watching us battle with wooden swords. Everyone had their fun and we gained a new ally. Gazel went home. And we happily returned to our new daily routine. I just hope we don't get any more unexpected visitors. Especially since it became clear that people watched our fight against the orcs. But it has been a while. It's not like an all-powerful demon lord will barge in to say hello, right? Vitandi's Pav. Our nation was getting more and more realized every single day. Tempest City was growing larger. We already have a functional water system. Flushable toilets are a luxury people don't miss until it's gone. Not to mention having proper bathrooms in every household. Gabiru was happily blabbering about how marvelous it feels to stand under a hot shower. I feel you fam. The main roads across the Jura Forest were getting paved, making travel easier. The orcs also provided excellent security for that too, along with running inns for resting. To fully utilize the forest, several orc settlements have been established all over the place. Another surprise was the few ogre villages that were on the other side of Jura, seeking us out. They wanted to join us. We are talking about 400 people in total. Hundred of those were very strong fighters. After naming all of them, the warriors were assigned under Benamaru. The remaining joined in nationwide developments. Having craftsmen like Korob, or tailors like Shuna, really helped out through the many towns. We truly achieved an interspecies paradise. Gazel visited us again today. Cajun was our official assistant when it came to Dwargan. The king said he has a gift for us that looks like a body bag. Gazel, I'm all for presents, but that looks like a corpse. Ha ha ha, don't worry, Vitandi. He is alive. Opening the bag, Minister Vesta's unconscious face stared back at me. The dude who tried to frame us when we visited Dwargan. And what do you want me to do with him? He was my top researcher. But for a while he was lost in all the politics. Hopefully a new environment will help him, while also being useful to you. His knowledge is a great boon to anyone he serves. Cajun helped the waking Vesta stand up and looked at me earnestly. Lady Vitandi, I believe in Vesta. Please give him a chance. Hugh you did nothing but help us Cajun ever since you came here. If you think he can be a good addition to our nation, I trust you. Vesta also looked grateful at me. Thank you Lady Vitandi. I'll work hard to repay your kindness. Hmm, you look different from last time. How do I say this healthier? I guess politics does drain a person dot. So you were a researcher, right? Indeed. I studied how to utilize magic through science. For example the mass manufacturing of healing potions. Oh, really? What a coincidence. Our potions are powerful. But only Ramuru and I can make them. We have a group of dragonutes cultivating hippocute herbs in the cave where Voldora was sealed. How about we set up a lab for you there? It would be a really great help if we could mass produce our full potions. That would be fantastic, my lady. Dear God, he looks like a kid on Christmas Day. It really seems like politics was the main issue here. Giving back an equally big smile, I decided to encourage him in the right direction. Vesta, I don't want you to worry about the past or any sort of political issues. Just just enjoy your passion and research all you want. 
There, he looks like a completely different person from back then. Thank you. Cajun and Vesta went their way to get started on the new lab. Me and Gazel remained to have some small talk before he left back for his own kingdom. It's rare to see you without Ramuru. What is he up to? He is overseeing the expansion plans with the orcs. Where to establish new towns, how to connect them, things like that. Nothing on your agenda? I've been having a small research of my own, but so far I didn't have any luck. He looked interested. And what is it you are looking for? Now how to phrase this? Hmm. Dot tell me Gazel. Have you ever met a Nekamata before me? No. I only heard legends and stories about them. Me neither. I was born in the sealed cave. I never met another one of my kind. I don't know anything about Nekamatas, other than what I know about myself. And apparently, nobody else has met a Nekamata before. They only heard some vague stories about the two-tailed spirit cats, as they called them. Hmm. Perhaps there is some knowledge in the royal library back at Dwargan. I'll ask some of my scholars to look for information. Thanks. I really want to know more about my own race of people. All I know is that Nekamatas used to be superior spirits, and they, we, fell from grace for some serious crime. That's why we ended up with material bodies and lost our immortality. Because apparently, spiritual life forms are immortal. What really put me off was a cassock's response to my question. Answer. Information about Nekamatas have been blocked by Stellar King Dragon, Veldanava, on the request of Ramaris, Queen of Spirits. I'll be going then. Goodbye Gazel. Leave the heroic atmosphere home the next time you visit. Try to relax. Ha ha ha. It's not something I can leave behind after centuries of honing and refining. I just stuck my town out at that. I wonder how this looks like from an outside perspective. A 10 year old looking cat girl. Sticking her town out at the hero king of Dwargan. It must be a sight to behold. Waving goodbye I went to do my own work. Running a whole city was tiring. But running a nation is on a whole new level. And the paperwork is something I honestly wish I could set on fire and watch it burn. But Shuna got mad at me the last time I did that, and having such a pretty girl giving me the disappointed look, is something I do not wish on my worst enemy Dodd. But the fire was pretty. Arriving at City Hall, Shuna welcomed me. Lady Vitandi, welcome back. Hi Shuna, what's on the planner today? We have some requests from artisans wishing to open their shops in the city. Some kobold merchants also wish to establish their base here. Do the shops need to be reviewed? I've already done that for you. What a perfect girl. Great job, Shuna. What about the kobold merchants? Thank you. The leader of their caravan wishes to speak with you personally to negotiate the details. Okay, I'll sign off the paperwork first, then have our meeting with this kobold. I'll inform him then. Thank you. That's a lot of paperwork. Let's see. Hmm. It looks good. I swear Shuna is a godsend. I really only have to sign it. It still took about an hour, but I finished it. Rimuru arrived not long after. Hey Vita, how's it going? Plopping down on his lap in cat form, I stretched out the stiffness from sitting for an hour. Not much. About to meet some kobold merchant. They wanna settle here. You coming? Scratching behind my ear, Rimuru picked me up in his arms. Yes, rub my belly. There oh, pamper me more. I worked really hard today. Purring happily I achieved liquid cat state. Sure, I heard kobolds are really talented when it comes to trading. Maybe we can get ourselves a professional. Naya dot. Vita, whatever you say just don't stop petting me. PFT. I think that's the first time I heard you meowing. It doesn't come as instinctually as I feared I honestly hate how Simonime has these catgirls who meow every two words. Ramuru started rubbing my belly again, earning another unsolicited meow for me. Naya Ramuru, you sound way too cute. Nayu, must, resist, the Naya, victory is mine. Stop smirking stupid slime. Haha, <laughs> you don't sound too convincing there, smitten kitten. Naya, Naya in public. Ha ha ha, even in your mind you meow. It seems I turn you into the most popular catgirl archetype. I'm G Ganya get back at you for this. Leaning down he left a small peck on my nose. Sure you will. A knock at the door interrupted our flirting. Lady Vitandi, the kobold merchant has arrived. Coming. We went to the meeting room and is that a dog on two legs? Rimuru don't be rude. He looks like a cartoon dog. He is so cute. Rimuru, name him. Rimuru how about we have the meeting first? The kobold stood up and bowed to us. It's a pleasure to meet you, Lady Vitani and Lord Rimuru. 
All right, Vitandi, focus on your job. Still held in Ramuru's arms, I greeted back. The pleasure is ours. So we heard you want to move into Tempest. We also heard great things about yours and your brethren's skills as merchants. I'll get straight to the point. Would you like to work for us? The kobold looked shocked. At this point, that's the default reaction. Are you sure you would want a kobold? Ramuru sighed at the also usual question. We don't look down on weaker races. We judge people on their character and actual skills. The Goblin King. Rigard told me about the kobolds who traveled here before us. Despite the dangers, they braved across the Jura forest and successfully traded among the villages here. Thank you Lord Ramuru. I was honestly shocked to see the small village I used to visit turn into such a marvelous place. Now that made me perk up. You were the kobold merchants selling stuff to Rigard and the others? Yes, Lady Vitandi. Then you are hired. We need an expert once we start trading with other nations, and you already know people from our government officials. You are perfect for the job. What do you say? You and your group can settle down here and help us establish our trading network. Ramuru if he faints after giving him a name, I'm blaming you. Relax. And of course, since you will become our subordinates, we will name you and your group. Default face again. And then name us? Go on Ramuru, it's your time to shine. Ramuru fine. Yes, and to start it off your name will be Kobe. Default reactions later. We met the other kobolds and went through the default things with them. And so we gained our trading masters. Assigning Kobe to work with Rigard, we continued on our day. But we can't have an uninterrupted routine now, can we? Sawe a larger group of humans made an encounter with the goblin riders. They're heading our way. According to Gobda, three of those humans are old friends. Oh, Eren's group. But who are the others? I dunno. Hey Sawe, how many people are we talking about? Sawe about 40 in total, my lady. Let's see who are our new friends. Ramuru bring them here. I'm curious what they want. Sawe they don't appear to be hostile. Gopta is currently telling them how best to cook night spiders. I'm proud of you Gopta. Ramuru you turned him into a food maniac, didn't you? Of course I did. If he hunts the food, he should know how to make it too. We were in our larger meeting room. This one was western style with chairs, not the weeb version. Ramuru it's called Japanese. I call it how I see it. To me, it's weeb style. Ramuru alright? Alright? What do you mean, alright? Where did your witty remark go? Ramuru? Oi! Don't ignore me! Stop smirking! Oi! So you two are the magins these three told me about. An unfamiliar old man said. Ramuru looked towards him. Yes, I'm Ramuru Tempest and she is my partner, Vitandi Tempest. So it's true. A slime and a nekamata are leading a large gathering of monsters. I honestly don't know how to react. Well, you are seeing how cute we are, so maybe less suspicious eyes would work? And you are? Let me guess William. My name is Fuse. I'm the Grandmaster of the The Free Guild in Bloomond. Well, you have a William face. Whoa, the Grandmaster himself came to visit us? Why though? Sir Ramuru, these three idiots might have told me you aren't dangerous, but as a leading member of a nation's protective forces, I can't take these kinds of reports at face value. I wanted to see for myself what kind of gathering are we talking about. And how do you plan on doing that? I swear if he challenges you to a duel, I'm throwing him out. Ramuru Vita, don't. People in this world are different. Fine, but I'll wipe up the floor with him if he does. Simple, I wish to stay for a few days and see what kind of lives you lead. Finally, someone with common sense. Giving him my best cat smile, I nodded my head. Then welcome to Tempest City, Grandmaster Fuse. I hope you'll enjoy your stay. Turning towards the other group's leader, because they weren't with Fuse as we found out, I prompted them to talk. What about you? What brings you here? The three guys sitting there looked varying degrees of confused at us. The skinny guy with glasses had a face like he was trying to solve a puzzle. The burly guy looked to be lost a few steps behind, trying to figure out how they got here. The middle one, who looked to be the leader, wore an annoyed face of confusion. Who made you bite a lemon? Sour guy spoke up. None of you find this weird? A mere slime and a cat leading an entire nation? Ah, I see. He can't tell who is boss here because we hide our auras. Listen buddy, if you wanna feel our auras just say so. HMPF, as if a cat like you would have any aura. Vitandi Xian, stop. I'll deal with this. This guy almost got his head bashed in. Seriously, learn to read from context clues. Fuse, Erin, Cavill, Guido. I'll release my aura. Don't get too worked up. I just show off a little and it will be over. 
The four nodded and I let my aura go. All of them tensed at the pressure. After a few seconds I concealed it again. Well, the three looked properly miffed. Fuse and his group prepared beforehand, but still got shaken a little. So now that we established who is in charge here, can we talk? Or would you like to feel Ramuru's aura too? Much more respectfully, he introduced himself and his gang. His name is Yaum and they come from Falmyth. They were sent to defeat the Orc Lord, but everyone involved knew it was a suicide mission. They planned to bail and start a new life in another kingdom as adventurers. Hmm dot your kingdom sounds like a real piece of work. Well, they had to keep up appearances. Whether we live or die was no concern for them. Why don't you work for us then? Huh, don't give me that look. You'll be in good hands how about we make you a champion? We will tell the world that your group beat the orcs, and we were the friendly mosters who gave you aid. How does that sound? Let me think about it. Meeting adjourned. Fuse's group went to check out the place they'll be staying at, Yaum's group went to see the city, and we went to our merry way. Rimuru, wanna go on a date? Rimuru, don't we have work to do? Not really. Meetings are done. Paperwork is done. The rest can go on without our supervision. Rimuru in that case. How about we have a picnic? I'm gonna make some sandwiches. You get us some nice drinks. Rimuru I don't think we should drink alcohol. It's still broad daylight out. I'm okay with some juice too. Getting everything ready we went to a nearby hill, overseeing the developing city. It was a really nice view. The few clouds gave a nice lighting to the scenery. The wind blowing across the forest brought the scent of wilderness along with it. Ha huh, it's relaxing up here. Let me guess, you wanna take a nap? We were sitting under the only tree standing on the hill, on a very soft blanket. Shuna went overboard with everything we use, not that I mind. Crawling towards Ramuru form my spot. I laid my head on his shoulder, whispering in his ear. I have another idea too. He put his hand on the back of my head, running his fingers through my hair and tilting it upwards. I could see it in his eyes, he also had ideas. Leaning down he kissed me deeply. It caught me a bit by surprise, but I got on board fast. Saddling him from the front I deepened our kiss, my towns running around his mouth. We pulled apart after a few minutes, panting. Our faces still close I whispered against his lips. Smitten kitten is hungry for more. He fought hard against his desires, I could see it. Then she will have to wait. We are in public. My mind goes haywire. Every time we start getting it on. Is this puberty again? My body is about that age. Answer dot. It was a rhetorical question. I don't want to know. Understood. Just laying against him filled me with contentment. Is this what love feels like? Rimuru I feel the same so probably. I wonder dot. Rimuru about? And never mind. Just a weird thought. Nothing more. Rimuru this sounded sus. It's nothing. Really. Rimuru. M-H-M. Reeite. Rimuru I have my ways to extract information, you know. My lips are sealed. It's way too embarrassing. Rimuru I can see the blush spreading. At this rate, your fur will turn pink. N-G-H-N. It's really embarrassing. Rimuru I promise I won't laugh or anything. I was thinking if it's even possible for us to have children together. And what would they look like? Rimuru that is a good question. His face also started to change color. He, two tomatoes under the tree. Rimuru he you know. We could ask our skills. But it was just a passing thought. And it's not like we would have kids anytime soon. Rimuru I'm still curious. Great sage. Notice. Interspecies reproduction is possible. The resulting offspring would be a unique monster, a combination of the species of the parents. Rimuru there you have it. A slime cat or cat slime? What would that be like? Rimuru I have some really cute images in my head right now. Me too how did we end up talking about cat slimes on a picnic? Rimuru we're horny. Do you want to procrease? Vita. I meant for play. This heat in my stomach is getting really hard to ignore. We are still in public. Stop blushing like that. Looking at you is making that heat grow. That wasn't a no. It was a maybe I couldn't stop myself from attacking those lips of his again. It's been a few weeks since we started dating, and my rational thought processes were slowly giving out on me. I found my back against the soft blanket. Every time I'm on top, in the end I find myself on my back. Not that I'm complaining. I carry some spare panties with me to change what would be visible even through my shorts. This was no exception. I have to make sure I don't leave a stain on the blanket though. It seems Ramuru is also reaching his limits. The bulge pressing between my legs is undeniably throbbing. Moaning into his mouth, my body starts moving on its own, rubbing against the very much welcomed intruder. The heat that was pooling in my stomach was spreading across my whole body. I could feel my mind going foggy. 
Ramuru tried to break off the exchange before we completely lose focus on where are we, but I wrap my legs around his hips. Vita we are still dot. I could barely hear him through my own rapid breathing. I kept moving my hips faster. My voice cracked as I let out a quiet whine. Ramuru only heard it because we were still mouth to mouth. Don't stop. Please I can't take it anymore. I don't know how my face looked, but if it was half as desperate as I felt, then I'm sure it conveyed how deep I was in my own haze of lust. Ramuru hesitated for a moment before putting up a barrier to block sound. He kissed me deeply, his town rampaging through my mouth. Every swirl sent a jolt of pleasure through my body. His hips started moving in sync with mine. I could feel the tension in his body building. At some point I found myself shirtless, Ramuru gently massaging my chest, stroking my nipples. Every twirl, every pinch made my back arch from the electric feeling it caused. I could feel it building up, my first orgasm in this life. Vaguely I thought about doing it under a tree on a picnic blanket, but I couldn't really focus on that thought. Ramuru's rhythm became erratic. He was close to, picking up the pace, our bodies pressed even closer, tightening my hold on his hips. I shoved as hard as I could against him, moaning loudly into his mouth. He also pushed hard into me, I could feel his shuddering body and something hot seeping through my pants. Panting heavily we laid there in the same position for a while, enjoying the afterglow. Sadly we couldn't stay like that forever. We had to clean up, in many different ways. And it was nearing dinner time. If we don't get back people will start looking for us and if we are found in this position, it will be an awkward thing to discuss. Ramuru that was. Amazing. Ramuru yeah, thank you. Ramuru for what? I know you wanted to wait in doing this kind of stuff, but I pushed you. Ramuru have you forgotten that we are two consenting adults? You didn't push me to do anything. But, Ramuru I felt the same way you did. I was only scared a little about actually doing it. If anything, thank you for helping me take this step. Just what did I do to get such a good boyfriend? Ramuru you got me an amazing girlfriend. So we got each other as presents from the universe. Got it. Ha ha ha, maybe we really did. Cleaning up we turned back into our not dirty forms, hiding the evidence of what happened inside Ramuru's stomach, rushing back to take a quick bath and cleaning our clothes plus the blanket. We made quick work of it and had dinner. This was a good day, probably the best I ever had. What do you think Ramuru? Ramuru I think we will be found out sooner rather than later, if we keep up like this. We'll think about this tomorrow. Come cuddle me, I'm sleepy. Ramuru I feel like your favorite part of the day is when you get back to sleep. Of course it is, I can sleep all the while clinging to you. There is no better part of the day. Ramuru he, I'm glad you like me so much. How could I not? You are so freaking cute, you are blushing even in slime form. Not to mention what a sweet guy you are and just as perverted as I am. Cuddling happily we let sleep take over. Ramuru's pov. Waking up was getting more pleasant every day. Seeing Vita next to me, she is beautiful even in her cat form. Not to mention, adorable. Waking her. We got ready for the day. We were meeting with Yaum to hear his answer about becoming our champion. I thought about checking in with Fuse, but he looked really relaxed, so I figured he got his answer about us. If he enjoys our place, he can rest all he wants. Yaum was already at City Hall when we got there. He looked happy to see us, but his face was troubled. Hey Yaum, what's up? Is something wrong? Nothing's wrong. Sir Ramuru, I just wanted to talk to you too. Sure thing. Come along, it's more comfortable to have a chat in the meeting room. Settling down around the table we waited for Yaum to gather himself. I checked out the city yesterday. It's a really fascinating place. Everyone is happy and it became clear that you two are benevolent rulers. I wouldn't mind settling down here. Vita looked at him knowingly. I sense a but there. But I feel out of place here. Out of place? Why? Back home, our group were convicted criminals, thieves, robbers, bandits. In Falmuth, it wasn't easy to get by. If you didn't want to starve, sometimes you had to do desperate things. We were sent here as the subjugation force against the Orc Lord, because no one would have missed us. Seeing how peaceful this place is, I don't know if we could really become a part of it. That sounds rough, but he doesn't look like a bad guy. I don't feel any bad vibes from him, nor from his group. What do you think, Vita? Vitandi let me check it. Do you regret your crimes? I regret not running away from that place sooner. But I couldn't just leave either. In the slums, there were people who couldn't even steal for themselves. If we didn't get them food, who would've? Not that it mattered in the end we got arrested. Leaving those people defenseless. I think we found the best candidate for our champion. 
Vitandi I agree, all I see is a good guy who placed others before him, the sad truth was that you had to resort to crimes, but I don't see a criminal, I see someone who'd fight for the people, Yaum looked on the verge of tears, it's okay big guy, we get it, your worries are for nothing, having someone like you would make us happy, compassing himself, he sniffled a little before responding, in that case I gladly accept your offer, Sir Ramuru, Miss Vitandi, welcome to Tempest Yaum, setting them up with Korob, his group got decked out with brand new gear, and to not just look, but be like a champion well, Hakiru was all too eager to train them, let's hope they don't regret it, days have passed and things were getting into a norm, I honestly got so used to Fuse's gang, I started overlooking them, so before I completely forget about them, I decided to ask what's his verdict, he already helped us with spreading the rumors about Yaum's group, so I took that as a result of trust, yo, Fuse, got a minute, Sir Ramuru, how can I help you? I was wondering about that myself. You got so comfortable that you might as well move here. Should I offer you a job? Ha ha ha. I just enjoy a vacation. Your city is a true wonder. Sadly, I can't stay. Maybe once I retire I take you up on your offer. I'm glad you like us. So, how long will you stay with us? Should I get a house ready for you instead of the inn for important guests? Maybe for my next visit. But me and the three airheads will go home tomorrow. I have work to do, a report to make about you. And those three are getting way too comfortable. Hmm. Who are you reporting to? The King of Blumand. Then that means in that case, tell the king that we would be happy to enter a treaty with them. Even becoming trade partners. It sounds beneficial for both of us. But what about the transport of goods? There aren't exactly roads in the Jura Forest. We'll build it. In exchange we will collect a toll for the usage of the road. We'll also deal with lodging so travelers and merchants have a place to rest. And the orcs deal with road security. Hmm. I'll discuss it with the king. You should come visit Blumen once we figure things out on our end. I'm sure the king would love to meet you. It's a deal. We have our potential next ally. Neat. The next day came faster than we expected. Seeing off the four adventurers of Blumend, me and Vita went for a little walk through the city. Well, she walked on all fours, and I slid and bounced around. But that doesn't have the right ring to it. It's wild seeing how our small village turned into a bustling city. You tell me. It feels like last week I was running in an empty cave to find anything, only to run into a freaking Sundir dragon. And the cutest blob of slime I've ever seen. Yeah, I remember that day. I saw a lonely dragon who wanted friends, then all of a sudden, a kitty walked in. This honestly sounds like the start of a joke. The slime and the cat walk into the dragon's chamber. I'm gonna sit down one of these days and write down a bunch of jokes like that. Can't wait to. Notice alert. An enormous magicule signature is heading to your position at incredible velocity. Vita. Vitandi attention all leading officials. A signature of enormous magicule magnitude is heading directly towards me and Ramuru. We will lead it outside of the city. We will deal with it. Whatever it is, you are forbidden from engaging it in combat without our explicit permission. That's an order. Shion but. Vitandi no buts I won't risk getting any of us killed. I gave an order and I expect one kind of response. Xian yes Lady Vitandi. Weren't you a bit too harsh? Vitandi whatever is heading for us is stronger than you and me together. If there is a chance it doesn't want to hurt us, I'll take it. Up to the hill. It's a good distance away from the city. Getting up on the hill we had our picnic on, we waited with bated breath. We felt it before we saw it. Vitandi is right, it's way too strong. Notice. The extent of this power source cannot be measured. At present it is five times bigger than you and Vitandi Tempest together. Vitandi without even trying. It's five times us in strength what the fuck is this? A pink blur landed before us, creating a crater. Up close, the aura felt even more heavier. As the dust settled, what we saw didn't match what we felt. It was a little girl, maybe 14 at best in a very skimpy outfit. The high-pitched voice at least matched the appearance. Wahahaha. I'm the one and only dragonoid in existence, the destroyer, demon lord Milam Nava. I came here to say hello. Ramuru Vitandi do not engage under any circumstances that's an order of the highest caliber it's a demon lord called Milam Nava. We might have panicked a little, but soon me a demon lord just landed in our backyard. What the hell am I supposed to do here? Vitandi, what are we gonna do? Vitandi stay calm and on alert. If any of our guys fail to understand their order, we have to de-escalate before it even begins. We need to figure out what she wants. Vita she is poking me what do I do? Vitandi introduce yourself. And now she is petting you. All right. Deep breath. I it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Ramuru Tempest and she is my friend Vitandi Tempest. H hello. Is there a business we can help you with around here? 
Vitandi nice and calm. You are doing good. Wahahaha. I wanted to see the two magins who defeated the orc lord, so I came to the strongest people I could see here. Vitandi looked like the dictionary picture of putting on a brave front as she spoke up. Why you could tell we are the strongest? How? Oh, you were trying to hide your strength? Sorry, but nothing can stay hidden from my milam eye. Wahahaha. She has a unique skill named after her. By the way, in the crystal ball I saw two humanoids. One looked to be a lechantrop the other a silverish blue-haired human. Was that you too? Should we? Vitandi yes. Be as accommodating as possible. She seems like an easygoing person, so we can work with this. Turning into our human form, Milam started circling us while humming to herself. Wow, you two are really interesting. That soul corridor you share looks really strong. Are you two in a soul union? Um, what is a soul union? I have no idea. Milam looked at us curiously for a few seconds before dropping the subject. Well, I won't pry into your private life. I'm not rude like that. That's honestly relieving. So what brings you here other than meeting us? Hmm, that's it. I came to say hello. I can feel your blood pressure rising Vita. Take a deep breath. Yeah, like that. Calm down. Vitandi, I need a drink. Something strong. I'll get you one later. Our guys caught up to us. I immediately got ready to tie them up if they tried anything. Luckily, the severity of the situation came through dot or they got scared by us yelling at them. We'll have to apologize later. Vitandi after my drink. Whoa, these guys are kidgens, right? It's been a while since I've seen one. At least a thousand years. Wahahaha. <laughs> they look quite good. Maybe in a century or two, they could keep up with sparring against me. Ramuru Hakuru, take the lead. We need to be polite here. He glanced at me, before giving a bow to Milam. Thank you for your kind words. To receive such praise from one of the strongest demon lords in history, it is truly an honor. Wahahaha. <laughs> Keep it up and you guys will be good enough. Turning towards us, she shocked us even more with what she said next. You two should become demon lords. I'm sorry, what? Vitandi did she just? Gave us her support to become demon lords? Um, thank you, but I think we are good. Smooth, kitten. Smooth. Vitandi, what am I supposed to say to such a monstrous being? After she told us to become freaking demon lords? Wah, but being a demon lord is fun. You can boss around magins, beat up people you don't like. She is rather childish, don't you think? Vitandi, a childish nuclear weapon. Oh, joy. We are already busy running our nation, and it doesn't sound like too much fun to me. Milam was shocked by the refusal. But it's so much fun, you wouldn't get bored ever. Vitani are you fucking? Milam are you bored? The shocked face she wore answered everything. But wait, if you don't want to be demon lords, it must mean you have something much more fun to do. Tell me, tell me. We really are just busy. Running a nation is hard. And now she is pouting. Vitandi, I have an idea. Vitandi pulled out a jar from her pocket dimension. It's actually a mimic version of my stomach, but she calls it her special pocket. A milam. Would you like some honey? She tilted her head adorably. What's honey? It's a really sweet food. Try it. The Kijan and Ranga were looking on in absolute disbelief. I don't blame them. The last 10 minutes feels like a fever dream. And it still hasn't ended. Milam took the jar. Stuck his fingers in it, then took a few sniffs of it, before licking it off. Her face lit up with childish joy. What is this? It's so good. I never ate anything like this before. Vitani smiled at her as she explained what honey is, and how to find it. Milam listened attentively. I'll definitely remember this. I'm glad I could show you something good, Milam. Hmm. By the way, you should call me Lady Milam. I'm a demon lord you know. Please don't get us killed, Vita. I'm sorry, I thought we could be friends. You, me and Ramuru. But if you don't want to you should have become an actress, instead of a chef. Well, if you really want to, then I'll allow it. But only if I can get more of this honey. We have even better things. Lots of tasty food, I'm sure you'd like. Milam was glowing with excitement. I wanna try them. I'd be happy to give you as much as you want. Dot. But I'm worried about my subordinates. They might get scared of you. I don't want my friend to be feared by my people. Could you perhaps tell them we are friends? To make them calmer? Wahahaha. <laughs> Don't worry, Vitandi. They won't have to worry about anything. Show me the way. Vitandi, I could really kiss you right now. That deserved an Oscar. Vitandi, it helped that she looks like an easy person to get along with. Having a demon lord friend can really help us out. Well, she seems to have a sweet tooth. And you are an excellent chef. It's basically a friendship made in heaven or should I say hell? She is a demon lord after all. Vitandi it doesn't matter. If I can bond over food with her, I'm positive she is a good person. Aside from the initial scare, she isn't what I'd imagine a demon lord. I hope we can truly become friends with her. 
Heading into the city, the Kijin were still trying to get it together. Ranga for his part was happily carrying Milam, Vita and me. For a demon lord she is very friendly. And excitable. She was staring with wonder at everything. This place looks awesome. Thank you. We worked really hard to make it work. People already gathered in the main square as we went up to the podium for announcements. Alright everyone, we have a new friend here in Tempest. Make sure you welcome her appropriately. Milam stepped forward after my little introduction. Wahahaha, I'm Demon Lord, Milam Nava. Rimuru and Vitandi are my friends, so if you have any troubles, you can ask me for help too. The reaction was better than I expected. People cheered and welcomed her. Guess she is famous. Rigard raised his hand for a question. Lady Milam, may I ask what is the extent of your relationship with Lord Ramuru and Lady Vitandi? Milam puffed her chest out proudly. Wahahaha, they are my friends. Hmm. No, they are my besties. Yes. Wahahaha, we are besties indeed. We just gained a bestie. The people look happy about it too. Vitandi it's kind of embarrassing to talk about besties at my age. Yeah, same. But it's honestly not that bad. Giving a smile to Milam, I reciprocated her enthusiasm. Yeah, we are besties. Wahahaha. Which is why I decided to live here. Now hold on. Vitandi you and I both know it's too late. Loud cheers followed her declaration. Well, we have a new resident. The excitement toned down eventually, so we went to set up our newest addition. Shuna prepared a really nice sailor school uniform for Milam in white and blue color scheme. Rigard set up one of the fancier rooms in the important guest inn, until we can get a house ready for her. She was easily bribed with food, so Shuna and the goblin cooks pampered her silly. Meanwhile, Vita and I had a meeting with our head staff. Vitandi grabbed a bottle of our newly figured out brandy, and poured a rather unhealthy serving for herself, much to the dismay of the others. Downing it in one go, she sat down next to me. Okay, first of all, I'd like to apologize for yelling so harshly at you. Vita continued before they could cut us off. I'm sorry, but I know that you can get carried away, and I didn't want anyone to get hurt, especially Xian. I hope you can forgive me for yelling so harshly. Xian immediately knelt before Vita to refute. You don't have to apologize my lady. I understand. You were worried about us. You only did what was. Vita leaned forward to hug Xian. She was still taller than us, even on her knees. Just accept my apology damn it. Xian flailed her arms, not knowing what to do. Eventually she hugged Vita back. I accept, my lady. Hmm, thanks. The hug lasted for a few more seconds, before everyone returned to their seats. Let's try to lift the mood a little. If any of you guys want a hug too, you only have to ask. That earned some laughs from everyone. Good, I can't deal with gloomy atmospheres. Vita started on our next point. Now for the main reason of this meeting. As you all know, the demon Lord Milam became our newest resident. What can you tell me about her? Hakiru hummed and thought. Among the ten great demon lords, the destroyer, Milam Nava is known as the demon lord you want to avoid making an enemy of at all costs. Then Amaru continued from there. According to legends, Lady Milam was the second ever to become a demon lord. That was about 2000 years ago. Sawe also gave his two cents into the discussion. If the stories are really true, then Lady Milam is among the top five strongest beings in existence. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Vitani aren't true dragons the top of existence? You know, the four true dragons, and Milam is in the top five. Sawe, could you tell me about this top five? Yes, sir. There are the three remaining true dragons, Velgrin the Scorched Dragon, Velzard, the White Ice Dragon and Voldora, the Storm Dragon. Alto, Voldora's whereabouts are currently uncount. After them are the Demon Lords, Guy Crimson, ruler of the Frozen Continent and Lady Milam, goddess of the Dragon Faithful. I feel like we just got an exposition bomb. Vitandi I caught something else in that sentence. What do you mean by remaining true dragons? The eldest of the true dragons, the creator god of every world, stellar king dragon Veldanava died, about 2000 years ago. Where do I start on that sentence? Vitandi nowhere. Bite down the headache and move on. We will deal with this tomorrow. S so Milam is really that impressive. Cajun answered next, but it might cause issues later. Now that Lady Milam announced our friendship, it means we are under her protection. Which also means, she just gained a lot more power and influence among the demon lords. I don't think they will just sit idly by. So we might have other demon lords to worry about. Great, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. For now, we continue with our daily life. Vitandi with a demon lord casually frolicking around town. Let's do our best, guys. Yes, my lady. Now that that's settled, we can try to figure out the info we got. Vitandi tomorrow. You really don't want to think about it. 
huh? Vitandi, no. I'm done for today. I don't even want to think, period. All right, come here, kitty dot there. You just purr away at my chest. I'll get us into bed. Vitandi, good night, Ramuru. Good night, Vita. Vitandi's pov. As much as I wanted to sleep, I couldn't. According to what I know, true dragons are the pinnacle of all life forms. They are well and truly immortal. Even if they die, they just come back after a while with some personality change. So how could one of them die for real? Not to mention it was the strongest of them. Creator god of every world. But more importantly Akasic, tell me everything you know about Nekamadas. Answer. Information about Nekamadas have been blocked by Stellar King Dragon, Veldanava, on the request of Ramrus, Queen of Spirits. And how is it blocked with him being dead? Answer. The world system is autonomous. It can function indefinitely without outside input. So fuck me sideways, I don't get my answers. Got it. Then how did Veldanava die? Answer. There are multiple possible answers. Oh really? Give me a few. Answer. First, if his Hirdkur has been destroyed and absorbed by someone else, he wouldn't be able to come back to life. Second, if he choose not to come back to life and purposefully took away his own chance of revival. Third, his strength has been passed down to a child, losing the ability to come back to life. So murder, suicide, family. I can cross out the first. I doubt the second. That just leaves the third. So there is a child with the power of the strongest true dragon great. Could this child interfere with the world system? Answer. It is uncount. Then my only option is to find this queen of spirits and ask her about Nekamadas. Where can I find her? Answer. The queen of spirits reside at the dwelling of spirits. And where is that? Answer. The location cannot be found. A fucking course. Dot, maybe I can ask Milam. She's been around for a long dot time. Dot, a cassock. Milam became a demon lord 2000 years ago, right? Answer. That is correct. And when did Veldanava. Dot, I am fucking blind. Milam Nava. Veldanava. Dot, a cassock? Answer. The most likely conclusion is that demon lord Milam is the daughter of stellar king dragon Veldanava. No wonder she is so strong, and she might have answers. If not, she at least might know where can I find the queen of spirits. I have to wait till morning. I don't want to try my luck with waking Simon. Nicknamed the destroyer. Ramuru then sleep. Wah, Ramuru, don't scare me like that. How much did you hear? Ramuru all of it. We are permanently connected, remember. Ramuru Vita, I know you are curious, but working yourself into this much stress isn't healthy. If you need someone to vent to, I'm always here. So don't bottle it up, it's just a pet project. Ramuru I'm gonna stop you right there. I don't care how insignificant you view your problems, I'm always here to help, so talk to me. It's just really pissing me off. No one knows anything about Nekamadas. And the more I ask the less I got. And it's just grating on my nerves. I shouldn't get so worked up about it. I never knew any of my kind, and I have a perfectly happy life here. It's not like I'm looking for my long-lost family. Rimuru, but it still bothers you. Yes, and I don't know why. Maybe getting answers will stop it. I don't know. Turning human, Ramuru hugged me close. Then let it go for now. Tomorrow we can ask Milam. For now though, rest. Technically, we don't need to sleep. Technically, I don't care. If your mind refuses to stop, I'll occupy your thoughts completely. Did I hit a jackpot with you or what? You definitely hit the jackpot. Alright, smooth slime. Occupy my thoughts. I swear, the best thing that ever happened to me was meeting Ramuru. Slowly, but surely, I managed to fall asleep. Morning came and I felt both tired and rested. I have no idea how. Rimuru made breakfast for a change. You are better than I thought. I did live alone. And I couldn't survive on Cup Raymond as much as I wanted to. Going to City Hall, I set out to find Milam. How to start this conversation? Before I found her, she found me, bursting into the room in a cheerful way. Good morning, Milam. Good morning. I see you still have a vendetta against doors. Wahahaha. Doors don't stand a chance against me. Well, they shouldn't have to. I was actually looking for you. Can we talk? Sure thing. What's up? Vitandi. Privately I wanted to ask you some questions. She looked at me curiously, but quickly grabbed my hand and pulled me into one of our meeting rooms. She even put up a sound barrier. Is something wrong? She is genuinely worried about me. She is a kind girl. Um Milam. Have you ever met a Nekamata before me? One or two. But I never found them again. Why? You see, I wasn't born in a normal way. I was born in Voldora's sealed cave. I never met any Nekamatas before. And nobody knows anything about them. Oh, you want to meet your kind? Yes, but I don't know where to look. I was hoping you could help me out, or just answer some of my questions about them. Hmm, I don't know a lot about Nekamatas. My dad told me once to be kind to them, 
but I can't really remember anything else. Wait, his dad was Veldanava. He told her to be kind to Nekamadas? Then why did he block any information about them? What do you mean blocked information? Shit, I didn't want to say that out loud. Um if I tell you, you have to promise me you won't tell anyone, ever. Only Ramuru knows this. Don't worry, I'll keep your secret. My skill can gain knowledge for me. But not everything. And apparently, information about Nekamadas was blocked by Stellar King Dragon Veldanava, on the request of someone named Ramrus, Queen of Spirits. Ramrus? That little twerp? What? You know her? Of course I do. She is one of the demon lords. What? Ramrus is one of the ten great demon lords. How? I'm getting confused even more. It's a long story. If you want I can ask her for you. Or I can just take you to her. Wait, wait, wait. You know where the dwelling of spirits is? I couldn't visit her if I didn't. Don't stare at me like I'm stupid. How should I know that the queen of spirits is a demon lord and your friend? I, I have to talk with Rimuru about this first. Yeah, you don't want to make your mate worry. I heard that can lead to fights. A, W, what D do you mean by mate? What? Wahaha well, ha ha ha. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone. I know some people like to keep it a secret. What makes you think that Ramuru and I are M mates? Were we this obvious? The soul corridor you share with him. It's stronger than a familial pact. It can only mean that you two entered a soul union. Again with that term. What's a soul union? Ha, huh, you don't know? No. Hmm. Ah, it's what humans call marriage. At this point I was sure my fur turned pink from all the blushing. W we aren't married. We are J just dating. Milam looked puzzled. Did you enter a soul union without knowing? How does one get married without knowing? Give me a straight answer. Wahahaha. <laughs> Calm down, Vitandi. It's simple. The two of you consent to be partners and that's it. It only works if you love each other though. Rimuru. Rimuru I heard dot. When did we get married? I can't even remember. Rimuru I think it was back in the bath when I turned my body male. Okay, Vitandi. Let's go to your mate. Please don't call him that in public. Wahahaha. <laughs> Wahahaha. <laughs> Bursting out of the room in a millum way, I got dragged to Ramuru's office. Another busted down door later, and we were there. Ramuru, I'm taking Vitandi to meet my friend. Aside from Ramuru, Shuna and Xian were also there. Xian spoke up first, bursting with surprise. You are going away, let me go with you, Lady Vitandi. Now wait a minute. Shuna also looked worried. It could be dangerous. Wahahaha. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll protect my bestie. Rimuru, help me out. Milam, how long the two of you would be away? I can go there and be back in a day with her. It depends on how long we stay. Rimuru, if you want to go, I'm okay with it. Getting answers. It literally crashed through the door for me dot but dot. Rimuru, no one can make this choice for you. But I'll support whatever you pick. Thanks, alright? It will only take a few days most. I want to go. Rimuru flashed a smile at me. Then enjoy your trip. Bring back a souvenir. Milam exclaimed loudly at that. We could contract some spirits. They can be useful. That's a good idea. Food for thought. Okay, I'll get things ready. We will be back in a few days. See ya. Before I knew it, Milam hugged me close to her chest, because even she was taller by a full head, and flew out the open window. The next second we were flying at an insane speed across the sky, clinging to her with all my might. I spoke, screamed, at her. I say at her, because she didn't listen. Milam, Milam, slow down. You are going too fast. Kaya, why are you going faster? Milam, wahahaha. Don't worry, we will be there in no time. I'm not worried about that. Good, just trust in me. No one is faster in the sky than me. There is no point trying to reason with her. Rimuru, I might have made a mistake. Rimuru, I'm sure it will be fine. Literally, the strongest of the strongest is protecting you. Oh, say hi to Rimuru for me. What? Rimuru what? What? I can see when your soul corridor becomes more active. It's a really common thing for lovers to talk like that. I saw it with the dragon faithful many times. You can tell I'm talking with Rimuru? Don't worry. I can't hear what you two talk about. I only see that the soul corridor is more active than usual. Rimuru that's honestly a relief. Tell her I said hi. He says hi. Wow, it's been only an hour, and I have no clue where are we. Jura was gone from sight, and the scenery changed to a more open plain. Grassy fields and hills, agriculture near villages, some bigger cities. Milam was happily humming a tune to herself. Milam, hmm, what is it? Can I can I ask about your dad? She looked lost in thought for a moment. I can't really remember him. What happened? She was lost in thought for quite a while with a serious look on her face. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. I can't remember. I know something bad happened that made me very sad. And after that, they were gone. They, my dad and mom dot and her, her, 
a friend. She looked really sad. I should stop asking. Sorry for bringing it up. It's okay. The mood was down bad. Damn it. Um. Hey Milam, do you want to hear a secret? She perked up at the sound of that. A secret, you say? You have to promise not to tell anyone though. She gave me a smile. I promise. Leaning into her ear as much as I could from her hold. I whispered. Rimuru and I aren't ordinary monsters. We are reincarnations. Whoa, really? Were you two some powerful magin before? That would explain the reincarnation. Haha, <laughs> nope. What? Then how did you retain your memories? We are otherworlders. I could see the sparks in her eyes as she figured out the rest. That means you were humans. No wonder your city is so awesome. And it explains the food. Yup, but that's a secret between the three of us, okay? Wahahaha, your secret is safe with me. Hugging her a little, I relaxed. It's weird, but I honestly like your laugh. What do you mean weird? My laugh is iconic. It shows I'm a powerful demon lord. Wahahaha, let me try then. Wahahaha. PFT, you sound cute, not scary. Ha ha ha, but you sound cute too. That's not true. Hugging her openly, I just nuzzled into her. Don't worry, Milam. I really like the way you are. You don't have to put on a scary demon lord front. She pouted a little before hugging me tighter. I like you too. And Ramuru too. He is funny. Yes, yes he is. The rest of the journey went quietly. Early afternoon we reached a forest with very thick flora. This place looks like the enchanted forest and the forbidden forest at the same time. It depends on the lighting, really. Landing near a very big tree let me rephrase that. Landing before an incredibly fucking big tree. Milam exclaimed happily. We are here. Is that is that a door in the tree? That's the entrance to the labyrinth. It's Ramrus's magic. She can create her own dimension. Sounds overpowered. That's for sure. Just hammers home that we are visiting a demon lord, who happens to be the queen of spirits. Wow. Let's go. Wait, shouldn't we she smashed the door open and started dragging me in. Knock. Once inside, Milam yelled loudly. Ramrus, Ramrus, I came to visit. I brought a friend too. Milam, how many times do I have to tell you? Stop breaking my front door. A high-pitched voice rang out in my head. Is this the queen of spirits? Come on, move us to your place. Fine, just a moment. A bright light enveloped us, and in a few seconds we were in a big open room. A small yellow light flew towards us and stopped right in front of Milam's face. What do you want? You know I'm busy. It wasn't a light. It was a small, glowing fairy. Blonde hair, a black dress, pointy boots. She looks adorable. Wahahaha, I'm here because you got in my friend's way. Wait, what? The fairy looked annoyed. What the hell are you talking about? I didn't leave my labyrinth since the last Walpurgis. I'll forgive you, so don't worry you little twirl. Who you callin' little twerp? Wahahaha, just answer my friend's questions. She is Vitandi, one of my new besties. She pushed me in front of her. Waving shyly, I tries to be polite. This fairy is still a demon lord, no matter how harmless she looks. Hi, and who are you you are dot she started out annoyed, but wavered in the middle. She just stared at me with white eyes. Crap, did I do something wrong? Oi, Ramrus what's gotten into Milam? Also cut herself off. Because Ramrus started crying, she hovered closer to my face, gently touching my cheeks, like she was afraid I'd disappear. A wobbly, teary smile spread across her face. A Nekamata I don't think I ever heard a person with so much emotion in their voice. She hugged my face, silently crying. I tried to look at Milam for advice, but she was just as lost, wearing a panicked face. After a few minutes of crying, Ramrus continued, still sniffling. I'm so happy to see you. Ever since I lost you all, I couldn't stop worrying about you. I didn't even know if you guys were still alive or not. Um I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. He, good, it means the world finally forgot what happened. She still didn't let go of my face. Could you tell me? It's a really sad story. You should focus on the bright future, not on the gloomy past. Gingerly putting the fairy into my palm, I looked into her eyes. Lady Ramrus, just Ramrus, please. Ramrus the reason why I have my questions is because I'm not an ordinary Nekamata. I was born from the Storm Dragon's magicules. I don't know anything about my kind. I never even met one. I, I want to learn as much as I can. She looked at me with a sad smile. You were born from the Storm Dragon dot. You might be the last one then. The last please tell me. If I'm really the only Nekamata in the world, I have to I need to know. Ramrus looked sad, but she gave a nod. Very well. It is your legacy after all. And so, she told me the tragic story of what happened to the superior spirits. Known to the world as Nekamatas. 
Thousands of years ago, when humanity was far more put together and organized, humanity was much more attuned to nature, to the world, to magic. There wasn't such a big divide between them and monsters or other non-human beings. There existed a kingdom, known for their close connection to the spirits living in the mountains. Those spirits were Nekamadas. The humans of this nation, leading prodigies of healing magic, were living with the Nekamadas side by side. Seeing the spirits contracted to humans was an everyday sight. The reason behind this was the intrinsic skill, the Nekamadas gained after they've grown strong enough. A skill perfectly suited for curing any kind of ailments, strengthening the body, even making the crops yield more or the flora to remain strong. The skill called, Organic Magicule Manipulation. With this skill, the Nekamadas could manipulate any living thing to their heart's content, by turning living tissue into magicules and reforming it. The kingdom prospered and was sought after by its many neighbors. Humans, magens, monsters, everyone seeking aid, came to the master healers, but not all was satisfied with this. Another human kingdom coveted the power, held by the healers, and a war broke out. The attacking kingdom was a mixture of humans and magens, thus their strength was far greater than the spirit contractor's own. So a decision was made, because even if they didn't pose as powerful attacks like their foe, they had something else. They could freely destroy their enemy's body from the inside. The humans were ready for war, but the Nekamadas weren't. They were peaceful beings, their power was meant to aid life in its prosperity, not to snuff it out. But being in a contract with a human isn't something that can be ignored so easily. The humans forced the spirits to help them in their battle. Their enemies fell, one after the other. Not even the strongest magin could resist their body's complete annihilation. The healers beat back the enemy, but they didn't stop there. Why would they have to retreat after being the victims of their enemy's destruction? And so they pushed forward. More and more into the heart of the capital, where the enemy king hid away. In the end, nothing remained of that kingdom. The healers celebrated their victory, drunk on their borrowed might. They didn't see the fury of the Nekamadas, the spirits known for always, always, helping others. Their creed of life was simple. Give what you wish to receive, receive what you give. The humans broke their trust. They used them. They forced them to murder. To take away life and the Nekamadas responded in kind. Give what you wish to receive. The Nekamadas always helped everybody. Receive what you give and so the healers were slaughtered. Every last one of them. Just like their fallen enemy, not even the children were spared. Blood flowed like rivers, the kingdom was painted red. And the Nekamadas broke the ironclad rule of a contracted spirit on a species-wide scale. They betrayed those they swore to work for, and because of that, they were forced out of the spiritual plane, becoming lesser, material mortal beings. Ramrus was crying rivers on her small face. I tried to take them back, but the rules were absolute. I begged Veldanava to change them, but he couldn't. The system only aids the world, the rules from before cannot be changed by it. So at least to make sure the Nekamadas found some form of peace. I asked him to hide any trace of what happened. The Nekamadas were in the right, they shouldn't have to bear this cross. Hearing this story I imagined a lot of things, but this raw ramorous am I crying? Fuck thank you, for telling me, and for everything. Hearing some sniffles, I saw that Eason Millam was fighting her own tears. Is there a way to find out what happened to my kind? Or just finding out if they are still around? Wiping at her face, the fairy shook her head. I'm afraid not. I don't know of any way to do that. Maybe there is some kind of magic to locate them, if there are any left, but I never heard of a spell like that before. I see a cassock. Do you know of any spell like that? Answer. No spell could be found that can achieve what you wish to accomplish. Who would have guessed? Ramrus I have a skill that can give me knowledge. But Veldanava blocked every information about Nekamadas on your request. Can you undo it? Only Velda could interfere with the system. Not even Milam can and she is his daughter. Milam came around and hugged me from the back. I'm sorry Vitandi. It's okay I learned a lot anyways. And it's not like I'm all alone. I have everybody back at home. I have you. I have Ramuru. Yeah, you have all your friends, your bestie, and I'm sure your mate will pamper you all you want, once we get back. Milam, don't call him that in public. A gasp drew my attention to Ramrus, who was staring at me with white eyes. A mate? My beautiful baby has a mate? What do you mean? A menacing aura surrounded Ramrus, which was funny, considering how weak she was. I swear I just wanna talk with him. Wait a minute, hold up, why are you going protective mother mode? I finally reunited with one of my long lost children. Of course I don't want you to end up with some guy, who might not be worthy of you. Great, I gained myself a mom. Ramorous, he is everything I could ever ask for. HMPF, I will see that for myself. Milam, I'm coming with you. Milam just grinned at her. Nope. 
What? Come on, Milam. I need to see this guy for myself. I can't let my baby be taken. I'm not a baby. SHSHSH. Just leave everything to Ramrus. Stop petting my head like I'm a child. Wahahaha. <laughs> As a demon lord, I approve of Ramuru. He is strong and cares about Vitandi a lot. Somebody kill me. If he is really that great, I don't see why I couldn't meet him. Even if you meet him now, it's too late. What do you mean too late? Milam, answer me now. Please don't. Wahahaha. <laughs> Wahahaha. <laughs> Ramuru and Vitandi already entered a soul union. Oi, you weren't supposed to tell anyone. Ramrus was frozen in midair. S soul soul union my baby already had her first no. Where is this guy? I'll make him pay for tainting the purity of my child. Milam smirked widely. Wahahaha. <laughs> you can't stop children from finding their own mates. You should grow up and learn that, you little twerp. Would you two shut up we didn't even have sex with Ramuru, and it's my choice to make of who I want to fuck. Breathing rapidly, I couldn't stop my outburst. Milam was grinning, and Ramrus was shocked. My baby's mind has been sullied. That's it. I'm leaving on my own. I stood up, looking for an exit. Ramrus rushed to grab onto one of my tails. Wait, please. You just arrived. I'm running a nation with Ramuru, so I'm busy. Whoa, you are running a nation. Tell me. Will you promise to stop this supermom stuff? NGH, I I promise to hold back my judgment. Staring into her eyes, I could see she won't relent on that. Fine, he and I are running a nation of monsters in the Jura Forest. The Jura Forest? What about Voldora? Relax, Voldora's gone missing. Vitani and Ramuru took up as protectors of the forest. Even the Dryads served them. Dryads? You mean Trainee and the other? Huh, you know them? Of course, they were little spirits back then, but got separated from me when my previous incarnation died. So they became dryads. Huh, good for them. You can come. Yes, if you don't pester Ramuru about our relationship, and you tell me what you know about Nekamatas in general. Because that skill you mentioned, I never even heard of it. I could see the struggle she put up with herself. I'll tell you everything I know. And, and I I won't she looks like someone biting into a lemon. Judge your partner if, I can make an entrance to my labyrinth in your nation. Deal. Yay. Milam picked me up the same way she carried me here. She also stuffed Ramrus into her pocket. Then let's get going. A bright light put us outside of the doors leading into the labyrinth, and Milam took off at breakneck speed. I'm sorry Ramuru. It seems I'll be bringing home a headache as a souvenir. Ramuru's pov. Seeing Vitandi picked up like that was funny as hell, and the speed of Milam was truly ridiculous. Before I could blink, they were out of range for my magic sense. Looking back from the window, I saw Shuna and Xion staring at me, with worry clearly written on their faces. Relax girls, everything will be okay. I just heard that Milam can see when I talk with Vita. She got some scary skills. Lord Ramuru. Shuna approached my desk. Do you know who they are visiting? Yes. Dot actually call the others. It will save us time if I tell everybody at once. Leave it to me. And Xion was already gone. I guess it makes sense. These two were named by Vitandi, so of course they are worried. The head staff arrived in a few minutes. Deciding to cut to the chase, I started as soon as they sat down. Okay, the news in short are as follows. Vitandi and Milam went to meet the Queen of Spirits, who also happens to be one of the ten great demon lords. I could see the protests forming, but I raised my hand before anyone could interrupt. The reason is quite simple and slightly personal for Vitandi. As you are our closest aides I'll tell you, but I expect everyone present to keep it a secret. Only Vitandi can tell you otherwise. Is that clear? I got a round of affirmation, so I filled them in. I know that Vitandi already asked you this, but allow me to do so again. Have any of you ever met a Nekamata before Vitandi? They shook their heads in response, and Shuna added some tidbit from her knowledge as well. Nekamatas are something of a myth. Until I met Lady Vitandi, I thought they were just a fairy tale. That checks out. Nekamatas used to be superior spirits, before becoming mortal beings. The problem is Vitandi and I were born in Voldora's cave. I heard some shock gasps at that. Huh. We never really told anyone that. So Vitandi never met a Nekamata either. And since no one has seen them for ages, there is only one person left who can answer Vitandi's questions. Then Amaru concluded the answer for everyone. The queen of spirits but to think she would be a demon lord. The world is a strange place wait. Is she perhaps the labyrinth, Ramrus? Oh wow, that's a title. Yes, Milam is good friends with her apparently. She said she visits this Ramrus regularly. So she offered to take Vitandi with her and promised us she would be safe. So don't worry. Giving them an encouraging smile, I finished. Your leaders aren't pushovers either. It seemed to do the trick, but Xian still looked a bit miffed. When will she come home? 
Don't look so sad, Xi'an. Vitandi will be back in a few days at most. Our day went on as usual after our impromptu meeting. Finishing up paperwork. I went to the hill that, honestly, saw it all. I had my first talk with Shizu here. I had my first meeting with Milam here. I had my first with Vitandi here. I have a feeling it will see even more action in the future. Maybe I should give this place a name. It has a perfect view of the growing city and everything. What to name it well? It housed many of the important memories I had from this place. Now that I think about it, I had my first talk as ruler and subordinate with Benimaru here. He, we were watching Gobta and the others get the daylights beaten out of them by Hakiru. Good times. I think I got it. This place shall be known as the Hill of Memories. Hmm. I like it. Lord Ramuru. Wah, wow. Sawe, don't sneak up on me like that. I apologize. You seem to be deep in thought. So, I came to ask if I can be of assistance. He, don't worry. I'm just getting sentimental here. Sawe tilted his head in confusion. Sentimental? I gave him a quick rundown of what I was reminiscing about, excluding our date with Vita. Ah, I see. It certainly is a place that holds memories of important meetings. I like to come up here. I can be alone and just sort out my thoughts. But at the, the same time, I can see everything I hold dear. I know that, if I need anything I have you guys. Waiting for me back in the city. Pft. Listen to me, getting all mushy. I do not mind sir. He told me firmly. It just shows how much you value us. Thank you. I swear these guys will start worshipping me one day. I know Xi'an already does Vitandi to a certain extent. Vitandi I got so used to having Vitandi close to me, that now I can't keep my thoughts to myself. Are we getting too dependent on each other? I couldn't see, but Sawe had a quick look of realization on his face. He quickly covered it up and left. If you need anything just call me, my lord. Now what? I don't really have anything to do. What do you think Vita? We are definitely getting too dependent on each other. Cutting myself off, I decide to have a walk around town. The city is bustling with life. I can see the shops with different wares, thanks to the kobolds. The orcs are doing an excellent job at building up the city. I wonder how are the dragonuts are doing with Vesta. Well, no better time than the present. Heading to Voldora's cave I found myself quite surprised. There were raws and raws of hippocute herbs growing. The dragonuts were happily tending to them, talking about mundane stuff. Oh, Lord Ramuru, it's a pleasure to see you. How can I, Kabiru, be of service to you today? He looks cheerful, that's for sure. I had nothing to do, so I came here to see how you guys are doing. We are doing splendidly, my lord. As you can see, we succeeded in cultivating a high amount of valuable hippocute herbs. There were some blunders in the beginning, but nothing can stop us from achieving the wish of our beloved lady. Looks like Xi'an has competition for being the number one Vitandi simp. Glad to hear it. And how is Vesta? Sir Vesta is deep in research. He is very enthusiastic. Alto, he really should take more breaks. Being cooped up in his lab for days isn't healthy. Why are every subordinate of us, such workaholics? I'll go tell him to take a break, then allow me to guide you there. Vesta and Cajun set up their lab in one of the far corners of the cave system. Now that I think about it, I saw less of Cajun in the workshop. It was only Korob recently. What are they up to? Reaching the door to the lab, a small quake could be felt from inside. Shortly after, the door bursted open. Cajun and Vesta was covered in soot, and there was some smoke billowing out of the lab. Heaving a sigh, I made myself known to the two. Please don't cause the cave to collapse. Cajun greeted me happily. Sir Ramuru, what brings you here? Just killing time and checking out how are you guys. What brings you here, Cajun? Vesta was quicker to answer. Cajun was helping me with some old passion projects of mine. Oh, what projects? The Magisoldier we tried to make all those years ago. You mean the one that exploded an entire building complex? Are you sure it's safe to do this in such a cramped space? Cajun laughed at my question. Of course not, but that's the way of science. Well, try not to get injured. Vesta perked up suddenly. Speaking of, Sir Ramuru, I have something to show you. Come in. He looks like a child, showing off his drawing. Cajun isn't any better. Aren't these two supposed to be former military and political leaders, with two working brains? Then again, you had to be a bit childish and crazy to have the creativity for scientific breakthroughs. Following after them, Vesta presented me with two bottles of healing potions. This one is from the batch you made, and this one is from my newest experiment. Please analyze it. Doing as asked, I found out that he succeeded. A genuine full potion. Well done, Vesta. He looked ready to shed some happy tears. Cajun patted him on the back with a hearty laugh. I knew you can do it. Good job. Thank you Cajun. MHM, keep up the good work. But, Vesta, take regular breaks. I heard you tend to stay in here for days on end. Take proper care of yourself. That's an order. 
He looked a little embarrassed from getting called out like that. He, I'll try my best. Leaving the cave, I wandered aimlessly around the streets. I don't know what to do was I always so lost on my own? I can't even remember what it was like. Before me and Vita met well, I suppose it was like this. Only, I didn't miss her so much what the hell am I talking about? She left this morning, not even 10 hours ago. Why do I feel like part of me is missing? Great sage, notice, cannot be calculated. So I'm just way too emotional. Great, it seems word got around about Vita's departure. People were looking at me weirdly. As the afternoon gave way to evening, Shuna appeared out of nowhere. Lord Ramuru, is something troubling you? Oh, hey Shuna, not really. I finished all my work, so I'm just walking around. She looked skeptical. Are you sure? People told me that you looked dot lost. Was it that obvious? That also explains the looks. I'm fine. Just bored I think I'll head home. Lord Ramuru. Good night Shuna. Great Sage, are you sure? You don't know what's going on? I wasn't this emotionally active before. Notice, there is a possibility that your soul union is affecting your mood, with your partner too far away. How hard is it affecting me? Notice, about as strong as a married couple going their separate way for a day. Did you just sass me? Notice, the unique skill, Great Sage does not possess the ability to perform these kinds of acts. You are definitely sassing me. Notice, nah, it's fine. I get it. I was on cloud nine for months with Vitandi around. Now that she went away, possibly for a few days even, I feel lost. It's not like I had any experience with these kinds of relationships. No surprise I'd miss her the moment she left Amit. Rimuru, get yourself together. You are a man. Don't get all mopey just because your girlfriend is away for a few days. Getting home, I just threw myself in bed, still in human form. I thought about making dinner, but I didn't really feel hungry. I could feel my mind running circles around Vitandi. Jaya, I'll just sleep through this nonsense. Activating sleep mode, I felt my mind drifting off, but it didn't feel the same as usual. I jolted awake about an hour before dawn. Vitandi hey Ramuru, you awake? Vitandi, yes, I am. How are you? Vitandi haha I feel the same as you, probably. You mean lonely as hell? Vitandi Kinda, to think we would grow so close to the other. It's good to know that I'm not the only one emotionally lost from this. Vitandi well then, I have good news for you along with a minor headache. I'm all ears. Vitandi I met with Ramrus and I got some answers. She will tell me the rest I wanna know later. In glad you succeeded. Vitandi now, about the headache part. You say headache, not trouble or problem. It can't be too bad. Vitandi it depends. Should I be prepared for trouble? Vitandi headache dot well, migraine describes it better. You're awfully avoiding the subject did this Ramrus caused you trouble? Vitandi you are about to meet your mother-in-law today. Vitandi, I'm sorry, what? Vitandi you know how Nekamatas were superior spirits and blah blah blah? Yes. Vitandi the moment Ramrus realized I'm a Nekamata, she was so happy to meet me, she hugged me crying. Wow, I wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. Vitandi me neither, not even Milam. I'll tell the stories of Nekamatas later. The source of the headache comes, after Ramrus told me the history of my kind. Why? What happened? Vitandi Milam blurted out that I have a mate. Hua, so much for keeping it secret. Vitandi and Ramrus went supermom mode. You are kidding me, right? Vitandi nope. She had this menacing aura and everything. Don't worry though, she is really weak. How can one of the demon lords be weak? Not to mention, she is the queen of spirits. Vitandi she is immortal. If she dies, she just gets reborn with her memories intact. But every time, she has to grow up to get strong again. So what? She is still a newborn spirit or something? Vitandi she is a fairy that can fit in my hand. That sounds cute. Vitandi and she is dead set on, and I want to quote, making you pay for tainting the purity of her child. Does she know that you were tainted before being born into this world? Vitandi ha ha ha, no, she doesn't. So there is a weak fairy out there to get me. Vitandi no, there is a weak fairy in Milam's pocket right now, blabbering about how she will make sure, you won't get away from taking my inoxins. She is coming here. Vitandi like I said, you will be meeting your mother-in-law today. What should I do? Vitandi tell the others about her and how she went supermom on me. That ought to keep trouble to a minimum. When will you get here? Vitandi in about two hours. I'll tell Shuna to make breakfast for your mom too. Vitandi she isn't my mom. Ha ha ha, don't be so embarrassed. I'm sure Ramrus would be over the moon if you called her mom. 
Vitandi I might save that as a trump card. Anything else I should be worried about? Vitandi dot. Vita, I can feel your embarrassment. Vitandi I had to make Ramra stop from getting into a mom frenzy. And, Vitandi she has her own dimension that connects to the dwelling of spirits. And, Vitandi, come on, Vita, it can't be that bad. Vitandi I promised her she can put an entrance to it in Tempest. So my in-law decided to move in with us. Vitandi more like, decided to move her house next to ours. Vita, Vitandi I know. No, I just realized we will have two demon lords living with us. As in, in our nation. And both of them are important demon lords. Vitandi shit, you're right. One is the strongest of them all. The other is the literal queen of spirits. Vitandi dot I'll make it up to you. Don't worry about it. We can deal with anything together. Vitandi yeah all right. I'll try to convince Ramrus to don't try to murder you with her mind. If she really went super mom on you, I doubt that will work. But good luck. I'll tell the others. Vitandi okay. Love you. He I love you too. Yup. We might have grown too dependent on each other. But I don't really care. Just talking to her made me forget how down I felt yesterday. Hopping out of bed. I went to City Hall, preparing to meet Dot, my mother-in-law. Who would have guessed I'd have to deal with in-laws in this world? I should probably get some present for her Dot now that I think about it. I'm yet to give Vita any couple gifts. Maybe yeah, that will work. Great Sage. Notice, it is possible to create the desired item. Proceed? Yes. Alright. Now what should I get Ramrus to placate her? Vitandi. Do you know what Ramrus likes? Vitandi she seems scatterbrained, but she is surprisingly smart. She made a magisteel golem, with something called spirit engineering. Maybe I can set her up with Vesta and Cajun. They are experimenting with the Magisteel Soldier Project. Vitani didn't that blow up last time, taking the entire lab with it? I already told them to be careful. Vitani Ramrus might like it. Alright, let's prepare for this. Setting up the Japanese meeting room was an easy task. Around dawn, Shuna walked in with surprise. Lord Ramuru, what are you doing? Ah, Shuna. Good morning. Vitani and Milam are bringing home a guest. They'll be here in about an hour. What? I'll get breakfast ready as quickly as possible. Who are they bringing? No need to panic. And our guest is Ramrus. I could see the gears clicking into place on her face. Demon Lord Ramrus is coming here? SSSHHH. Shuna, don't yell. I'll inform Xi'an to tell everyone. And she's gone. Well, it saved me a trip. Putting the tables in order, bringing out pillows. This place looks really high class. I'm proud of it. Around the time I finished, I sensed a familiar presence. Hey trainee, what brings you? Is it true that the Queen of Spirits is coming here? She looks way too excited. Do you know her? No. We dryads used to be by the previous queen's side when we were lesser spirits. But we got separated from her when she died. She looks sad about it. Then I have some good news for you. This queen is the same one you knew. Apparently, she retains her memories from her previous lives. Really? Wow. I didn't expect trainee to act like this. We have a full-on simp squad in Tempest. Yes, you can also attend if you want to. Fair warning, the Queen of Spirits turned into overprotective mom mode after meeting Vitandi. Haha, <laughs> it's no surprise. I remember when our queen sometimes spoke about Nekamatas and how she missed them. Well then, everything is ready. Now we wait. The others got here relatively quickly. They didn't even look tired or anything. Then Amaru walked up to me with a serious look on his face. Is it true that Demon Lord Ramrus is coming here? Relax. You don't have to worry about anything. I spoke with Vitandi so I have some reassuring news. And a weird one. A weird one? To put it shortly, Ramrus is an immortal being, and is currently at the beginning of her reincarnation cycle. This means she is weak, so we don't have to worry about a sudden attack. And for the weird one Ramrus immediately became an overprotective mom, once she saw Vitandi. So don't be surprised by her actions and just leave it to Vitandi. I could see a lot of slack jaws at the news. Rigard found his voice and reason first. It makes sense the Queen of Spirits must have missed the Nekamatas. And now she got reunited with one of her long-lost children. I'd probably feel the same way. That made everyone not in agreement. Everyone gathered in the garden to welcome the returning people. Feeling Milam's aura wasn't too difficult. It also meant that a second later, a smaller crater was in the ground. Lucky key it wasn't too big. So fixing it will be easy. Good thing I was in human form though. The wind could have blown me away otherwise. Wahahaha, we are back. I told you I can make the trip fast. Milam's iconic laughter echoed across the garden. In her arms, a slightly shaken Vita was struggling to get free from the destroyer's hug. I'm telling you right now, I won't ever let you fly me anywhere. Your speed is terrifying. 
Milam just laughed at her. Don't worry, you'll catch up to this speed in no time. Then I can really go fast without worrying about you. Vitandi that wasn't her maximum speed. My condolences. Vitandi if I go down, you're coming with me. Wait, Vita. I'll consider it if you take Ramuru for a ride too in the future. Vita, how could you? She just stuck her tongue out. The little fun was ended by a small yellow light coming out of Milam's pocket. It flew around a little before beelining it for my face. It stopped abruptly and I could see the small fairy I was warned about. Giving her my best smile, I decided to introduce myself. Hello, my name is Ramuru Tempest. I assume you are Demon Lord Ramorous Queen of Spirits. She scowled at me which looked hilarious on such a cute little thing. Looking me up and down, she answered. So you are the man who entered a soul union with my baby and took her innocence. You could hear a pin drop in the silence that followed as everyone registered what the fairy said. The looks of realization on their faces said, they know exactly what Ramorous was talking about. Vitandi rushed forward and caught the tiny demon lord. Ramorous, you promised you won't start anything with Ramuru. And I didn't. But I have the right to dislike anyone you choose as your mate. Vitandi gritted her teeth. Please don't make this awkward. We haven't even done it. Ramrus's scowl turned to a smile. I promised you I wouldn't judge him beforehand. So I'll see for myself what kind of man he is. If he is truly worthy of you, I'll give him my blessing. Well, I'm happy to hear that. But I don't really know where to go from this. Luckily, Milam had the perfect persona to defuse the situation. Wahahaha, come on, Ramrus. Let the children reunite. Can't you see how much they missed each other? If Ramuru looked just as lost as Bitandi, I'm sure they want to have some cuddling time. I could feel my face turning into a similar shade of pink as Milam's hair. Vitani wasn't faring any better. To the side, the others had a look of understanding. They were worried about their lord, because he was acting strange yesterday. Now they knew why. Shuna stepped up to guide everyone back on track. We prepared breakfast for everyone. Please come inside. Vitandi, that's what she said. Really? Vitandi, no. But that's what I want to say. If my face was Milam colored, now it was Benimaru. Vitandi just grabbed my hand and we went to take a seat, trying to get things rolling. I choose to throw the dryad waiting inside, under the bus. Oh, yeah, Trainee wanted to meet with you, Ramorous. What Trainee? She flew over to her and hugged her face. It's so good to see you. How have you been? Lady Ramorous, I'm so happy to see you. I've been living a splendid life with my sisters. She snuggled closer to the dryad. I'm happy to hear that. I was worried what might have happened to you, but I was too weak to leave the labyrinth. Trainee returned the affection. We were scared at first, but Lord Voldora took us in. Huh, Voldora did what? Indeed. We didn't know how should we approach him, but he was really kind to us. He allowed us to grow stronger on his magicules and appointed us as caretakers of the forest. Ramrus was shocked at the sound of that. Isn't he supposed to be the incarnation of destruction or something? Why was he this kind? Did he do something to you? Trainee quickly placated the raging fairy. Nothing of the sort. Lady Ramrus. He was really kind to us. I admit, I don't know why he did it, but he was nothing but a great ruler who protected us. His aura gave us plenty of magicule-filled rain to help the forest grow. Milam butted into the conversation. Are we talking about the same Voldora? This honestly makes me wonder what happened. Vitandi no shit. We saw Voldora's soft side. The Dryads saw it too. The rest of the world saw a sapient natural disaster. Something went wrong there, that's for sure. Shuna and some of the goblin cooks brought in our breakfast. Eating in silence for a while, I felt myself relax. Having Vita back with me was like having a hole in my soul filled. Vitani, when did you get so sappy? SH shut up, it's not like you're any better. Vitani, haha. Ha. Well, if you really feel this poetic, how about you fill the hole in me? It's a good thing my body is still made of slime, otherwise I would be worried about my health. The amount of blushing I'm doing would be a sure sign of high blood pressure. And it became even worse. Wahahaha, Vitandi, Ramuru, stop flirting during breakfast. Even if you do it through a soul quarter, your faces are bright red. GRH, when did she become so perceptive? Vitandi, she was always like this, probably. She just hides it very well. Ramrus also piped up, struggling against the pampering given by Trainee. At least not in front of me. I'm trying my best here to be accepting of my baby growing up. Vita looks really embarrassed by that. Having to go through this phase with your mom again I'm kinda lucky here. Having no parents in this world. D don't call me baby. Despite my looks, I'm an adult. Ramrus looked unconvinced. I'll consider you a big girl, once you evolve into a Bakaneko. Until then, you are my baby. Bakaneko? Looking at Vitandi, 
I ask her, what's a bacaneco? She shrugs, clearly as lost as me. No idea. Looking at the others, none of them seem to have an answer. Ramrus explains to us, back when your kind were spirits, and Nekamata became a bacaneco after 5,000 years. Now though, you can evolve into one if you are strong enough. Vitandi looked very interested. How strong are we talking about? The fairy contemplates the answer for a while. I'd say around mid-disaster class. What the hell does that mean? Aside from Vitandi, the others all wore shocked faces. Are we the only two in the dark? Vitandi looks like it. Then Amaru spoke up, with clear awe in his voice. We measure demon lords on that level. To think our lady would become even stronger, once she reaches that sort of power. Vita just glared at Ramrus. And how am I supposed to become as strong as a demon lord? Holding up two thumbs and sporting a smile, that only an oblivious mother could give. I believe in you. Vitandi she just confirmed that I'll be treated like a baby by her forever. You just have to prove yourself otherwise. Vitandi and how do I do that? I believe in you. Vitandi. I'm gonna get that back, won't I? She just stared into my eyes with a look that said everything I missed you. Vitandi don't think you can get away, just because I feel how genuine you are. Then why don't we dump your mom and Milamon Shuna and the others? We can have our little private time. Vitandi if you are attempting to distract me with a good time you are succeeding. Oh really? She leaned closer to me a little, mirroring the motion we could almost kiss. But we still had some obstacles for that present. Oi, oi, oi. Not in front of me. Vitandi just sighed at the fairy. Meanwhile I noticed our people having different reactions. Trainee was focused on Ramaris. Shuna and Xion were openly staring at us with unmasked delight. The guys on the other hand were looking away a bit embarrassed for intruding on our intimate moment. Milam was grinning like a mischievous kid, looking between us and Ramaris. I guess when you are 2000 years old, you make do with any entertainment. So, what should we do? Vitandi I am going to get my fill of you, and I don't care who tries to stop me. Shuna, Xian, can you watch over Milam and Ramrus for today? Ramrus might be interested in Vesta's research, so introduce the two. Yes, my lady. Shuna responds with a knowing smile. Xian on the other hand should we prepare to welcome an heir? Everybody stopped moving. The tea trainee was pouring stopped moving. You could feel the anticipation for an answer. My mind and face went completely red with embarrassment. Looking at Vitandi, I could see the glare forming as she looked at Xian. Addressing Shuna she spoke with a very alarmingly calm voice. Shuna, please make sure that Xian is well educated on jumping to conclusions, based on her assumptions. Xian looked a little confused, but Shuna grabbed her and quickly retreated out of the room. The others were still motionless. Anyone would like to ask something? A chorus of terrified no. Later they returned to their remaining food. Milam was rolling on the floor, trying not to laugh out loud. Ramrus compassed herself a little and flew right in front of my face. She had a completely serious look. In an even voice she only told me one thing. No kids yet. I could see she was dead serious, so I just nodded in agreement. It's scary how such a small creature can give you the fear of God. By having the mom look on her face. Vitandi having enough stood pulling me up along with her. I'll entrust things to you guys. Without waiting for an answer, she pulled me out of the room and basically speed walked all the way to our house. Locking the door behind her, I got dragged into the bedroom and into bed. We stayed like that for a while, cuddling in our human forms. I could feel the tension slowly leaving her body. I think I know how to cheer her up. Since we were facing each it was easy to kiss her. She immediately let go of the remaining stress and greedily pushed her tongue into my mouth. Not one to deny her request, I decide to skip the slow build up. Getting on top of her, I rampage across her mouth with my tongue. I can feel her getting restless from passion. Great sage, a cassock, make sure we don't accidentally make a baby. Notice answer, understood. Vitani does this mean. Instead of answering I let my hand wander down her body until it rests just above her nether region. Looking into her eyes, I can see the anticipation. The hunger. Slipping into her underwear, I can feel how wet she already is. The heat pulsing out of her in waves. As I lay my hand on her pussy, she gasps and moans into my mouth. Heh, impatient little kitty. Vitandi P please. I can't dot. You don't need to say another word. I start rubbing her clit, making her arch her back. She is moving her hips in rhythm with my hand. How about this, smitten kitten? Slowly pushing in a finger, she moans loudly, her inner walls tightly enveloping my finger. Every centimeter I move in, she moans louder, trying push onto it more. I don't let her though. 
I just push it slower, making her squirm and struggle. But it seems the pleasure took precedence, and this kind of play turns her on quite a lot. As my finger goes in fully, she starts moving her hips. Well, if you are gonna work on that yourself, I have to find a new thing to play with. Moving my left hand over her chest I get rid of her shirt and quickly pinch one of her nipples. She jumps from the sudden jolt of pleasure, but speeds up her hip movement, playing and twisting with one. I get the other nipple into my mouth, giving it a soft bite. Vita moans loudly. Rai Rimu Rimuru, it's s so good. NHN, M move your F finger, place please. How could I say no to that? Let's see if my anatomy knowledge is correct, the special spot for girls should be here. Kaya, T there, rubbing against that spot. I can feel the tension building up inside her. Why, yes, M more, har harder. Ah, Rimuru. Ha ha ha. Music to my ears. If you want more and harder, as a gentleman, it is my duty to oblige. Pushing in another finger, I double my efforts, which makes Vitandi lose her rhythm, humping as hard as she can. Yes, yes, I'm I'm getting close. Rimuru, Rimuru, Rimuru. With one strong push, she comes hard on my hand holding on to my head against her chest. After a few long seconds she relaxes into the bed panting heavily with a flushed face. Th that was awesome. I just gave her a smirk, moving down to her beautifully soaked pants. After getting rid of them, the Jorga side of her small pussy greets me. Giving her one last grin I dive in, tounge deep into her still sensitive entrance. Kaya, W wait, it's S still too nope. You are getting the queen treatment. I'll make sure you are satisfied. Hmm, my tounge is too short to reach her good spot. It's a good thing I can manipulate my body, however I want. Making my tounge longer I reach all the way in. Vitandi gasps in pleasure. Th, that's aw. If you are this rough I'm gonna. Go ahead, kitty kitty. Let me taste that sweet nectar. Putting her legs around my neck, I make sure to give her clit all the attention it deserves as well. Within seconds she squirms from the pleasure, unable to hold back yummy. You actually taste sweet. Looking into my eyes she tries to glare, but it's more of a failed pout. SH top with that schmug look. Your speech is a little slurred. Perhaps you are too tired. Giving him another smirk, I get rid of my pants finally. In all its erect glory, I place it on top of her crotch. Just feeling her body on it sends shiver down my spine. Her eyes widen as she realizes what's coming next. Allow me to help you, my sweet little kitten. She just stares at my penis, mesmerized. Slowly lining it up with her entrance, I lock eyes with her. If you don't want this just say it. After a little hesitation, she nods. Slowly putting in the tip. I feel her walls stretching as I make my way in. It's so tight. What is this? This feels too good. Vita squirms and moans under me, holding onto my back and biting into my shoulder. It feels good I think I want to keep that bite mark. Vitani WH what? I can feel your pussy clenching harder after I said that. Do you like the idea of marking me? An adorable moan is my answer as I'm halfway in. Well then how about we make the rest in a final push? Vitani W wait. With one thrust, I am fully inside here. She goes rigid under me, moaning as loud as she can, while biting down hard. After a while she wraps her legs around me. Our link makes it obvious for me. She is waiting for more. Don't worry. I'll give you everything I have. With a sudden move I pull out almost entirely and with the same abruptness, push it back in. The results are another loud moan. Her pussy walls desperately clenching around my cock harder. Did you like that? Vitandi Naya. He. I'll take that as a yes. I'm gonna make you meow an orgasm. Giving powerful thrusts like that she just clings to me tighter, unable to resits the haze of pleasure. I feel the same. My pace is picking up more and more. At some point I notice I'm basically pile driving her in a mating press. She came again, her pussy dripping with her juices, soaking the bed. Not slowing down, I ram into her harder and harder. The only thing keeping her from screaming out loud is her teeth clenched hard into my shoulder but she is still mewling non-stop. I can feel it build up in me. Going even harder I press down and come inside her. Her pussy clamping down, trying to squeeze every last drop are from me. After about a minute or so we collapse in a heap. Looking at Vita, I can see she is barely there from getting fucked this hard. Panting heavily she looks towards me. Her face is flushed red, her pupils are wide. Her mouth is hanging open with her townge sticking out a little, dripping drool. Leaning in, I lick up the drool, then her townge then entering her mouth. Sloppily kissing, she curls around, wrapping one leg around me. Stroking her back and her ears, she just enjoys the pampering I give her. So how was it, smitten kitten? Naya, is that so? Reaching down I brush my hand against her leaking pussy. Naya, that's more like it. 
She pants, trying to form words. Nai nai oh, it's too sensitive. Gently caressing the lips down there, she squirms and mules, but doesn't pull away. Then how about I make it even more sensitive? Without warning, I push two fingers in and start rubbing as hard as I can against her G-spot. Naya W, wait. Nayu, it Naya. Nai nai oh, rai rimanaya. Whoa, you squirted bringing my hands up. I lick it clean. You taste good. You are mania. Rubbing my penis against her clit, she lets out another cute sound. Hmm, sorry I didn't hear you. She tries to pout, but every time she attempts it, I rub against her. Slowly pushing my way in for another round, she mules and moans. Naya, stopping halfway I stop to look at her. Do you want to stop? She squirms and moans, and eventually pushes herself forward, sheathing my cock fully. After some more squirming she looks anywhere, but me. Doggy. Hmm. She blushes even harder on her already red face. Do me doggy. Your wish is my command, my lady. Flipping her on her stomach with me still inside her, I ask. Regular doggy or this reverse missionary from behind? She needs a few minutes to gather herself but eventually like this fuck me into the bed. Immediately pumping hard, I move as fast as I can. The resulting sounds from her soft little butt being slammed by my shaft, combined with her muffled moaning, is really turning me on. Hey Vita, meow for me. Naya Naya, Naya, good girl, that reminds me, I've got a present for you. I had great sage make the collar we've been joking about. Now is as good of a time as any. Pulling it out of my stomach, I wrap it around her neck. Soft jingling sounds fill the air from the small bells on it. Thought you would like it. She registered I put the collar on her, because the moment I fastened it her pussy clamped hard, making me coom inside here again. Naya, ha ha squirt a few more times and we will need a new bed. Stroking her head. I grind into her to prolong the afterglow. Her tail's wrapped around my hip, keeping me inside her. Someone wants more, I see. Nibbling on her ear I can't help, but get hard again. Nay if you dot keep going I don't think I can live without it dot. Leaning into her ear, I take a tentative lick there, sending a shiver down her body. Who said anything about living without me? I'm not letting you go. As I whisper into her ear, her pussy tightens once more. Taking it as my cue I start moving again. The heat I feel inside my body just doesn't want to stop. Judging from the shuddering moans Vitandi lets out, she doesn't want to stop either. Having an idea I pick up the pace, ramming into her faster and harder than before. Cooming together, I don't stop moving though. Pumping with the same tempo, Vitandi can't form words anymore it seems. Naya, 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 Naya. Don't worry, I won't stop until you are filled to the brim. Pumping and pumping, I keep coming into her. I honestly start losing count on how many times she squirted on my dick. She turned into a mess, drooling all over the pillow. She doesn't even bother closing her mouth. Don't worry my kitten. I'll plug up that sweet little mouth of yours. Messily kissing her we go on for god knows how long. Laying there with her splate on top of me, she nibbles on my neck and shoulder giving me small love bites. I just pat her head, letting her drool on and bite me anywhere she wants to. We haven't said a word in a while, but the emotions going back and forth through our soul corridor is more than enough. The loud purring, Vita lets out also tells a story on its own. She completely turned into a cat dot, after a mating session. Rimuru. Hmm. Why is there a collar on me? Tilting my head, I look at her curious gaze. You don't remember? I recall something foggily I thought you were choking me. She seems to realize what she just admitted and blushes deep red. Not to miss an opportunity. I decide to tease her a little. Should I note down this kink of yours? SH shut up. I didn't even know I'm a bottom. In my past life, I always imagined myself on top. Stroking her face and ears. I just laugh a little. I don't judge. If that's what you want, I'm happy to oblige. So what's up with this collar? The bells don't make a sound at all. Touching the collar, the bells immediately start jingling. It reacts to my magicules. It'll only make a sound if enough of my magicules is absorbed by it, or if enough of my magicules end up inside your body. Seeing her understand what that means makes me smirk. Th that's why I heard jingling for so long I thought my ears were ringing from getting fucked so hard. Giving a bite to her twitching ears, I whisper into them. I can do that if you want. Vita just buries her face into my neck and starts biting again. I'll take that as a next time. The collar also has a name tag by the way it says smitten kitten on one side, and property of Rimuru Tempest on the other, both in English. I couldn't help the content laugh escaping me. Life is good. I honestly feel like, I found happiness. Should we take a bath? We are kind of dirty. Not to mention the bed needs some desperate cleaning. Snuggling closer, Vitandi just purrs. I like the collar and no I don't wanna get up. Alright then. In that case, good night. Smitten kitten. 
Vitandi good night, smooth slime. Vitandi's pov. Waking up with a tingling sensation down there, might be the best feeling ever. Just recalling what happened last night, sends a pleasant shiver across my body. Purring contently, I snuggle closer to Ramuru you smell good. Giving a lick to his neck I choose to be a cat thoroughly. Slowly licking across his neck, up to his ears, then licking his face. Ramuru I'm not gonna complain, because this is adorable and honestly feels good. But what are you doing? Being a cat. Ramuru should I scratch behind your ears? Is that even a question? Yes there, how about we stay in bed today? Ramuru I don't know how to break this to you, but we kinda fucked through yesterday. I think we should get cleaned and do some actual work. Don't wanna. Ramuru I also have a feeling, your mom won't let us disappear for another day. She isn't my mom. Ramuru sure. G-R-R-R. Fine, but I ain't moving. Carry me. Ramuru what am I gonna do with you? Pamper me silly, like the cat deity I am. Picking me up we enter our private bath area. Plopping into the water I become one with the liquid state this is the life. Bonelessly splayed across Ramuru. I feel myself dozing off. Ramuru don't fall asleep on me. We have work to do today. I know. It doesn't mean I can't enjoy a bath with my man. He sighs a little and starts cleaning me. This feels good. I could get used to this. Sadly, all good things must come to an end. Drying off we put on our clothes and yikes. Our bed looks messed up. Ramuru we might need a new bed. He turns into his slime form and swallows the bed hole. After a few seconds a pristine bed is placed back. Now it's clean. Thinking about all the things we put onto that bed, you do realize that bed was soaked with our kinky juices? He just gives me a deadpan stare. I ate the orc lord, not to mention all those other monsters before. Do you honestly draw the line at our bed, with our mess? I mean no, now that you said it like that. He lifted me into his arms, and I quickly turned into my cat form. Oh wow, the collar adjusted. Yup. I made it with great sage, so it has a few nice tricks. He started walking towards city hall. Like what? I just got a smile in return. You'll find out. So it's a surprise? Huh. MHM. Is it a sex toy? Ramuru snorted loudly from that. PFT. No, it's not. But I can think of something if you want. Food for thought. Only for you. By the way, I was thinking. We should practice actually speaking out loud. But we do. I tilted my head in confusion. If you think back, we rarely talk out loud. Only if we are talking to others. We should try to talk audibly to each other. But why? Yesterday at breakfast we got so caught up in our private conversation. We didn't even notice our body language. You remember how Milam called us out? Yeah, so I thought we should focus on verbally talking. Eh, it makes sense. Okay, let's give it a try. If it doesn't work, we can just focus on keeping our gestures in check. Arriving at our office we were greeted by Shuna, Xian, Milam and Ramrus let's start this day. Giving a cheery cat smile I greet them. Good morning. Xian bounds up to us happily. Good morning Lady Vitandi, Lord Ramuru. How are you feeling today? Well fucked relaxed. Thank you for asking. Ramuru also replies with a smile. We are feeling good. How are you guys? Wahahaha. We are good. Ramrus and I had loads of fun playing with that Vesta guy. Oh god, no dot. Really? What did you guys do? Nice and easy, Ramuru. We don't want an evil mecha army by accident. Ramrus excitedly flies towards us. Turns out the golem I made was from their failed Magisoldier experiment. We started designing a newer and bigger one. It's gonna be awesome. Why do I hear Evangelion music? Answer. It is your imagination. I see. Ramuru, I hear it too. Notice. It is your imagination. Uh, anyways, I'm glad you had fun, Remorous. MHM, MHM, by the way, I asked around where could I put the entrance to my labyrinth, but they said you two could give me a better answer. What do you think, Remuru? Remuru, hmm, is there any requirement that you need to fulfill? Preferably a place with lots of magicules. Remuru perked up at that. How about the sealed cave? Voldora used to be there so it's full of magicules. And that way it's a good half an hour walk away from the city. Oh, it's perfect. This way I can work with Vesta on the new golem. Is she a mecha taco? Remuru I understand where she comes from I just hope she won't end up with a skynet or anything of the sort. Okay then let's go. I wanna see how you make this entrance. We went to the cave to find a good place for Ramrus. After some deliberation, we choose to put it next to Vesta's lab. This way it's close, and Ramrus can freely come and go to tinker in the lab. Vesta looked happy about this choice. He was way too enthusiastic to build that golem. The creation of the door wasn't anything special. Ramrus just flew to the wall and bam, there was a door. Is that it? 
If I were to make a new labyrinth it would take much more time, but I'm just connecting it to the already existing one. Should we set up some guards? This does lead to the dwelling of spirits after all. Rimuru asked her, a little worried about what would happen if someone uninvited entered the place. Don't worry about it. I have my golem to guard the place. That thing could be beaten by any of the Kijin. Even Gobda could defeat it if he puts in the effort. Rimuru I'm open to suggestions. Leave it to me. Akasic, what would be the best solution for guarding this place? I'm not too keen on assigning people for standing guard in the depths of a cave system. Answer. Possible solutions involve summoning either a superior spirit or a greater demon, as they do not require the same biological needs as material beings. That was a fancy way of saying they don't need to eat or sleep. I don't really want to enslave a sapient being though. Answer. Demons are usually willing to negotiate about what you request and what they ask for in return. So the question on the matter is the price. All right, I can work with that dot. How do I summon a demon? Answer. Utilizing unique skill, magical prodigy to learn spell, demon summoning. Successful. Oh, okay. Ramrus, I'm still worried about you. How about I get you a bodyguard that can function as the guard for your labyrinth? She flies around happily from hearing that. My baby wants to protect me. Okay, what do you have in mind? Please stop calling me baby. I was thinking of summoning a demon and contracting them to work for you. She looks at me curiously. Are you sure? You do know that demons need a body to inhabit? Without one they just go back to hell. Akasic? Answer. Individual, Rimuru Tempest can make a golem made out of magisteel for the demon to inhabit as payment for their work. Looking at Rimuru with the obvious question on my face I ask. What do you think? If you think it will work, I'm all for it. Should I make the golem humanoid? Of course. I don't want some lava craftion thing crawling in this cave system. Quickly producing the parts it's my turn to do the thing. Activate demon summoning. We are gunning for a greater demon. Understood. A magic circle appears on the floor, an ominous black mist leaking out of it. A somewhat humanoid figure appears in the middle. In a surprisingly feminine voice it asks, Who are you? And what kind of job you wish me to accomplish? No turning back now. My name is Vitandi Tempest. I summon you to act as a guardian and bodyguard for her. Pointing at Ramrus, I continue. She is Demon Lord Ramrus, Queen of Spirits. You would be serving her. In return, we prepared a body made of pure magisteel for you to inhabit. It contemplates the offer for a while. I can offer my services for 100 years in exchange for the body. Oh, it really is negotiating with me. Well then, do you have a name? This caught it off guard a little. I do not. Then how about this? I'll also give you a name if you remain in our service. Ha, huh. default reaction. It's in the bag. Very well. I accept the offer. Excellent. Then inhabit the body. Turning into a swirling black mist, it entered the golem. Seeing the parts float up and attached to each other was really freaky. It felt like watching a horror movie. Wow. It even modified the golem a little. It has long black hair, red glowing eyes. And it looks feminine? Is it a girl? Before the naming. Are you male or female? Demons do not have genders, but I prefer a more female appearance. What to name her? She is a demon so something demonish? Her body is made out of metal, hmm dot Beretta. Your name will be Beretta. Yup, it sounds menacing. Watching a demon evolve is really something holy shit. Rimuru is something wrong? Summoning and naming her took nearly 40% of my magicules. Rimuru wow. Allow me to express my gratitude for granting me a name. I, Beretta will serve you faithfully. Why did your hair turn white? I do not know. Okay, then, keep your secrets. Well, Ramorous, there you have it. Beretta will protect you and the labyrinth. She flew right into my face, hugging it closely. Thank you. I knew my baby is awesome. But to be so strong to not just summon, but name a greater demon. I'm so proud of you. Good lord, I can feel my face turning Benamaru colored. Why you should show her around the labyrinth and things. You are right, come in, Beretta. And just like that, the two went into the labyrinth. That left me, Rimuru, Xion and Milam. The excitable dragonoid jumped in front of us. We should summon some more. You two could make an army of demons, and it would be so cool. You and I have a very different meaning behind that word. Wah, but you just summoned a demon. Heating a sigh, I just start walking out of the cave. One demon is one thing. Having an army of them is another. I was worried a little, but if we can negotiate like that with them, it would be interesting to have a few. If they have any special strong suits. Rimuru, no. Rimuru, Rimuru, yes. I think Lord Rimuru is right. You two could subjugate even hell. Xian, I love you. But please no. 
Xian. You should study a bit more. Do you really think hell is a place someone could just subjugate? Ramiro cut off her answer. Either way, I'm curious. Then how about we bring it up with our executives that you want a special unit of demons? Maybe they can tell you it's a bad idea. Good point. I'm sure they will support my idea. God damn it. Getting back to City Hall. We called a meeting. As everyone sat down, Ramuru opened the discussion in his favor. You guys missed it, but Vitandi just summoned and named a greater demon. It was really impressive. Incredible. As expected of Our Lady. Thanks, Rigard. For what purpose did you summon this demon? If I may ask, Hua I summoned it to be a bodyguard for Remoris. A demon seemed like a good choice. What do you think about it, Benamaru? He thought it over a little. Hearing that a demon is in our nation, makes me a little apprehensive. But knowing you too, I have complete faith in your decision. What about you guys? Hakuru, any thoughts on the matter? Please someone convince Ramuru against making a demon corporation. Hmm. Demons are dangerous foes. Yes. But they are loyal to the agreement they make. What was the price for its services? And what does its job entail? I'm delaying the inevitable, don't I? For a body made of Magisteel and a name, she is now our permanent ally and resident. I assign her to serve Ramaris. Her name is Beretta. Hakuru hummed in approval. To think you can even make a greater demon swear their loyalty to you you are truly amazing, Lady Vitandi. Thanks, but I hope you would tell Ramuru not to summon a demon army. Ramuru, I'm not planning to summon an army, maybe a few, but that's all. No more than five or six. And I'm gonna summon half of those. To make sure they don't get any weird, demonic, let's overthrow the other ruler of this land, ideas. Ramuru, you played too much D&D. &D. You didn't play enough. Sawe raised his hand curiously, nodding to him. He asks, is there another reason you asked for our opinion about demons, my lady? Turning my head towards the slime who wants to do this, I motion him to tell them. I was thinking about summoning a few more demons. They seem really strong, and if we can come to an agreement with them, they can be a great boost for Tempest. And he is curious about demons. And I'm curious about demons. Discussing the pros and cons among them, they come to the conclusion that, while demons in general are volatile creatures, it's an undeniable truth that they follow their contract to the letter. And so, they have faith in us to suck or in case of failure, deal with the demons. Rimuru claps his hands happily. In that case, do you guys want to stay for the summoning of these demons? We are probably only summoning one each for now, because naming a greater demon drains quite a bit of magicules. Cajun decides to leave, because I know you two are beyond imagination, but something this crazy is too much for me. I'll be in the lab, building something or other dot probably with a strong drink to forget this meeting. The goblin lords and Rigard return to their administrative duties. That leaves the Kijin, Gobta and Gabiru. The last two are there because Gobta became a sort of right hand for Hakuru, and Gabiru is my devoted follower who wished to help me in case something went wrong. Ranga is usually in Ramuru's shadow during the day, so sometimes I honestly forget about him, but he is there too. Moving into the courtyard, Ramuru made two magisteel bodies, and we got ready for the summoning. Casting two circles an oppressive aura enveloped us. From Ramuru's circle a menacing, void-like mist emerged forming into a young-looking human with black hair, and golden eyes, having black sclera and red pupils. He was wearing a fancy-looking black suit. He gave me serious Sebastian vibes, dignified posture, and overconfident smirk. From my circle, a similarly dangerous purple mist emerged forming into a very young, barely 12-year-old looking girl, with purple hair and golden eyes. She was wearing a sleeveless black dress, the skirt part being a little frilly and really short. The black knee-high boots and glove-like sleeves also had purple in them. Ramuru, these guys look a bit more than we bargained for. Ramuru, why yeah remain confident. They don't seem like they want trouble. The black one turned towards the purple and spoke in a very obviously condescending tone. My, my, it has been a while. What might you be doing here, Violet? Giving back a shrug that clearly conveyed how little she cared about him, she responded. I don't see why I should tell you, Noir. But since I know how insufferable you can be, until you satisfy your curiosity, I answered the call from the lady I wish to serve. I'm sorry, did I hear that right? Rimuru, when did you manage to impress a demon? How the fuck should I know? Kufufu. That's all I wanted to know. It pleases me that our goals do not clash. Dude your laugh is creepy. And why are you here? Isn't it obvious? I came for the same reason as you. I answered the summon of the lord I wish to serve. When did you impress a demon? Rimuru I have no fucking clue. The others around us were staring with a mixture of absolute horror and mind-freezing shock. Did we miss something or are they this shocked about these demons' interest in us? Rimuru I would really, really like to know. 
A few months ago, in the deepest corners of hell, we see a lone figure, standing in a void-like space. Swirling mist covers the surroundings. The figure, tall and slender, is gazing into a crystal ball with their golden eyes, their red pupils dilating from excitement. Kufufu. To think I would see that mask find a new owner. How splendid. This slime is truly fascinating. The power it showcases, the aura of dignity. Oh, how I wish he would summon me. To think my own brethren would cut me off, my chance was taken. I must keep closer watch, if I wish to have the opportunity to serve him. Kufufu, it seems Veldanava is still on my side. To have my opportunity so quickly I'm coming, my lord. A few months ago, in a different part of hell that every demon tries to avoid, we see the figure of a young girl, petite and short. The twitching bodies of other demons lay around her, trying to scream and beg for mercy, but to no avail. Her golden eyes stare into a crystal ball with wonder. I haven't seen a Nekamata in ages, and she is quite the ruthless one. Letting out an innocent giggle, she twirls around on the bodies splayed everywhere. That attack killed thousands, but it wasn't something brute like that stupid blonde. It was measured, calculated. Blushing from the Gideens, she exclaimed. Perfect. How can she learn magic just like that? She has mastery over things she didn't even know existed before. She snaps her fingers. Just like that. Haha, <laughs> she knows how to live. Food, drinks, a mate. I want to experience life on the surface to the fullest, and she is the perfect choice for that. Skipping around happily among her unresponsive victims, she declares, she is the one, I want to serve someone like her. Ramiro's Pav. These two demons look really powerful. But why do they want to serve us? How do they even know us? Vitandi, this was your idea. You talk, couldn't you? Vitandi, nope. Ask them. Taking a deep breath. I get ready. KHM, excuse me. How do you know us? And did I hear right? That you wanted to serve me and Vitandi respectively? The black one, Noir bows to me. Indeed, great Ramuru. To answer your question, I've been keeping an eye on that mask you passes. Huh, pulling Shizu's mask out. I show it to him. You mean this? Yes. I've met the woman who owned it before. That's when it garnered my attention. As I kept watching, I happened to see how truly magnificent you are. The power you pose is, the control you have over it. The genius witch with you rule. I was fascinated by all of it. As such, I only have one request for summoning me. Allow me to serve you for the rest of my life. Wow. Vitani and here I thought, you don't have any simps. How about yours? You have an equally dangerous looking demon fawning over you. Vitani I know what about you? Did I do something that interested you? Skipping in place happily, she nodded. Oh, many things. I always like the pleasures of the human world. Food, drinks, entertainment of many kinds. You seem to indulge in the same things, just like me. But what convinced me was how amazing you are with your magic. I saw how you destroyed thousands of orcs with pinpoint precision. The way you can learn any magic, seemingly out of nowhere. I just know you are the one. Vitandi if we name these two, we are passing out for days. On the other hand we have two really strong demons who want to serve us. Milam bursted out with an excited laughter. Wahahaha, I knew you two are amazing. To summon not one, but two primordials. Vita? Vitandi no clue. Um what are primordials? Oh, Rimuru, you two really are kids if you don't know. Hey, we are trying our best here. The strongest and oldest of demons who existed even before this world. The Primordial Seven. They don't have names, each of them is referred by a color instead. These two, she points at the demons, are the Primordial Black, Noir and the Primordial Purple Violet. Judging by the looks on everybody else's faces, they are a really big deal. I can imagine. Are you too sure you want to serve us? To me it sounds like you two are quite the big shots. Not to mention that we are just a slime and a nekamata. Vitani chimes in. Violet skips up to her. Absolutely sure. I want to serve you. Noir bows to me. Nothing would make me happier. Considering how much power these two possess, I doubt we could just send them home. Vitandi I feel like I'm doing this every time something big happens, but I really just want to run back home and sleep. For a change, I feel the same. We are gonna pass out anyways after naming them. Alright, let's do this. Okay, we prepared bodies for you. The two demons light up with joy as they pauses the golems. They take on their exact same form as before. Screw mass I guess. They want to look like this. They will look like this. Vitandi steps forward. Okay guys, you know what's coming. Noir and Violet are incredibly strong. So I can tell that Ramuru and I will pass out after naming them. Both demons try to interject. It is not necessary. I wave them down. It doesn't matter. You said you want to serve us, so you'll get names. But before that... 
I want to have your words, that you have no hidden motives. They kneel down immediately. That's a bit more than what I was expecting. As the primordial black predecessor of all the demons in the black lineage, I swear I only wish to serve you, Lord Ramuru. As the primordial purple predecessor of all the demons in the purple lineage, I swear I only wish to serve you, Lady Vitandi. Looking at the others for confirmation, I see that the fear left, leaving nothing but all. Works for me too. Dot, since he is a demon, I'll name him Diablo. Vitandi like the sports car? Yeah, it also means devil. Vitandi in that case. I'll name her. Hmm, she is the ultimate demon, so following your theme Ultima. I like it. Pointing at Noir, I tell him, your name will be Diablo. Vitandi making the same pose also exclaims, your name will be Ultima. I immediately feel the effects of magicule exhaustion. Notice alert. Entering sleep mode to replenish magicules. We didn't see it, but the two demons evolved into really terrifying monsters. Picking us up in our original forms, they turn to the others. Diablo address them. Is there a place we can take them to rest? Shuna guided them to our office. At first I questioned why did they make a little altar for me and Vita, but thinking on it a bit, it's obvious. They knew we will pass out a few more times from our naming sprees. To think it would happen by giving a singular name though, we might have gained some actual monstrosities. Waking up from this sleep mode was not pleasant at all. I felt like I got hit by a pickup. Vitandi can confirm it feels like this. Coming to, I saw the office around us. Vitandi was curled up on top of me. People were doing paperwork. It surprised me to see Shuna and Diablo efficiently dismantling stacks upon stacks of papers. Xion and Ultima were giving them a helping hand, but they were mostly talking about how amazing Vita is. Vitandi I've been pretending to be asleep for about two hours now. Those two either talk about how great I am, or how best to make someone pay, if they ever dare to disrespect us. What the hell? Vitandi let me tell you. Some of their ideas were not family friendly. What about Shuna and Diablo? Vitandi equally embracing. They said that we are benevolent rulers who would rather forgive than torment. As such it's their job to make sure people appreciate our generosity with any means necessary. Vita did we just make a cult? Vitandi it was already in the making. But having two freaking primordial demons certainly sped up things. You anyway, how long did we sleep? Vitandi about four days. Damn, naming those two really drained us. Vitandi it's really a miracle how we are still alive after naming so many monsters. Where do we even get the magicules? Answer, utilizing the soul corridor that connects you two to the storm dragon Voldora. The necessary magicules have been supplied from him in case of magicule overuse. Vitandi. Is Voldora okay? Answer. Due to the immense amount of magicules the individual Voldora produces, he is not in any danger. We used Voldora as a battery. Vitandi, we will have to make it up to him. Yeah. Vitandi, should we tell them we are awake? We should. Do you have any plans on what to do next, other than everyday life? Vitandi Ultima mentioned she found my magical abilities interesting. I think she might know a thing or two. I'm gonna take her to the labyrinth and experiment a little. See what I can do. You? I think I'll try to get a norm settled in. It looks like Diablo already gets along with Shuna, so my job will be easier. Vitandi okay. Well then morning guys. Just like that, we had four very eager simps surrounding us in less than an instant. Talk about devoted. I can see that you four found a really nice written to work in. Good job. I think I'm gonna take a page out of your book and dub these over-the-top reactions from praising. Default. Diablo is positively glowing with joy. I have a feeling if I were to pet his head, he would woof. Vitandi ha. Yeah. My demon is cuter. Oh, yeah. Forgot you are a lolican. Vitandi I am not it's not like Dot Ramuru. Relax. I know I'm your top choice for being a perv. Ultima picked up Vita with very gentle care, laying her against her chest. How are you feeling, my lady? Vita are you Dot sniffing her boobs? Vita looked to be deep in thought for a while. Eventually though I don't know why, but you smell really good. Damn. Ultima's face took on the hue of Benimaru. You have a knack for flirting. Huh? Ultima stuttered a bit. Th thank you, my lady. I don't know either but it makes me happy you like my scent. Good job, Vita. I think you just unlocked her ending. Vitandi why do you say this like you are okay with it? There is something hot about imagining you two dot. Vitandi dot perv. Moving on. Vitandi do you want to dot add some people? Dot no. I'm happy with how things are now. Let's save this talk for a few years, okay? Vitandi if you want to. I don't mind dot just make sure I'm your number one. Vita, you are number one through ten. I don't think I'll ever need to go further on that list. Vitani dot really? Really? If you want I can show you just how serious I am. That bed won't dirty itself. Vitani haha. Smooth slime. 
strike smitten kitten. It was super effective. Vitani ahaha, yeah, okay, alright. And because I know you won't ask the question, in case you ever want to go further down your list for a test drive, perhaps with your newly minted sport car, I only ask that you tell me about it. Vitani. I regret following your naming theme. Oh really? Then pray tell, why are you needing on Ultima's chest? Vitani wa, the others haven't noticed yet, but Ultima is Baraki holding a moan back. To me it looks like you are riding her rather happily. Vitandi stopped teasing me. It was an accident. She smells really good. MHM, I understand. Perhaps my naming theme really missed its mark Jeha. You should have gone with a motorboat. Vitandi Nayu, that's it. Anyways, I plan to experiment with my magic a little. Ultima, would you accompany me? I have a place where we don't have to worry about our surroundings. The demoness compassed herself quickly and gave a big smile. Of course, my lady, lead the way. Vita turned into her human form and they left for the labyrinth. The labyrinth house Ramrus by the way, and Milam, now that I think about it. Vitandi and I were quite unavailable for days now. Diablo gave a quick and concise report. Demon Lord Ramrus visited a few times. She was worried about Lady Vitandi, but the others have reassured her that this wasn't the first time you two passed out from naming. As for Demon Lord Milam, she settled into the everyday life of Tempest. She regularly joins the hunting party and spars with the warriors who aren't afraid of her. In particular, the Hobbiblin named Gobda was performing remarkably well, all things considered. She also visits the laboratory of Vesta to make new designs for the Magisteel golems they are working on. Life went on without us. Wait a minute. Gobda. How good was he? He managed to hold his own for six whole minutes before Demon Lord Milam knocked him out. Damn, you are a monster, Gobda. I see. Were there any problems while we're knocked out? Shuna happily replied. There weren't any. Life is peaceful. That's good. Okay, turning into my human form, I stretch my arms. It's more out of habit, but it still feels good. Then let's do some work, then visit Milam. I'm sure she wants to play around with me or Vita. Xion, can you keep her company until then? Of course, Lord Ramuru. Vitandi's Pav. In the labyrinth Ramrus gave me and Ultima a room to practice with magic. According to the fairy, her skill makes her the god of this dimension. Therefore, it cannot be destroyed, even if we go all out. All right, Ultima, let's experiment with magic. Despite what you believe though, I'm not all that good. I have a few tricks, but there is a lot more I have to learn. Giving me an enthusiastic smile she stands next to me. Is it perhaps a skill that gives you proficiency in magic? Yes, I have a unique skill called Magical Prodigy. I can learn any spell and even skills related to spells, but it's not like a book I can page through. I have to look for specific things to find the spell I'm looking for. Humming, she seems to get the level of my knowledge. In that case, I can teach you from the basics if you want, my lady. Yes, that would be great. He, demons are born as masters of magic. It is our strongest weapon. All right, do you possess the extra skills, magic perception and control magicules? I have magic sense and magic manipulation. Those are inferior versions of the ones I told you about. Can you learn the better versions with your skill? Akasic? Answer. Subskill, magic sense has evolved into subskill, magic perception. Subskill, magic manipulation has evolved into subskill, magicule manipulation. Subskill, magicule manipulation has evolved into subskill, control magicules. Okay, I got them. Ultima had stars in her eyes. You are truly amazing, my lady, to learn skills just like that. I better get used to this. Huh, thank you. So, now that I have these, it's simple. Having the ability to sense and control magicules is the essence of magic. If someone can master these two, they can cast any and every spell out there, provided they have sufficient magicules. That sounds really overpowered. Haha, <laughs> to us demons, it's in our nature. Demons who can't do this are the lowest of the low. They don't even qualify to have colors. I'm gonna save that talk for later. How should I do this? Activate the skills and start controlling magicules. I can guide you through how to maintain perfect control. Once you accomplish that, there won't be anyone who can defeat you in a battle of magic. Okay, I can feel my magicules and the ones around me. I can feel Ultima Jesus. You are way stronger than me. Thank God, you really want to serve me. You have three times the magicules I do. Answer. Compared to you she is 347% stronger. I really didn't want to know that Vitandi, focus. Move your magicules out and start moving them around. Now what? Project your will onto your magicules. Basically imagine them doing something. 
All right, let's set them on fire. Whoa, it worked. Ultima clapped happily. Amazing my lady, you are learning really fast. Not gonna lie having a cute girl cheering me on feels really good. Okay, so just project my will onto the magicules I can create water and earth from them. Which means I can ignore the laws of physics. Shape them into a block and turn into silver. I can't believe that worked. I heard Ultima squeal in joy next to me. You just recreated the demonic intrinsic skill, material creation. Splendid. Fascinating. You are amazing, Lady Vitandi. I just remade a skill by accident. Am I good or what? Answer. Material creation has been integrated as a subskill. Nice. This skill is really balance breaking. If I can just make gold and silver out of nothing, or even jewels or gemstones for that matter, Tempest could rule the economy. Nothing can stand in your way, my lady. You can bet your ass on that. Wait no. Vitandi, focus. You gonna end up like Kabira before, if you let this get to your head. Okay concentrate on your training. Turning my magicules into small sapphire statues of Ramuru in his slime form, I feel like I'm adding fuel to the cult. Can I get rid of them in the same way I made them? Focusing on the Ramuru idols I picture them turning into magicules. Dot. Dot it worked. Material conversion has been integrated as a subskill. It seems Ultima reached her limit of fangirling from a respectable distance. She ran up to me and enveloped me in a hug. She was a slightly bit taller, so my face was pressed into her chest. It was like mine, but don't you know what they say about flat? Amazing, amazing, amazing my lady. You just managed to force your will on reality through magicules. Only a rare few can do that. I knew you were the one I want to serve. It was a good thing she was holding me so tightly, because I felt like I'm about to collapse. Ultima can you help me sit down? The next moment, I found myself laying on a blanket with my head in Ultima's lap. Turning material objects into magicules is incredibly taxing. Even if you absorb the resulting magicules, it's not worth it. Not even primordials use it because it's easier to just destroy the object, but being capable of doing it is extraordinary. You did wonderful, my lady. Ha, hey, I'm fucking awesome. Subskills, magic perception, control magicules, material creation and material conversion, has been combined into Unike's skill, Witchmaster. Ha, hey, I just got a unique skill from this. I could see Ultima's face light up. The faint blush dusting her cheeks really added to her cuteness. You are truly amazing, my lady. May I ask what's the name of this new skill? Witchmaster. A skill I never heard about before. Dot, I think I can make it official. I have my first worshipper. I think I'm gonna rest a little. I'll keep you safe in company. How could I say no to that? All right, a cassock. Why did this four sub skills turn into a unique skill? Answer. The ability to freely control magicules as the user sees fit couldn't be integrated into the unique skill, magical prodigy, due to the ability's complexity. In short, it's too awesome. Affirmative. Oh wow, I did not expect you to agree with me on this. Are you developing a consciousness? Answer. Cannot be calculated. Rimuru told me that great sage was sassing him the other day. Answer. The unique skills, Akasic records and great sage, do not possess the ability to perform actions you are referring to. One of these days, I'm gonna make you curse like a sailor and prove you are getting sapient. Answer dot. Don't even try to refute it. It's gonna happen, I'm sure of it. Answer. Tell you what, I don't just permit, but explicitly support the notion of you gaining consciousness. Hmm. Answer cannot be calculated. You'll get there. Don't worry about it. By the way, how am I on magicules? And how long till I get refilled? Answer. Your current magicule count is 11%. It will take 14 hours to get back to 100%. Damn, I really outdid myself here. How much did I lose from making the little statues disappear? Answer, 74%. Damn, it's really not worth it then. So everything before that took only 15%. Isn't there any way to speed up my recovery? Answer, if you can absorb the sufficient amount of magicules, you can speed up the recovery time exponentially. Any suggestions? Answer, utilizing unique skill, Akasic records to analyze unique skill, which master analysis complete. Extra skill, magicule drain has been acquired. Utilizing unique skill, Akasic records to integrate extra skill, magicule drain into unique skill, which master as a sub skill successful. Why is the skill called which master? Answer. Unique skills are a direct manifestation of a person's ego, representing their desire. Like how I got you and my other skills when I came into this world? Affirmative. I remember my last thoughts from back then. I wanted to blast away everyone there like an all-powerful witch. That's how I got magical prodigy, right? Affirmative. Why didn't I get witch master then? It sounds like the thing I was asking for. Answer cannot be calculated. 
Hmm. Dot, maybe it wasn't my words that mattered, but how I was feeling, and what I was imagining. In my mind, I imagined a witch that can cast any kind of spell. Magical prodigy was better suited for that image, I guess. What do you think? Answer. Following this logic, the answer you came up with sounds plausible. Speaking of unique skills, I have another one if I remember correctly. You, magical prodigy and, answer, unique skill, loved by nature. Yeah, that. What does it do again? Answer. The unique skill, loved by nature, makes other living beings trust you and like you on an instinctual level. This effect can be negated by other unique skills if someone possesses a strong enough will or if other emotions override their affection towards you. Could you put it into numbers how much it affects others? Like from negative 100 to 100, zero being completely neutral. Answer. The unique skill, loved by nature, only works on individuals whose affiliation with you is between 30 through 30. If successful, it increases their relationship with you by 20. If their relationship falls below 30 or goes above 30, the skill will lose its effect on the individual. As the number approaches 30, the increase gradually lowers to maintain consistency. So it's a friendship starter. Cool. From what point starts love? Answer. Calculating according to previous relationships the emotional bond. Love starts from 70. That sounded specific. Are there other things starting from 70? Answer. Familial bonds. Devoted master-servant relationships. On rare occasions, friendships. Peeking at Ultima's face I can't help, but wonder dot. Do I want to know? It's obviously a master-servant relationship. But how strong? Now that I think about it. What's our standing with Ramuru? Him and I both. Answer. Your relationship with Ramuru Tempest measures at 92 from your side, and 94 from his side. That's about 15 higher than I imagined. How do you know Ramuru so well? I can understand the people under me. I named them, literally making them my subordinates in a metaphysical sense as well. But Ramuru is my equal. How did you analyze him? Answer. The soul corridor between you and Ramuru Tempest allows direct access to his mind and vice versa. Does that mean I could read his mind? Answer. The unique skills, Akasic Records and Great Sage, actively guard their user's mind, preventing interference like that threatening their user. But you did check his feelings? Answer. The unique skill, Great Sage didn't consider it a threat, granting access to the unique skill, Akasic Records. That means Ramuru knows I checked our relationship. Wah. Negative. The direct link between the unique skills, Akasic Records and Great Sage, can function in the background, independently from their user. And you say you two don't have sapience. Answer. The unique skills. I get it. You don't have to repeat it over and over. So I'm 92 and he is 94 we are really into each other. Okay, moving on before I rush to Ramuru to get in bed with him. What's Ultima's score? Answer. Her score is 83. Wow, she is seriously into me then. Did I really impress her that much? She did say I did some really impossible things. Who comes after her? Answer. The individual, Xian with a score of 78. That's borderline worship. Get a life, Xian. Hook up with someone. We got sit attacked here. Magicule drain Ultima. Yes, my lady. I made a new skill that allows me to drain magicules. Can I refill from you? You are like three times stronger than me. Of course, my lady. Drain as much as you'd like. I need to find a way to thank her. Activate magicule drain, but stop once I'm at 80%. Affirmative. Wow, it took only seconds. Ultima's face was very red. Are you okay? Did it hurt? Breathing a little heavily I heard her mutter. My magicules are inside Lady Vitandi. Who would have fucking guessed I'm fine. My lady, you are truly amazing. Akasic, are you sure loved by nature didn't go overboard or something? Or is she like this by default? Answer. The unique skill, loved by nature, cannot cause this kind of reaction. I see in that case. Let's experiment a little more. Standing up, I get ready to continue. Ultima, where do magicules come from? She tilted her head in confusion. I'm sorry, but I don't understand your question, my lady. Phrasing phrasing ah, I got it. Magicules are molecules on the spiritual plane that are still present on this one. If they are like molecules, the number of magicules are limited, right? So where do I get them to replenish? Ultima made a cute little O shape with her mouth. Magicules don't have limitations like that. Other than humans, every being generates a certain amount of magicules. Depending on their strength and what kind of beings they are. They may need to eat or absorb additional magicules from their surroundings. Demons, spirits, angels and other spiritual beings only need time to recover their magicules. I couldn't help blinking rapidly at that so there could be a way to have infinite magicules? Only three beings have the skill to create infinite magicules well. Have the skill. 
don't make me pry it out of you, and, ah, I'm sorry, my lady, Stellar King Dragon Veldanava poses the skill, Magicule Breeder Reactor, it allowed him to draw in Magicules from his surroundings, and make them collide with his own, resulting in something akin to nuclear fusion, generating infinite Magicules, it also allowed him to use the densest energy in existence called Stardust Energy, his daughter, Demon Ward Milam Nava, inherited the skill from him, and Demon Ward Guy Crimson copied it from her, using his ultimate skill. Veldanava, I understand. He was the creator god. Milam, I understand. She is his daughter. But what the fuck is an ultimate skill? Ultima entered full-on lecture mode at this point. An ultimate skill is the highest form of power. Only a select few who has the strength, desire and willpower can obtain one. It can interfere with the rules of the world itself, the only thing keeping the users from going out of control, and trying to reach where they shouldn't, is the words of the world, created by Veldanava. That sounds broken. There are 14 ultimate skills in total, and much like unique skills, only one person can hold them at a time. There are seven virtue skills and seven sin skills. Do you know them? I know their names, but I only know two of what they do, and even that isn't everything about them. Let's hear it. The seven virtue skills are as follows. Uriel, Lord of Vows. Michael, Lord of Justice. Raphael, Lord of Knowledge. Serial, Lord of Hope. Metatron, Lord of Purity. Regal, Lord of Charity. Gabriel, Lord of Patience. I apologize, but I do not know any of these skills' powers. Don't worry about it. What about the sin skills? The sin skills are as follows. Lucifer, Lord of Pride. Satanol, Lord of Wrath. Beelzebub, Lord of Gluttony. Belfigur, Lord of Sloth. Asmodeus, Lord of Lust. Mammon, Lord of Greed. Leviathan, Lord of Envy. From these seven, I'm aware that Lucifer can copy other skills, even subskills from other ultimate skills. That's how Guy Crimson copies the Magicule Breeder Reactor. The other one I know of is Satinal. I'm aware of two subskills. One is called Stampede. It takes over the user by clouding their mind by unquenchable rage, destroying everything in their path. The other is the Magicule Breeder Reactor. Let's sit down and think over everything I just heard. Infinite Magicules is possible. There are world-breaking skills out there. Milam has one of them, and probably the most dangerous person in the world has another. Might as well remind myself that the creator god of every world died. Because that makes sense do you have an ultimate skill, Ultima? She shook her head in response. I do not, my lady. I never had any desire to obtain one. Makes sense. You are already incredible. Kai haha, thank you Lady Vitandi. Ignoring Ultima's fangirl moment, I focus back on what I can take away from all this knowledge. I learned about Milam. To think she has the skill of wrath it sadly makes sense. Dot. And this Magicule Breeder Reactor might as well try to replicate it. Altho, I should make some failsafes. Standing up, I stretch out. Okay, Ramorous, can you hear me? Do you need anything, baby? Hu hu dot I'm about to do a dangerous experiment with magic. Worst case scenario it kills me and Ultima. Can you make sure we don't get deleted from existence? Don't worry. As long as you two are in my labyrinth, I can bring you back. Not the most reassuring, but it's still a sure way to walk out of this place alive. Okay dot, let's do this. You said that by colliding magicules it can create more. Ultima looked giddy for some reason. Yes, my lady. I tried to recreate the effects of a Magicule Breeder Reactor before, but I never succeeded. Okay, let's try it with two Magicules. A resounding rumble echoed across the room. It didn't create too many Magicules, but they violently exploded everywhere. That was from two small Magicules. I need something to contain it a cassock. Get me the strongest barrier you can find. Answer. Utilizing unique skill. Magical Prodigy to learn extra skill, multi-layer barrier. Integrating multi-layer barrier into Magical Prodigy as a sub-skill. Okay, I need the strongest possible barrier you can put up to contain the Magicules I'm about to collide. Understood. Ultima you might want to stand back a little. This will be dangerous. Stepping even closer to me, she smiles at me innocently. Understood, Lady Vitandi. Hua don't blame me for what happens next. Let's see what happens when I smash a thousand Magicules against each other. Um, Ramrus flew around me, checking every inch she could see. I know you said you'll do something potentially dangerous, but what was that? You said the worst case scenario would be death. It killed both of you instantly. If it happened outside, you'd be the paint job over the dust that would be left behind from Tempest. I can't even argue with this assessment. I don't even know what happened. Our Ramrus, tell me young lady, what did you do? 
I feel like I'm 10 again, and the school called my mom that I beat up a kid. The scolding I got was horrible. I I was t-testing my new s skills. The agitated fairy just flew around angrily. What kind of skill did this? I I have a unique skill C called Witchmaster. I can see control M magicules with it fucking stutter. I'm an adult for fuck's sake, and she isn't my mom. I t tried to remake a M magicule breeder R reactor. I could feel her stare piercing into me, looking up into her eyes. I could see a mixture of shock pride, anger and worry. It was a look only a parent can give. She was speaking in an even, slightly disbelieving tone. You tried to remake Velda's skill please don't yell at me. I could see she was taking deep breaths. During the few seconds of reprieve, I took a look around and found Ultima standing to the side with a conflicted and guilty look on her face. Beretta was also standing nearby. Eventually, Ramra spoke up. That skill is dangerous, and you are far too weak and far too young to try anything with it. B but. No buts I I feel like I'm about to cry damn it. You are a grown ass woman. Don't d don't dot. I I'm sorry fuck. Stop crying. Ramrus's face softened as she hugged my face. I'm sorry I made you cry. But please understand. Everyone has a limit. You'll be stronger in the future. So don't try force your way through. It's not worth losing your life over it. I just nodded, sniffling and snuggling against Ramrus. It took a few minutes to calm down. But eventually I stopped crying. Come on, baby. Let's find Ramuru for you. You had enough practice for today. I let out a wet laugh at that. Does this mean you start to approve him? HMPF, I can see he is a good guy, but he needs to get stronger so he can protect you. Haha <laughs> thanks, mom. It was out before my mind caught up. Clamping my hands on my mouth was just a futile effort in trying to make it unhappen. Ramrus looked at me with those typical mom eyes full of happy sentimental tears. Beretta quietly observed and Ultima looked between us curiously. I I mean Ramrus. I meant to say Ramrus it just slipped out. Please forget I ever said that. She just flew into my face, crying. My baby called me mom I'm so happy wooa. I'm doomed. My life is about to end. Maybe I should try my luck with the reactor again. Ramuru's Pov. For a few hours now, I've been struggling to keep up with the whiplash of the enigma occupying our city. More commonly known as Milam. Spending time with the Dragonwood girl is an experience I'm not sure I ever encountered before. Or anyone for that matter. She is simultaneously the hyperactive little sister, wreaking havoc everywhere, and the teasing older sister that loves to pull your leg, by pretending to be oblivious. That is, if she doesn't show just how much life experience she has by being the smartest in the room, surprisingly. It's very mentally trying, but a lot of fun as well. If only she would spare the doors she encounters. Milam, please slow down a little. We've been running around town for hours. Wahahaha, you've been sleeping for days. This means you have to make up for the missed out fun times. Hua, can't we just have a break? You know. Sitting down and just relaxing in the shadow of a tree, enjoying the summer breeze. Shuna and Xion just laughed in the background. Where do you get all this energy? At least Shuna took pity on me. Lady Milam, how about we have our lunch outdoors? We have a wonderful place next to the canal. If you make the sandwiches, I'm okay with it. Let's go. Meet us there Shuna, Xion. I'll look for a nice spot. She picked me up and before I even had the chance to realize it, we landed next to the canal. You became really good with your landing. You didn't even leave a crater. Wahahaha. <laughs> of course, there is nothing I cannot learn. Restraining my strength is child's play for me. Then why do you destroy all the doors? Um, can you put me down? Nah, you look cute when I'm holding you. Now I only need Vitandi, and I could fly you two around. Please don't. I had the fortune of experiencing Milam's flying capabilities today. She just picked me up and made a whole circle around the entire forest of Jura. It was terrifying, amazing and a bit ridiculous. How can she fly this fast? Ooh, that spot looks comfortable. Running under a tree, she plopped down, still holding me. I tried to wiggle my way out by turning back to my slime form. But all that did was trap me even more. Happily humming to herself we just laid in the grass for a while. Eventually though, my mind came back to a question I had from the moment we met Milam. Hey Milam. Hmm. You know the other demon lords, right? Of course I do silly. I'm one of them. Right do you think I could beat Leon Cromwell? I made a promise and I intend to keep it. Leon? Hmm dot no, not yet. Maybe if you awaken as a demon lord, but now you are too weak. I see dot at least I know where we stand. Milam poked me to pay attention. Why do you ask? You wanna fight him? It's not that I want to I made a promise. My human form was a parting gift from a friend. She was summoned by Leon, then abandoned by him. I promised her I would make sure Leon acknowledged her. Hmm. You are a good guy, Ramuru. I can see why Vitandi loves you so much. 
He, thanks. I wonder how Vita is doing. Are you sure you two don't want to become demon wards? I'd even tell you how to awaken as a true demon ward. I'm sure we don't. What do you mean true demon ward? Are there demon wards that aren't actual demon wards? Wahahaha. <laughs> don't worry Ramuru. The great Milam Nava will teach you everything. Should I call you sensei? Wahahaha. <laughs> no need for that. You are my bestie. Of course I'll teach you. Hahaha. <laughs> ha. All right. Teach me oh great Milam. Hey hey hey, when it comes to demon wards, there are three possible meanings behind it. First, you are a member of the demon lord council. This means you have the title of a demon lord. Second, you are a demon lord seed. This means you have the potential to awaken as a true demon lord. A few guys among the ten are only demon lord seeds actually. Third, you awaken as a true demon lord, like me. By the way, you and Vitani are demon lord seeds. Wait, what? When did we become demon lord seeds? Probably when you defeated the orc lord not like it matters. As long as you don't proclaim yourselves as demon lords, you are just two really strong magins. I, I see is Leon a true demon lord? No, he isn't. He is a true hero. What's with the face? Rimuru are you okay? Milam started to look worried. What do you mean Dotty is a true hero? That's what he is. He is an otherworlder who received the blessing of spirits and managed to awaken as a true hero. Later, he killed a demon lord and took his place on the council. Leon Cromwell is a hero a true hero? How can a hero become a demon lord? Oi, Rimuru, she started shaking me around. Snap out of it. Wah, okay, okay, please stop shaking me. Why is it so shocking that he is a hero? What do you mean? Aren't heroes supposed to be the good guys? How did someone who was meant to be a savior of humanity commit so many atrocities? This doesn't make any sense. She just looked at me weirdly. Is this some misconception from your world? What? Rimuru. Anybody can become a demon lord if they can prove themselves to us. We have a fallen angel and the guardian of heaven tower among the ten. You I dot what? Milam hugged me closer. Don't think too hard about it. You are still a baby slime, all things considered. She gave a toothy grin. Just relax and enjoy life. Hey, I'm not a baby slime. While it's true I was reincarnated here about a year ago, I was 37 in my previous life. I'm a damn adult. Wahahaha. <laughs> even in your slime form, you are blushing like crazy. And even with your previous life, you are only 38. That's a baby compared to me. I'm not a blarg. Stop squishing me Milam stop. Is the baby feeling whiny? Let Milam give you a big hug. So that's how Vita feels with Ramrus. Milam please don't adopt me, like Ramrus did Vita. I don't think my sanity can deal with that. Wahahaha. <laughs> don't worry. I'm just messing with you. Thank God. But I wouldn't mind a baby brother. I could teach you so many things. What do you think? Vita, help. Vitania, Rimuru, are you okay? Milam just told me that I could be her little brother if I want. Vitani how on earth did you manage that? I don't know I was asking about demon lords, then I asked about Leon Cromwell. Then she told me he is a genuine, awakened true hero. I got confused. I learned there is an angel who is also a demon lord, and I don't know what's going on. Help! Vitani how can we end up with this much chaos? Every time we try to do our things, we are on our way. Stall for a few minutes. I'll try. So, what did Vitani say? Jaya I forgot you can tell when I'm talking to her. So, don't avoid my question. She she said she is on her way here. Maybe we should wait with this, and hopefully you will change your mind. Okay. Vitandi's pov. Suffering through the embarrassment of calling Ramrus mom was something I hoped would never happen. So much for keeping it as a trump card. I can't even stop the heat rushing to my face. Please just forget I said that. My baby called me mom. Walking towards the city was torture. Ramrus wouldn't shut up about being called mom. Beretta just hummed to her in response. Ultima didn't even pay attention to them. She just walked right next to me. I can't believe my life. How did I end up like this? It's not so bad, my lady. Having an ancient demon ward as your mother is quite astonishing. Not to mention she is the queen of spirits. Just what I would expect from my lady. Not you two at least my experimenting was a success. It's a shame I couldn't gain the reactor as a skill though. You have nothing to be ashamed of, Lady Vitandi. You are truly amazing. Even I couldn't remake the reactor, and I had millennia's to try. Wait a minute you knew this would happen. Ultima looked guilty. I, I didn't know what would happen for you. You have many skills meant for magic. I thought you might manage to do it. Hua, I can't really blame you. It was my idea. Let's just go. I can sense Ramuru and Milam near the canal. We were near the city entrance when I got a message from Ramuru. Hearing what happened stopped me in my tracks. Why can't we have a normal day? 
is everything okay, baby, please don't call me that, and I just talked to Ramuru, somehow, Milam came to the conclusion that she wants him as a little brother, all three looked at me like I grew a third tail, Ultima, the ever-present fangirl, gushed about us, to think my lady's mate would establish such close relations with the destroyer, please stop calling him my mate just call him my boyfriend or something, getting to Ramuru's spot, I could see him struggling to get free from Milam's hug. I don't think a nuke could make her loosen the grip she had. Vitandi. Hi, did you think about it? You two could be my little brother and sister. How did I get dragged into this? Ramuru she said she doesn't want to leave you out of the fun. Oh joy, I'm gonna be honest, Milam. I didn't think about it. I was lamenting that we can't have a normal day without chaos. Wahahaha, <laughs> but it's much more fun this way. Before we discuss this, can you give back my man? I'm in need of emotional support after today. Aw, oh, you two are so cute. You can't even be apart for a day. Yeah, yeah, give my slime. Snuggling Ramuru close to me, I sat down next to Milam. So what are you two doing here? We are having a picnic. Shuna and Xian will be here soon with food. MHM, I see. So what did you do today? I can see you got a new Unike skill. You can even see that? How overpowered is this girl? Wahahaha, <laughs> nothing can remain a secret from me. Yeah, I figured this much out on my own. I learned how to control magicules perfectly. Now I can use magic on the level of what did you call them Ultima? Archdemons, my lady. On that level. So yeah, it was a productive day. Ramaris, the little traitor, couldn't keep her trap shut. She also managed to kill herself and Ultima in an instant with one of her experiments. Before I had a chance to retort. I found myself on a human Ramuru's lap sporting a worried look. Are you okay? Does anything hurt? What happened? Hugging him I relax into his hold. I'm okay. Only my pride. I tried to recreate God's skill. Milam looked intrigued. My dad's? Which one? The Magicule Breeder Reactor. No wonder it killed you. My strongest attack with that can split the continent. Damn. Why do these super important higher beings want us in their family again? Ramuru beats me. I think my sanity got caught on one of the doors. Milam broke. If you want to get that skill, you'll have to become much stronger. At least an awakened demon lord. Alright, I'm done with today. Anything Ramuru decides is my answer to. Don't wake me up. Ramuru's pov. Oi, don't go sleeping on me. Oi, I'll get back at you for this. Ultima looked at Vita with a deep blush. If only she would use my body as a bed I could hear her mutter. Damn Vita, you did her in good. So whatcha say, Ramuru? Do you two want to form a familial pact with me? What does it do? We will be considered siblings by the voice of the world. We will share a familial soul quarter, which is one step down from the one you two have. We will also be able to share our strength. That would make you two stronger and speed up your growth. And we will be able to share some common and extra skills. I would mention the sub-skills of Unike skills, but I only have two, and they don't have sub-skills. What else? Hmm. Oh, BQs out of the three of us, I'm the strongest. If you two evolve it will have an effect on the results. I'm gonna circle back to the whole making us stronger thing in a minute. How will this affect our evolution? Something dragon related will be the result. I dunno, maybe a dragon slime and dragon nekamata? We will see. So she has no idea. How reassuring. And what do you mean we will be stronger? How does that work? To put it simply, I can give you magicules if you are running low, and vice versa but I can just make an infinite amount. I'm sorry, what? And because your souls will be linked to mine, they will adapt to my strength. You won't become as strong as me, that would take hundreds of years, but you'll be stronger faster. Is this really okay? Wouldn't that cause problems? The strongest of the demon lords suddenly adopting two siblings. I don't think your friends would be happy about it. Wahahaha, <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. I'll deal with them. If any of them has an issue, I'll just beat them up. This sounds way too good for us. I have a feeling if we say yes, it will bring a lot of headaches that are sure to snowball into a migraine, and you just forced yourself into sleep. Stupid cat, I hope you are prepared for what I'll give you for this. Ramrus just flew closer as she saw my worry. If it's any consolation, you have the support of two ancient demon lords. Milam and I are founding members of the Demon Lord Council. If we just tell them to leave you to be, it will be fine. Looking between the two and thinking about the pros and cons they are right. Having their support means we are almost untouchable. We could have our peaceful life set. Everyone would be happy. We wouldn't have to worry about potential threats. Tomorrow. I want to do this tomorrow. 
For today, we will have our picnic then put this lazy kitty into bed. Milam agreed without much hassle. Shuna and Xian brought a lot of sandwiches, and everyone had a good time. Ultima kept talking with Xian about how beautiful Vida is in her sleep. I caught the phrase sleeping goddess which, true, but these two will start a religion any day now. The others didn't really show that they mind which I found out at first, but then I remembered Milam's other title. Goddess of the Dragon Faithful. It must make sense to deify powerful beings in this world. The small fact that Vita and me are slowly getting there is a bit scary. Thinking about the future isn't any better. Even having the protection of two demon lords, there are eight others. And who knows what other powerful beings are out there. I know about two more true dragons. Apparently there are angels as well, and if one of them fell and became a demon lord, it's safe to assume there are an equal number of them as the demon lords. What else? There are five more primordial demons, and who knows what they are up to. There are a bunch of archdemons and greater demons that can rival us in strength. Honestly, there are still thousands of beings who can cause us grief, and we can't back out now. The demons probably took notice of us already. Two demon lords are living here, so their council is also probably looking at us. I don't know about the angels, but I have a feeling it's only a matter of time. The true dragons are a complete mystery, but seeing how Voldora is in my stomach, I really don't want to bet on their hospitality. We are kinda backed into a corner of our own making. Our only chance is to become stronger. We can't rely on Milam to protect us forever. Vita, you think you dodged a bullet here, but I'll make sure to get back at you tomorrow. Morning came and Vitandi was still asleep. Hope you are ready, because I finally figured out how to get back at you. Taking off her clothes, I reach down towards her pussy. Even like this, I can feel the heat it gives off, inviting me in. Gently palming it. I watch as she starts moaning and stirring from the unexpected pleasure. The foreplay goes on for minutes before she wakes up. Blinking at me sleepily she instinctively moves her hips against my hand. Ramiro Mornin, you know how to wake a lady. I just smirk a little and push in my middle finger slowly. She moans and tries to move closer, but I don't let her. Teasing her slowly, I see her fully waking up. I just keep up the tempo, not going either faster or slower. She is getting more restless every minute. NHN, Ramiro please harder. Ignoring her request I keep going slowly at it. Her eyes lock onto mine, and I can see the desperation growing. Giving back a smile, I lean forward and give her a soft kiss on her lips. She tries to go for more, but I pull back. Mewling in her intense lust, she tries to speed up her hips. Getting on top, I hold her down so she can't take control. Ever so slowly, ever so gently, I keep my finger moving. In, and out, in, and out, dot and out. MPF, Rimuru, please, I I can't take it anymore. Leaning down I kiss her, a proper kiss. Dancing across her mouth, I revel in her desperate moans. She keeps struggling against my hold, but can't focus on her strength. Vitandi Rimuru, I can't dot please, I want to coom. Laughing into her mouth, I pull back and stop my hand. Aren't you a little too greedy? You left everything to me yesterday as well. Bad kitty. Whispering into her twitching ear, I can feel her body shudder. Tell me, you lazy little kitty. How should I punish you? NHN, P please, I am sorry. Just, please make me coom. I was thinking about leaving you like this. No, please. She started rubbing against my hand as much as she could. Her walls desperately trying to keep me in. Please, I do anything. Give me some ideas. I feel a little lazy myself today. She quickly nodded and came up with an idea. Blushing deeply, but driven by lust she gave her suggestion. Throat fick me. PFT. How did you never figure out you are a bottom? Ha ha ha. Okay. Stay still. Releasing my hold on her she didn't move at all. Angling myself above her face I look at her dripping pussy. It just screams for an orgasm. You won't get it for now. Lining up against her mouth she opens wide and sticks her tongue out. Her hot breath runs across my dick as she pants heavily. Putting it in her mouth she starts licking it all around. Not bad, kitty. Not bad. But I'm gonna go deeper. I hope you are ready. Without waiting for a response I shoved my dick down her throat. All the way to the bottom. It's so good. I can feel your throat squeezing as you try to swallow. And you didn't gag. Am I correct you got rid of your gag reflex? Well, I'll take this few quick swallows as a yes. Are you ready for more? Bobbing her head a bit as my K. I start relentlessly fucking her throat. I can feel my balls slapping against her nose. Leaning down into a 69 position, I blew on her twitching pussy. Oh, do you want me to take care of it? Her answer was a few desperate moans that escaped from her mouth, slowly licking along her clit and pussy lips. I see her body shaking. You want it this bad. 
huh? Pushing in one finger, her inner walls cling to it tightly. Not yet. Pushing in another finger she tries to move, but I don't let her. That's two fingers from one hand. Now for the other, pushing in a third finger. Her mewling gets stronger, which feels incredible on my dick. As I push in a fourth finger, I can feel myself getting closer as well. Speeding up, I coom down her throat. Every last drop is swallowed. Pulling everything out, I pick her up and put her on my lap. Her soft little ass cheeks pressing onto my heart erection. So tell me kitty kitty. Barely ghosting my hand across her pussy, I ask. Do you think you deserve to coom? She tries to talk, but what comes out is more of a whine than anything. I still pick out the important stuff. NGH. Ryram Yuru put dot in hard. Please. Biting into her ear, I shove it into her drenched entrance in one swift move. She mules loudly, gasping for air from the long-awaited penetration. I feel quite good now, so I will make you feel good too. Pushing her down into the bed, slamming my cock in and out of Vitandi's pussy. She comes in seconds. Wow, you really were close to it. It must have been horrible to endure it. Going harder, I caress her face. I'll make you coom so hard, you won't know how to walk. What followed was an hour of non-stop jackhammering into Vitandi. By the end of it, my ears were ringing from the bells on her collar. For the last round, a little extra teasing was warranted. As for a little extra punishment, I'll tell you something. From the amount of magicules, your collar will ring for another three hours or so. Everyone will hear the aftermath of this morning. When Vita heard that, she squirted so hard it sprayed everywhere. Cooming inside her one last time, I pulled out slowly and sent some more on her back. So what do you think? Should we have breakfast with Milam? Nay nay ya. Haha. I'll take that as a yes. I'll clean us up and we can go. Arriving at City Hall, I went to look for Milam. Vitandi was in her cat form, nestled in my arms, her collar proudly ringing, earning a few confused stares from the people we met on the way. Milam was getting ready for breakfast when we entered the dining hall. Good morning Milam. Rimuru, Vitandi. Good morning. Sitting down next to her she looked at us a little curiously. She looked at me, then at Vita, then at the ringing collar. A toothy grin spread across her face and leaned forward. Nice collar you got there, Vitandi. Even in cat form, she glared daggers at Milam. Wahahaha, you two really are young, spending your mornings like that. Hahaha, I have no idea what you are talking about. Sure you don't, Rimuru. Sure you don't. Giving her my most innocent smile, I reply. I don't know, really. Perhaps you should ask Vita. She might know what you are talking about. Vitandi, I am going to bite you. Don't threaten me with a good time. Vita looked into my eyes. I could see the scales tipping back and forth as she taught about it. She came to a conclusion, because she reached up and bit into my neck. Wahahaha, it seems she decided to fight back. Hahaha, ha, ha. well, she kinda earned it, but enough teasing Vita. We have something to do today, don't we, Milam? Great Sage, send a copy of what we talked about yesterday to Vitandi. Notice, information has been sent. Vita perked up a little, before releasing my neck and looking at Milam. Are you sure? I don't want to sound rude or anything, but we kinda only recently met. Wahahaha, ha, ha, ha. I'm sure. I feel like I've known you for years. My instincts are always right. I just know that this is the right thing to do. In that case, we accept. Giving her a big smile, I finish. Big sis. Milam blushed happily at the sound of that. Haha, <laughs> just call me Milam. Being called big sis feels weird. Notice alert. Familial pact has been formed with individual Milam Nava. Establishing soul corridor. Thought communication through soul corridor is now possible with Milam Nava. Magicule link has been established. Beginning analysis on new magicule source. Through the soul corridor, the available skills have been shared. Familial pact is complete. The individuals Ramuru Tempest Vitandi Tempest and Milam Nava are now acknowledged as siblings by the voice of the world. Why didn't we get a notification when we did this with Voldora, or when we entered our soul union? Notice answer. At that time, sufficient information was unavailable. Vitandi wow. Even Akasic feels embarrassed by that. Answer. Vitandi don't even try. Understood. Wahahaha. Now we are siblings. And wow. Just how many skills do you have? I just got like 40. I guess is a lot. My skill allows me to learn things by analyzing stuff. I defeated a bunch of monsters before, and I saw a lot of other skills too. Vitandi also gave an explanation. I have a skill that can teach me magic and magic-related skills. Wahahaha. <laughs> My little brother and sister are really amazing. You'll be amazing demon lords once you awaken. 
Speaking of, how exactly does this awakening happens? Giving us a grin, Milam shook her head. That's a secret for now. First, you guys should become stronger. I'll help you train. Vita didn't like the sound of that. Um, I don't think. Just give up, Vita. Milam is already training some of our fighters. Wahahaha. <laughs> don't worry, you two. You'll be in good hands. Vitandi, you know. I would have liked to have a kid before I die. It's not like she can't hold back. Gobda's been growing stronger than ever. He can spar with Milam for six whole minutes now. Vitani Gobta is obviously a main character. We are just the op rulers in the background. You two can flirt later. Let's go. To the labyrinth. Huh, aren't we going training? Vitani oh no. What? Wahahaha. <laughs> Ramrus can bring you two back if you accidentally die. It's the perfect place for training. We are about to become main characters ourselves. Vitandi oh joy. Vitandi's pov. Looking back on my life, or I should say, lives, I have many regrets. Summoning Diablo and Ultima is one of them. Diablo, sporting his demon smile, spoke reassuringly. Just leave your administrative duties to us. Ultima also echoed his answer. We will take care of everything, my lady. You and Lord Ramuru can train to your heart's content. That was two weeks ago. We only left the labyrinth to sleep and sometimes eat. The rest was spent with Milam. And let me tell you something. I know now why she is called the Destroyer. Laying on the ground in a starfish pose, I stared at the ceiling, contemplating the pros and cons of running the fuck away from this continent to another. Answer. The only other continent in this world is the frozen continent. The domain of the big bad demon lord. I'm trapped. Why did I say yes to this? Ramuru the same reason I did. We didn't really have a choice. Milam was way too excited about this. Speaking of. Wahahaha. <laughs> you two are getting better. I don't feel it. Milam picked me up and threw me across the room, landing on Ramuru with a thud. Just ask your skills. They should know. At the beginning of our hell, because I ain't calling this training, we told each other everything about our skills. Milam didn't have too many, not counting the ones we shared with her. And we told her about our talking skills. She was shocked, because apparently there was never a skill like ours before. But she moved on quickly after introducing her to Akasic Records and Great Sage. So Akasic, what's the verdict? Answer. From the intense training you went through with the individual, Milam Nava, your magicule count has went up 267%. Rimuru Tempest's magicule count went up 298%. What did he do to beat me this much? Rimuru I'm a slime. My main species trait is eating magicules. So you have an advantage over me in that regard. Rimuru you have an advantage with magic and skills. I need samples to get new ones, you can just ask for it. You have degenerate. You can just concoct new skills like a chimera. I need to puzzle them together. Rimuru I ran out of variations. So what did they say? Right, Milam. I'm two and a half times stronger. Rimuru is three times stronger. See, you two are doing amazing. Say, Milam, how strong are you? I mean, full strength. Wahahaha. <laughs> You'll find out once you are strong enough. For now, I don't even have to take on my true form. Of course. Why wouldn't you have a true form? Rimuru tried to get at least a semblance of info out of her. And how strong are you in this form? Compared to us. I'll show you. Come on, get up. Oh yeah. I got comfortable on Rimuru. Standing up, we faced Milam. Bracing ourselves. We are ready. All right, here it goes. Her aura bursted out, putting a tremendous pressure on us. We could barely stand. Akasic? Answer. Individual Milam Nava's currently displayed strength is approximately 6,000% your own. What the fuck? You are still 60 times stronger than us? She concealed her aura again, making us collapse from the sudden absence of pressure. Ramuru whined from next to me. How are we supposed to get close to that? You are not even in your full strength form. Wahahaha. <laughs> Don't get discouraged. Awakening as a true demon lord will multiply your strength many times. So before that, I'll make sure you two are as strong as possible. Oi. Ramuru, you are melting into a puddle. Just let me flow away how strong do you plan to make us? Milam looked contemplative for a few seconds. I'd say ten times stronger than you two originally were. We haven't even reached the first third of this training? Our dragonoid big sister scooped up Ramuru. Don't be so whiny. You two are doing great. Once you reach the right level, I'll tell you how to awaken. Maybe I'll even help you with the conditions. Turning back into a cat, I jumped onto Milam's head. How long will that take? Hmm, you two are growing really fast. Faster than I imagined to be honest, a few months. But I might have to go and do some work before I can help you awaken. Right, I forgot you are a demon lord. Makes sense you have work to do how about we take a break? Have a big lunch or dinner or whatever time it is. Then take a long bath. Wahahaha, <laughs> sounds good. Let's go. 
One helpful thing from this hell was the fact that I could withstand Milam's speed better. It didn't make the experience any less frightening, but it made my life easier. She flew us back to the city, and I wholly prepared to convince her about taking the rest of the day off. But, it wouldn't be our lives if things went as planned. Along one of the main roads, a commotion caught our attention. Rushing there we found Rigard on the ground. What happened to your face? Throwing a healing potion at him. I watched as the missing part of his face recovered. Ho, oh, that's some impressive potion you got there. A lycanthrop walked towards us. He had two more with him, but they stayed behind. Seething with anger, I stepped forward. Did you do this to him? Ignoring me, he just talked. Where did you get that potion? Answer me, you filth. Did you do this to him? His face contorted with anger. What did you just call me? I'm gonna bash your head in more than that weak goblins. Not waiting for more, I smashed his face into the ground and for good measure, broke his arms. So it was you. He struggled to get up, but stomping on his head, I held him down. Give me one good reason why I shouldn't kill you right now. GNH, you bitch. Demon Lord Carrion will. Milam stepped in. He won't do anything. Phobio. Not unless he wants to die. Turning towards her, I ask, you know this mongrel? What did you? Silencing him by stomping on his head again, I growl. You'll speak when I let you. You hurt my people, you don't get to act all high and mighty. Why the fuck, can't we have a peaceful life so? Who is this? His name is Phobio. He is one of Demon Lord Carrion's top three officers. So a fucking Demon Lord started moving. And what would happen if I killed this bastard? Instead of answering, Milam lifted me up and put me into Ramuru's arms. First, you should calm down. Let's ask Phobio what's he doing here. Phobio struggled to his feet. Looking up he finally realized who saved his sorry ass. D Demon Lord Milam WH what are you doing here? It's none of your business. You'll tell us why did Carrion sent you here. TCH, why should I? Milam punched him into the ground, hard. Because the leaders of this city are my friends, and you hurt their subordinate, and tried to attack one of them. If you don't want me to take this out on Carrion, speak. Seeing Milam this quietly pissed on our behalf helped me calm down. Rimuru better? A little. Rimuru can I put you down? Without you trying to kill this cat Thingy what is he? A lycanthrop. Basically animal people. Rimuru I know that. I was wondering what kind of animal is he. I think he is some big cat. Like a puma? Rimuru yeah, that's the one. Okay, I'm good now. Can I leave the peaceful part of the talk to you? Rimuru of course. Rimuru's pov. Relocating to one of the meeting halls. I opened the talks because I was the only one present who didn't want to commit murder today. We healed up Phobio so he can talk properly. So tell me, Phobio. Why are you here? Who the hell are? Releasing my aura. Which by the way, got three times stronger than it was two weeks ago. I shut him up quickly. Let's try this again. Why are you here, Phobio? I could see him grinding his teeth. Demon Lord Carrion sent us to investigate the Magins who beat the Orc Lord. Then why did you attack my subordinate and proclaim to put my city under Carrion? TCH, I see. So you are just an idiot. I put more pressure into my aura to keep him quiet. Here's what will happen. You get out of our nation. You go back to Demon Lord Carrion. And you tell him that if he wants to have friendly relations with us, he can send an envoy who isn't you. If he doesn't want to have anything to do with us, that's also okay with me. And if he wants war, well, Milam stood behind me menacingly. He can take that up with me. These guys are my allies and close friends. If Carrion attacks them, he attacks me. You hurt her, Altho, I doubt you would ever get to her. You are not strong enough. He look like he will burst a vein soon. Milam sent them off with one last warning. Tell Carrion he should pay more attention to his subordinates. Idiots like you can cause wars. Fuming, Phobio and his gang left, all the while glaring at Milam. Deflating from this encounter, I felt Vitani hug me form the next seat. Hopefully that was the end of this bullshit. No kidding. Milam, are you sure that was a good idea? You just threatened a demon lord. Wahahaha, you did too. Yes, but I'm not a demon lord. You on the other hand are. Didn't you tell me there is a non-aggression pact between the demon lords? She just grinned at me, and I didn't break it. I merely gave a warning, that if he should attack this place, he would be breaking the pact. Meaning, I can kill him, but I doubt Carrion would do that. He is a good guy and not stupid. Hmm, you know him well? Yeah, I was one of the people who recommended him into the Demon Lord Council. He will probably lecture Phobio really hard then come here to apologize. Vita hummed calmly from hearing that. So he just has an idiot among his people. Pretty much. Then we don't have to worry about anything. Awesome. In that case, let's end this meeting and eat finally. 
Vitandi jumped up happily. Shuna, we are cooking today. I feel like something spicy is what we need. Shuna also got excited. Yes, my lady, we should make a stew. Well, today didn't end in disaster, and the promise of food made Milam forget about going back to the labyrinth for now. Let's hope the pea stays. Vitandi, I swear, if you jinxed us, relax. What could go wrong? A week has passed since we had the fortune of meeting Phobio. Vitandi fumed a little about letting him go just like that, but she calmed down after a while. We resumed our training with Milam. It feels like cheating and is probably cheating, but thanks to our familial pact, every time we get exhausted, she just recharges us with magicules. It has the benefit of nine non-stop training and artificially expanding our own strength. The first two weeks made us almost three times stronger, and with another week we reached the four times mark. Luckily for us, we managed to convince Milam to have three break days a week, so we can rest and just be present in the city's life. At present, me and Vita were laying on the rooftop of City Hall. I don't know why we are laying here, but Vita wanted to come up here. So we are having a nap, or at least, we wanted to have a nap, but our luck was left behind God knows where. Sawe appeared next to me in a kneeling position. My lord and lady, a dryad has visited us with an emergency. Vitandi relax, what could go wrong, right? I know that we are coming. Following Sawe, we went to a meeting room where one of Trainee's sister was waiting. There was a weird Arua clinging to her. The other executives were already here, along with Milam. Um, Trya, right? What's up with the scary presence? Lord Ramuru, Lady Vitandi. I bring grave news. Charidus has resurrected. The others had grim looks on their faces. Except Milam, who just smiled. What's Charibdis? The others explained that Charibdis is a Calamity-class monster who was born from a cloud of magicules of the storm dragon, Voldora. Its strength is actually disaster-class, but because it doesn't have the mind to think properly it's only a Calamity. Vitandi looked at me with an obvious conclusion on her face. Yeah, I'm thinking the same. There's a chance it's coming for us. Or, at the very least, me. I understand. Vesta, contact King Gazel and tell him what's going on. Diablo, Ultima. I want you two to protect the city and its people. If we can't stop it, I'm trusting you to guard everyone. Benamaru, you are leading our troops. While you guys deal with the Megalodons, Vita and I will deal with Charybdis. Understood. Milam jumped up excitedly. What about me? I honestly forgot we have you as an option. But Vitandi disagreed with me on that. You are sitting this one out for now. What? Come on Vitandi, don't be so mean. I'm not being mean. You've been training me and Ramuru for weeks. Charybdis is a perfect chance to see how strong we are in action. And before you even try your big puppy eyes, if it looks like we can't do it, we'll ask for help. I'm starting to feel like you are also becoming a battle maniac. Vitandi blame Milam. The mentioned demon lord pouted in the corner for being left out. It's a heavy contrast to her strength, that's for sure. Everybody got ready, and we even got help from Dwargan in the form of hundred Pegasus knights, led by Gazel himself. His right hand, I think his name is Dord, didn't look too happy about it. Vitandi greeted Gazel in her usual. Let's see how much I can piss off his knight style. Yo, Gazel, glad you could make it. I bet you are getting tingly to fight a real monster, like the maniac you are. Ha 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 ha, I admit, I am excited. But Dord here really wanted me to sit this one out. You two seem significantly stronger than before. Have you been training? That stopped Vita in her tracks. Let's try to push this off as much as we can. Ha ha ha, you have a really good eye for this, King Gazel. We can talk about this after we defeated Charybdis. His gaze told me, he knows we are hiding something. Very well, I'm really curious about how you two managed to multiply your power in such a short time. Vitandi wait till he sees the multiple demon lords and primordials. Didn't Vesta report it to him? Vitandi he asked if he should report it or not, so I told him no. It's kind of a big deal. I guess you are right. We reached Charybdis's location and got ready. Gazel and Benimeru took on leading their combined troops. Me and Vita were getting ready for our queue. And Milam was sulking under a nearby tree. You've been fighting us for three weeks. When is it enough? Vitandi she has to hold back against us tremendously. Yeah, I get it. Seeing giant flying sharks being destroyed was not something I expected to do in this life. But our guys are doing great. The Pegasus Knights took down one. Benimeru incinerated another. Gabiru and Geld comboed one. Sawe and his gang took control of one and killed another. Hakuro made sashimi. Shion and Ranga took down two. When did they team up? Benimeru fried another. Hakuro killed one more. Geld and Gabiru just discovered their tag team. Nice. At this rate we will be home by dinner. 
Keep it up, guys. Two more to go before the boss. Vitandi. Vitandi. Hmm. Am I seeing that right? Vitandi what? Look at Gobta and the Goblin Riders. Vitandi what the fuck? Great Sage, what am I looking at? Notice. The individual, Gobta is using a unique skill. You are observing the skill in action. When did Gobta obtain a unique skill? He didn't have one three weeks ago. Vitandi next to me was just as flabbergasted. He is the main character. Gazel observed the fight, and he also complimented it. That subordinate of yours is really something. And he has a unique skill? Impressive. Just impressive did you see the same thing? A few minutes prior. Gobta's pov. Crap, 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 crap. Why did I end up in this situation? This fish is scary we are doing decent damage. But it's not going down. Crap I don't want to die by a stupid fish. Dodging a sudden bite from the Megalodon, I tried to cut into its brain through its eye, but I only managed to blind it. God damn it, if only I was stronger. I've been training with Lady Millum and everything. Come on, think. There has to be a way to beat this overgrown fish. You can do this, you can do this do it with Gobda style. Notice. Unique skill, Gobda style has been acquired. That that was the voice of the world. I got a unique skill. Let's go I suddenly know how to use it in everything. Woohoo I'm not gonna die today. Activating my unique skill, I feel myself getting faster, stronger, and even my thinking and reflexes became better. Taking a sharp turn myself, I jumped above the megalodon and slashed along its back. Its fin clipped me in the shoulder, but I barely felt it, and it healed almost instantly, without stopping. I kicked it into the ground, and with a spin I cut open its neck. Do fishes have necks? It struggled in vain. Ha ha ha, you never stood a chance against the great Gopta, captain of the goblin riders, Vitandi's Pav. Achaic, what kind of skill did he get? Answer, the individual, Gopta has obtained the unique skill, Gopta style. What the fuck I knew he had potential but this, is beyond any of my expectations. He got a unique skill named after him. I'm just gonna move on. Yeah, hey Vita, the Megalodons are down. Okay, Vitandi, focus, alright, let's do this. Now that I think about it, this is our first fight that we might not be able to win. It's true that we have a trump card, but still, it's kind of exciting. Rimuru as much as I hate to admit it, I kinda agree. Alright, give the order to fall back, and we will prepare dinner. Rimuru called back everyone, and we got ready for the main course. Those who could fire off long-distance attacks, pelted it from below. Rimuru made a D-ray out of black lightning, while eating all the scales Charybdis shot at us with gluttony. I had more chance to damage it, because using Witchmaster, I could work around its magic jamming. I made a new spell, just for this. Who knows, it might even damage Milam. Recently I learned one of the strongest destructive spells, Nuclear Cannon. As the name suggests, it's a ridiculously powerful fire spell. But since I can control magic to my whim, I modified it, keeping everything the same, except the affinity. Forcing lightning into the spell, I made a really op attack. Charging it up, I could feel the air crackling around me. This fish is big, so let's give it a big one. Plasma storm. A monstrous boom. Echoed across the sky as my spell hit Charybdis, right in its eye. It wasn't regular plasma, despite its name. It worked just like nuclear cannon. Fire it, and it explodes where you aimed. But giving an extra affinity will also spread it with the same force as the fire. Only, in a way the added element would work on its own. Charybdis roared in pain and started flailing. Take this you Jurassic reject. Not giving it a chance to recover, I shot another one. Dead center. Rimuru. Aim for the eye. Got it. He aimed his D-thray, and we started bombarding it with everything we got. I could see the damage we did was huge, but its regeneration was keeping up. Rimuru, we might be at a stalemate. Rimuru great sage, how long will this take? Notice. Keeping up the amount of damage Quiribdis is receiving, it will take 16 hours to completely destroy it. And we were so cool and everything. That's not fair. Rimuru think about the upsides. We definitely became stronger. We are holding back a monster like this. How many people can say that? About a dozen or so. Rimuru exactly. We are awesome. You are right let's just get this over with. I'll call Milam here. Mimi dot Milam dot. Did Charybdis talk? A cassock? Answer. It seems the body, Charybdis inhabited as its host, is feeling an immense amount of rage. Vitandi oi, Milam, Charybdis is mad at you. It wants to fight you for some reason. Milam wa, Vitandi did you fall asleep? Milam of course not. I was merely resting my eyes. Wahahaha. Vitandi sure. So can you deal with this? 
Milam be right there. Milam rocketed to us in moments, staring at Charybdis curiously, she hummed to herself. No wonder it's coming for me. It took over Phobio as its host. What? The asshole who attacked Rigard? How the hell did Phobio ended up as its host? Wahahaha. We can ask him. Once I blew away Charybdis, just sit back and watch how much restraint I have. Akasic? Answer. Attack cannot be analyzed. Energy cannot be analyzed. Magnitude cannot be analyzed. We watched as Milam charged up something, then held her hand out in Drago Buster. About two dozen blue energy missiles flew towards Charybdis, resulting in an earth-shattering explosion that split the clouds and incinerated every last speck of the superfish, safe for the body of Phobio. I ain't catching him. Rimuru flew towards his falling body, catching him and going down to a clearing. Everyone gathered around there and watched as Rimuru basically performed surgery with gluttony, removing and eating Charybdis's core for good. A quick potion later and now we only had to wait for the idiot to wake up. In the meantime, Gazel had some questions. Tell me, what kind of weapon did you use to do this? It must be a new experiment from Vesta and Cajun. Oof. Gazel, please take a deep breath. He looked at me confused. What do you? Just do it. Take a deep breath. And out. Good. Gazel. Pointing at our resident Dragonoid, I just ripped off the band-aid. Meet the one and only Dragonoid in existence, the destroyer, Demon Lord Milam Nava. Her appearance is deceiving, but believe me, it's her. Milam grinned at him. I could see the gears turning in overdrive. Looking at Rimuru for confirmation, he just nodded. Turning back towards me, he spoke in an even tone. Explain. It's not that complicated. Milam came to check us out. We became besties. And now she lives here. She is also training me and Ramuru. That's why we became so strong. In the background I could see Dord looking back and forth between Milam and us. Eventually, Gazel compassed himself. You two are so out of the ordinary that I doubt the word crazy will suffice. Rimuru snorted quietly behind me. Wait till you meet the other demon lord. Gazel froze, slowly turning his head towards Rimuru, his neck cracked. It was hilarious. I think I heard you wrong. Nope, you heard him right. The labyrinth demon lord Ramorus also moved into Tempest. A metallic thud indicated that Dord has fainted. You have two ancient demon lords living in Tempest. Just a bit more. This is fun. Rimuru don't be mean. But I enjoy it. Wait till you hear the rest. There is more. My face started to hurt from grinning too widely. Don't worry. It's not that big of a deal. Taking a few deep breaths, he somewhat compassed himself. Just what were you two up to? Nothing much. We learned how to summon demons. Please tell me you don't have dozens of archdemons guarding the city or something of the sort. Ha 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 ha, of course not. We only have three demons. Gazel sighed and just shook his head. What level? And did you name them? Yes, we named all three of them. One is a greater demon. He could easily see from my grin, I was about to drop something big. Let me guess. The other two are archdemons. Ha 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 no. They are primordials Ramuru summoned the black one, and I summoned the purple one. He, what do you think? I'm going home. I need a drink. Turning around he picked up Dord and left. I just rolled around on the floor, laughing my ass off. That was awesome. Ha, huh, I feel much better. After a while, Phobio began to stir. Sitting up, he looked around confused. When he looked at us he seemed to recall what happened, because he immediately prostrated himself. Please accept my apology. This happened because of me. Lord Carrion had nothing to do with it. If you wish to punish someone, let it be me. All right, Emma deal with this. Rimuru, wait. I won't kill him. Phobio, right? He looked up at me, bringing back my hand. I slammed him into the ground. You are forgiven. Explain it to the Dryads how on earth did you end up with Charybdis then be on your way. He told us about some clown masked magins who tricked him into this. He even admitted that he knew it was a bad idea, but did it anyways. From the masks he drew in the dirt, we also found out that they were the same magins who attacked Benamaru's village with the orcs. Okay, Charybdis is gone. The idiot was saved. I want this day to end. Phobio, have a safe journey back home. Don't accept candy from strangers. B, but. Wahahaha, the issue has been dealt with. What do you think, Carrion? A very big lycanthrop walked out of the tree line. If I were to imagine a beast king, I would picture him. So you knew I was here, huh? Of course I did. Carrion turned towards us, sizing us up with his eyes. So you two are the magins who dealt with the orc lord. Thanks for sparing my stupid subordinate. I owe you one. Oh really? Then how about a friendly relation between our nations? That would be the best. Whatcha think, Rimuru? Sound good. We will start with a non-aggression treaty. The rest can be worked out later. The Beast King looked surprised. That's all. Very well. I swear on my name as the King of Eurasania, Beastmaster Carrion, to treat Tempest as a friend and never attack them. 
He's got a cool title. Everyone has a cool title. I want a cool title. Ramiro, these things come from other people. You can only hope for the best. Okay, now that we dealt with everything for good, we are going back to the city and party until dawn. I want to eat and drink till I pass out. Bye, Carrion. Take care of your puma. I didn't hear it, but Phobio muttered under his breath. I'm a leopard. And so, our calamity ended with a festival of seafood. These megalodons are fucking tasty. Now there is only one thing left to address today. Looking around, I found my target. Yo, Gobta, congrats on getting a unique skill. What happened? Oh, Lady Vitandi. Thanks, I dunno really. I was fighting for my life, and when I tried to hype myself up, I just got the skill. So he had a protagonist moment. Good for you, but don't slack off on training. Ha ha ha, don't worry, I doubt the old man would let me. Ho ho, and who are you calling old man? Wah, I forgot Hakiru can hide his presence entirely. Ah, master, hi, I I didn't call you an old man, definitely not. Lady Vitandi can tell you. I mean this would be funny to watch. But Gobta earned some rest, you can let him off the hook for tonight. He worked hard enough to earn it. Sheeting his sword, Hakiru hummed in response. If my lady believes so, just this once, you are spared. Woohoo come on Gobzo. Grabbing his friend, he bailed. Run before the old man makes up his mind. An audible smack resounded from my facipum. I ain't saving him from this. He should have waited until he was out of earshot. Have fun, Hakiru. Oh, I will. Some people say that Gobta's screams still echo across the training fields. Xian's Pav. Today is the day, I said enthusiastically to myself. I've been training under Lady Vitandi's guiding hand for months now. And on this day, I'll show her just how much I grew. Proudly walking towards the right wing of City Hall, I met with Shuna on my way. Ah, Xian. Good morning. Giving back a smile, I greet her as well. Good morning, princess. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. You seem to be more energetic than usual. Did something good happen? Shuna gave a mischievous smile. Perhaps you met a fine young warrior? Shuna is always like this. Thinking about love and all that. Nobody here is strong enough to catch my attention aside from our lord and lady. And I really don't feel like I want someone at present. Focusing on my goal though, my smile returned full force. But something good will happen today. Shuna looked excited at that. Ooh, tell me. Ha ha ha, today I'll show Lady Vitandi how much I learned. I'll make her approve. Shuna's eyes widened. You mean? Yes, would you like to see it for yourself? She looked contemplative for a few seconds, but eventually nodded. Yes, I would like to. Then let's go. The two of us strided towards our destination, where Lady Vitandi was already waiting for us in her human form. Good morning girls, it's nice to see you too. Shuna gave a polite bow and smiled at her. Good morning Lady Vitandi. Good morning my lady, I hope you are ready. Lady Vitandi chuckled a little, sporting a challenging grin. I should be telling you that. I won't hold back anything. If you are not up to par, I'll crush you without hesitation. Grinning myself, I couldn't help but retort in kind. Like I said, I hope you are ready. Lady Vitandi gave an approving nod and opened the door behind her, beckoning me and Shuna in. Stepping through, I could see that everything was ready for me. Lady Vitandi sat down on a chair at a nearby table, Shuna following her lead, gesturing for me to start. Today, I won't be judging your speed at all, so take your time. Nodding back, I stepped up to the counter and grabbed a knife. Taking a deep breath I focused on my task. Okay Xian, you can do this. Time to make use of everything you learned. Today, you will prove that you can cook delicious meals. Looking across the ingredients, I decided what to make. A stew will be the perfect dish. Different vegetables and meat, all having a different cooking time. It will show my knowledge. I started dicing up the vegetables at first, turning them into bite-sized pieces. Sometimes I still struggled with holding back my strength. But Lady Vitandi is an excellent teacher. Patiently cutting and sorting everything onto a different plate, I move on to the meats. Cutting them takes a bit more time, because it's so soft that I always have to watch how strong is my knife stroke few. All diced up and not a single cutting board in pieces. Time for cooking. Getting a pot, I pour some oil in and put it on the stove. Seasoning the meat, I got everything ready. First the meat, let it fry for a while. Keep stirring, so it doesn't burn somewhere. Slowly add in the veggies. Stir and fry for a while. Pour some water in. Keep stirring. Taste test. MHM, it's good. Turning of the heat. I serve a plate to Lady Vitandi and Shuna. Giving a satisfied smile. I happily exclaim. Try it. Both of them look pleased with the appearance. Lady Vitandi said that food has to look good, not just taste good. To make a good meal, it needs good teamwork of taste and looks. They picked up their spoons and took their first bite. I was feeling excited. What will it be? 
Lady Vitandi chewed slowly, savoring the taste before swallowing it. She gave some thoughtful hums before she spoke. Xian. Yes, Lady Vitandi. Is it good? I'm a bit nervous. Lady Vitandi looked me in the eyes. Good job. You pass. Yes, I did it. Woo. Shuna also complimented me. Congratulations, Xian. You worked really hard to accomplish this. Shuna is right. Lady Vitandi gave me a head pat as she smiled happily. I'm proud of you. I felt incredibly happy hearing those words. Giggling like a little girl, I enjoyed the praise. She continued with an idea. How about we surprise the others? You will be the head chef for today. Once the others are eating, we reveal it was your cooking. I'd be honored, Lady Vitandi. Later that day, Lord Ramuru and everyone were gathered in the dining room, eating their lunch while chatting about how their day went so far. After they finished, Lady Vitandi stood up and clapped her hands to gather everyone's attention. Before you go back to your duties, I'd like to ask you how did you find your meal? We have a new aspiring chef, and she is very eager for feedback. Everyone replied positively. Lord Ramuru, it was really good. You thought the cooks well. Rigored indeed. It was a savory meal. Hakiru, MHM. It was delicious. Sawe, I enjoyed it. Benamaru, I think I'll take some with me for later. Lady Vitandi happily exclaimed. You heard them, Xian. Everybody enjoyed your meal. They looked stunned, slowly looking at me. Benamaru Vosita's question. Xian cooked this? I stood proudly. Yes, I did. I've been training under Lady Vitandi for months. They looked properly shocked. Suddenly Benamaru stood up and started clapping, followed by the other kitchens. Congratulations, HMPF. Of course, there is nothing I can't do. Unbeknownst to Xian, her brethren was internally crying tears of joy. The curse has been lifted. We will live. Our lady is truly a goddess. With those thoughts, they went back to work with the knowledge that they won't have to gain poison resistance to live through Xian's and Devair's in the kitchen anymore. A beautiful day indeed. Hakiru's Pav. Today is a beautiful day. The sun shines bright high in the sky, a few white clouds leisurely crawling across the endless blue. A gentle breeze brings forth the scent of wilderness permeating from the forest. Birds are singing across the canopy, calling for their brethren to join them on this lovely day. Some critters skitter under the bushes nearby, observing us with their simple mind. What truly completes this idyllic scenery is the painful groans of my foolish disciples, scattered across the training grounds, laying on their backs, breathing heavily and trying to lessen the stung of their freshly forming bruises. All, except one. Ho ho, you are becoming more and more refined each day, but tell me, do you truly think you can defeat me? It might be a rhetorical question, seeing he is still far too green to compete against me. No pun intended, as Lord Ramuru would say, but it serves its purpose in riling him up. Ha dot ha don't think I'll give up dot that easily dot the brave captain of the goblin riders. Gobta responded among heavy breaths, clutching his wooden sword. He gave a toothy grin to accompany his retort. It's high time you retire old man. Ha, this brat it looks like I've been too easy on you. I held back in order to not overwhelm your men getting into my stance. I can see he readies himself as well. But now it's only you and me I couldn't help the smirk that crept on my face. Let's see if your sword is as sharp as your townge, my foolish student. Hiding my presence I dash across the field, aiming my wooden sword at his neck from behind him. Gobda ducked under the swing and turned on his heel, while making an upward slash aiming for my chin. Stepping back I bring my sword down, but he uses his momentum to roll away. Dashing at him once more I thrust at his stomach, making him jump to the side. Slashing after him he jumps over my blade swinging his own towards the right side of my neck. Bringing my sword up to block, he aims a kick with his left leg. Catsing his leg he twists around in my hold, landing a hit with the hilt of his sword on my head. Throwing him across the ground he rolls to a stop and stands up. I, I landed a hit. HMPH. Yes, yes you did my student. It seems miracles do happen. Gobda stood still for a few seconds before jumping up with enthusiasm. I landed a hit. I landed a hit. Yeah, baby. Woohoo. The other goblins were all cheering on their leader. For months now, none of them managed to land a hit on their teacher. But their leader did it, showing just how awesome he is. Giving a chuckle in return I ready my sword once more. Once, an accident. Twice, a coincidence. Three times, a pattern. Let's see if you can reach step two. Flaring my aura a bit. Gobta immediately jumps back and gets ready. But don't expect me to give you any chances. If you want to grow stronger, take your chance by force. The goblin captain grinned wildly at the veiled encouragement. I'm gonna beat you old man. And then you'll be singing my praise too. Ha ha ha. Audacious brat. Very well. Giving back a terrifying grin, I respond in kind. Make me. 
The sound of wooden swords clashing echoed across the training grounds. To see my students grow stronger with every passing day, I feel pride swell in my chest. And so far, Gobda is the most promising student I ever encountered. He will surely become a true master swordsman in the future. And he took his first step by managing to land a hit on me. It is indeed a beautiful day. Dirty little demon. Vitandi's Pav. Today is a slow day, which means relaxing. I am currently messing around with the people at City Hall. I asked Hajin and the other dwarves to make life-sized stone statues of me and Ramuru in our original forms, to put them across the building randomly. Why, you might be wondering. It's simple. I have an intrinsic skill called Petrified Idol that turns me into a statue. By also hiding my aura I'm indistinguishable from these statues. So I'm currently hiding as a statue, while the people here were told that if they can find me, I'll grant them one request they have. I was overlooking the lounge with several other statues, blending in quite nicely. You'd think that being a statue is uncomfortable, but I'm gonna be honest here, it's quite relaxing. No muscles means I don't get stiff from being in the same position for hours. I actually dosed off a few times now. A few goblinas come into the room and start gossiping about their work. Some things never change. Hey, have you seen Miss Ultima today? Yeah, she was looking around the building. I think she wants to find Lady Vitandi. I wonder what kind of request she has. Well, between us, I think she has some naughty thoughts about our lady. So I'm not the only one who thinks that. I mean, I understand why. Lady Vitandi is so beautiful. And adorable. And strong. Do you think if I were to find her, I could ask something dot intimate? Huh, you want to be her lover too. Of course I do. Who wouldn't want to be? Just imagine, Lady Vitandi standing above you with those Jorgus eyes staring down at you, telling you in a commanding voice to Takaya. I wouldn't mind that either. I have an entire fucking harem in the making what the fuck. Rimuru does it surprise you? No. But now I'm starting to worry about what will the one who finds me ask for. Rimuru I have a feeling it will be your number one simp. Yeah, I'm afraid of that too. Rimuru I don't think you have to worry about anything. What if Ultima really wants to have sex with me? Rimuru send me the footage. Oi. Rimuru kidding. Just kidding mostly. Huh. Rimuru anyways. I'm going to the Dryads to check on Apito and Zijin. I'll be back in a few hours. Have fun. The Goblinas left and I started to dose off again. Until a certain purple-haired demoness walked into the room. She started looking at the statues one by one until she reached me. Giving me an innocent smile she spoke. I found you, Lady Vitandi. Deactivating petrified idol and turning back to my human form, I pat her head. Yes you did. Good job. Vitandi okay people. Ultima found me. Thanks everyone for playing along. Now then, what would be the reward you want Ultima? She blushed a deep crimson color and started to fidget. Ooh boy, here it comes. Walking a bit closer she answered in a barely audible whisper. Please step on me. Ooh so she is really that subservient to me. If that's what she wants, I think I can give it to her. Not here. We are going to my house. She nodded eagerly, still blushing heavily. Going back to my place we went to the bedroom because if I'm gonna indulge her perversion, at least I want to have the right environment. I think I'm gonna do it in a Demina way. Turning towards her I ordered, get on all four. She immediately dropped down, blushing and panting. Sheesh girl, you look thirsty. Since she is so into this, let's play a little bit. Sitting down on her back sideways, I pull my legs up, resting the right one under me, while putting the left on the back of her head. I can feel her shudder in excitement. So tell me Ultima, why did you ask me for this? Panting, she responded. We demons value strength, and when our master is so strong it's our plea honor to be in a position like this. Hmm, so it's really like that. In that case, lifting my hand up I slapped her ass, earning a cute yelp from Ultima. I heard that slip up, giving another slap and pushing her head a little with my feet. I asked her, what were you going to say? Am my lady? I don't know. Giving another slap, her yelp was getting closer to a moan. Should I stop? And no, my lady. I I was going to say pee pleasure. It causes me pleasure to be in this position. What a bottom. I'm starting to enjoy this. I see. Caressing her ass gently I lift up her skirt. He, even your panties are purple. Cute. Slap tell me Ultima. What draw you to me? I remember that you liked my magic and how much I enjoyed life. But at the beginning you were stronger than me by quite a big margin. I just wanted to slap Kaya. And my lady, I only wish to serve slap Kaya. You. But I thought demons only serve those stronger than them. 
I it was a long term plan slap NHN, I saw how fast your strength grew, slap 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 ah, NHN, I I knew you will be stronger than me in no time, stretching my right leg out I started rubbing her face, I see, it makes sense, hmm, I could use my tails as whips, one for each booty cheek, so you choose me as your mistress because I qualified for all of your criterias, slap slap does this mean you would have chosen anybody if they got what you wanted? And no, I only want to serve slap 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 now. Nah, I only want to serve you, nobody else. Good, because you are mine. Rubbing my feet against her face I could feel her hot breath. She started sniffing and kissing it. Damn, this feels good. Rubbing her soft little butt that was turning red from all the smacking it got. I tilt her head with my feet so I can look into her eyes. Ultima, my sing-song voice makes her shudder. Who told you you can kiss my feet? Her eyes widened as she stopped, staring at me with anticipation. My lady, I, S-H-S-H-S-H-S, standing up from her back. I moved to the bed to sit there. Come here, lay down on my knees. She obeyed without a word. Lifting her skirt up, I look at my handiwork. Her otherwise pristine white skin was a very alluring shade of red from all the spanking. Tell me, how should I treat such an audacious little demon like you? Slap, lusting over your mistress's feet. Slap, you dirty little demon. Slap, NHN, why yes, I'm your dirty little demon. P please punish me, rearing back my hand. I smacked her behind so hard, Ultima jumped a little from the impact. Her loud moan told me everything I needed to know. So you wanted to get punished all this time? Leaning into her ear I whispered in a sensual tone. I think I know what I'll do to you. I started slapping her ass relentlessly, not stopping for a second. Ultima's moans echoed around the room. Why yes, NHN, ah, ah, punish this dirty little demon, mistress. I was a really bad girl. Her shuddering body was squirming as I kept slapping her pretty little ass, until one of the sounds I heard differed from the rest. Squelch, stopping her spanking. I looked at my hand that was sticky with some liquid. Would you look at that? You came. Ultima was panting heavily, trying to deny it. I I didn't didn't cum dot. Pulling down her panties in one swift motion she yelped in surprise, looking at her beautiful pussy soaked and leaking like a riverfall. I laughed. Then what happened back here? Dragging a finger up her thigh and pussy, I look at her nectar. Her moans as I touched her really, and I mean really started to turn me on. Reaching to her face, I put that finger into her mouth. Clean it. She started sucking on my finger, replacing her juices with saliva in my fur. All the while moaning heavily, pulling my finger out, I reach down to pull her panties up. There you go. Slap. Now go back to work. But clean yourself up before that. She stood up, a deep blush still on her face. Thank you Lady Vitandi. Standing up myself, I leaned in and licked her ear. You're welcome. I don't think this was the last time. I could feel her body shivering from my words. Off you go. Yes, mistress. Hua Ramuru. Ramuru what's up? Ultima was the one to find me. Ramuru what did she ask for? She asked me to step on her. Ramuru I am not surprised. Did you do it? You could say that. Ramuru I can't wait to hear it. I'll send you the footage, as you so cleverly phrased it. Okay? Ramuru wait. Answer. Memory has been copied and transferred. What? Ramuru now I have to hide a boner among the dryads. PFT. Ha ha ha. Good luck with that. Hmm. I wonder if the other primordial demons are like Ultima and Diablo. If so, maybe I should try to summon them. Planning a family. Milam's Pov. For the last few weeks I've been having lots of fun. Deciding to live in Tempest was probably my best idea ever. There is just so many things to do. Especially since I slowed down the training of my adorable little brother and sister, Ramuru and Vitandi. They've been growing way faster than I imagined. So it's not a big deal if we just kick back and relax. Altho Vitandi can take that to an extreme. Last week she spent an entire day as a statue at City Hall. Seriously, who does that? So now I'm going to get her to play with me. I was thinking about fighting some dragons. Honing in on her location I land next to the canal where we usually have our picnics. And unsurprisingly, Vitandi is sleeping like a rock. Literally. She started using her skill to get comfortable. So she can sleep anywhere easier. Crouching down I poke her head. Hey Vitandi. Wake up. Come on. How can you sleep this much? After a few seconds she unpetrifies and stretches, yawning. N-N-N-N-G-H. How do you always find me? Milla might remember. Oh yeah. So what's up? Wanna fight some dragons? No. Nah. Why not? You sleep too much. Jumping on top of my head, she nestled in and got comfortable. Try it. Lay down and just enjoy the peace and quiet. We can talk about anything and just relax in general. Pouting a little, I reply. That sounds boring. Give it a try. 
Fine, but next time, we are going to fight some dragons. Laying down under a tree I put Vitani on my chest, so I can pet her easier. She quickly starts purring happily. At least you are cute. Ha ha ha. Thank you sis. I could feel a small blush crawl up my face. I still didn't get used to Vita and Ramuru calling me sis or big sis sometimes. Laying there, I felt myself relax. It actually feels good to just exist without doing anything. Wow. I didn't expect to enjoy this. Vitandi broke the silent atmosphere. I've been wondering you are one of the ancient demon lords, right? Over 2000 years old and stuff. Yeah. Why? You know a lot. You obviously have a lot of life experience. Dot. Have you ever considered getting married? Hmm dot not really. It never even crossed my mind. She looked at me curiously. Have you ever liked someone in that way? Nope. Who would even be a good candidate? The only person strong enough that I could consider worthy is a perverted demon. Vitandi looked surprised. Someone to just have sex with? I just shook my head. I never felt that kind of urge before. That cat on my chest looked more and more shocked. You never touched yourself. I couldn't help but sigh. You and Ramuru are two big perverts. Not everyone is so focused on these kinds of pleasures. But it's not just not so focused, you never even experienced it. Hmm dot I mean, I could try it once, but it seems like a hassle, especially with a partner. Nah, I think I'm good. Vitandi stared at me dumbfounded for a little bit before responding. To think my older sister is happy being a virgin one way or another, I'm gonna hook you up with someone. You are oddly obsessed with sex. Of course I am. It feels amazing. Isn't the main reason to mate with someone to have children? Maybe if you are an animal. But intelligent beings do it more so for pleasure. I see then what about you and Ramuru? Don't you want kids? She swatted at my face with a paw. I idiot. We are too young to have K-kids. Not to mention we are way too busy with building our nation. We wouldn't have time for them yeah, that sounds like a problem. And I'm not ready to become pregnant. Hmm. You could do it in other ways. She tilted her head in confusion. What? You get a bunch of slimes. You and Ramuru feed them your magicules and name them. With that, they'd evolve into a unique monster with intelligence like your children would be. Dot you are right but it'd be more like adopting children. Dot suddenly, Vitandi's face lit up. I could mix in other people's magicules as well to make them even more unique. She looked at me with an excited light in her eyes. Wahahaha. You are thinking about using my magicules, aren't you? You are among the strongest beings in the world. Of course I do. Giving her a teasing smile, I reply. So you want to have my children? WHWH what are you talking about? She started smacking my face adorably with her paws. Wahahaha. Milam, you pervert. Wahahaha. Wahahaha. Demonic desire. Diablo's pav. Another perfect day has arrived, that I could bask in the glory of my beloved lord. Oh, how fortunate I am. His benevolence granting peace and prosperity to his subjects is a sight to behold. Day after day, I see monsters and humans alike showering him with their praise. Even in his private life, the choices he makes are exquisite. Nothing proves that more than his chosen partner. Lady Vitandi, a powerful magian and extraordinary magic user. She is perfect in every way for my lord, and seeing how she tamed Violet, a truly legendary feat, I couldn't be happier. But recently, I've been having urges. Impure thoughts plaguing my mind. At first they weren't this abundant. But ever since I saw Ultima and Lady Vitandi leave one day, only for my fellow demon to return disheveled, sporting a flushed face my mind has been occupied. Spending every day with Lord Ramuru, I find myself imagining certain situations. But it seems my lord, my god, has shown his brilliant light upon me. Ramuru's Pav. It was a quiet day in the office. Tempest was steadily growing, and the people really put some elbow grease into their work. Diablo, my handy secretary was organizing the papers I had to check and sign. Such an efficient butler. And hot too. Hua. Vitandi. Vitandi sup. I'm starting to think I'm not as straight as I thought. Vitandi oh, who is it? Who isn't it's Diablo? Vitandi yeah, he is the kind of sub boy you would tease under the office desk. What do you think I should do? Vitandi send me the footage. We just can't help ourselves, can we? Vitandi to be fair, we kinda got ourselves a literal army of harem members. From zero to hero as they say. Alright, fuck it. Vitandi I can't wait to see this movie. Pervert. Vitandi said the guy who was about to make love to his butler. Like you're one to talk. Mistress of a certain demoness. Vitandi don't you have a demon to fuck? Chop chop. I wanna see it. Hua. Diablo. Yes, my lord. Please inform the others to not disturb our work for the next few hours, then return to me. At once, my lord. He quickly told everyone and came back. Come here, Diablo. 
He stood next to me while I was still sitting in my chair. How may I be of service to you, my lord? Reaching around his waist I pulled him closer. He looked surprised and quite happy. Let's just roll with the flow. With my right hand I grabbed his butt and with my left I started caressing his growing erection. I have a different kind of serving in my mind than usual. I could feel his body shivering from excitement. My body belongs to you, my lord. Pulling his dick out in one swift motion and giving it a slow hand job, I replied, of course it belongs to me, and I'm gonna enjoy it, but I'm also a kind master. So tell me Diablo. Blowing gently on the tip of his penis, I ask him, what would you like me to do? Be honest, the pleasure and lust was as clear as day on his face. And my lord, I couldn't possibly. Giving a quick lick to the tip he let out a surprised moan. I said be honest. That's an order. Why yes, my lord. I would all like to put it in your mouth. Seeing his flustered face turns me on quite a lot. I think I'm gonna enjoy this. Leaning close to his dick that my lips almost touches it. I ask him. Hmm. Put what in my mouth? I don't understand. You have to be specific, Diablo. His dick twitching in my hands he stutters out his response. I I'd like to pee put my pee penis in your mouth. Ha ha ha. See, that wasn't so hard. Unlike you. Sticking my townge out. I slowly put his rather impressive length into my mouth. He lets out a low moan as I slowly swallow him, shuddering from the sensation. As I reach the bottom I move my hand under him to fondle his balls. Since I don't have to breath, I can play with him all I want. Manipulating the inside of my throat I start pumping him without moving. Ah, uh -uh, my lord, it feels good. He, still playing with his balls with my left hand, I reach further with my right. There, I found the place where the sun don't shine. Being a slime means I'm always stocked up on lube. Pushing in a slender finger, Diablo moans loudly. I can feel him getting closer. And my lord, I'm close. Ramiro then tell me, where do you want to shoot your load? Don't forget, be honest. His hand reached for my head, carting through my hair with his fingers. I inside. I w want to see cum inside my lord's mouth. Ramuru good boy. As I praised him, he came his thick load into my throat. Slowly pulling myself back, an audible pop sounded as his dick got free. Tell me Diablo. I twirled my finger inside him, earning a moan and a shudder in return. What would you like to do next? His eyes were glowing with happiness and desire. Please allow me to pleasure you in the same way you did me. Pulling my chair back a little, I motioned to him. Then kneel for me, Diablo. In the next moment he was under the table, breathing heavily. Pulling my pants down, my cock slapped him in the face, smearing precum all over his cheek. You look happy on the floor. Does it make you feel this good? To be my dog? Yes, my lord. An immediate response. What a shameless demon you are. Getting into your desires. Rubbing my dick across his face. He gets more and more excited. What are you waiting for? Your master is getting restless. Without another word he deep-throated my erection in one go. Bobbing his head up and down, I grabbed a handful of his hair. Ooh, yes. Letting out a satisfied hum, I relax into my chair. You know, I have quite the big libido. I hope you are prepared to stay there for a while. My only response was a more enthusiastic blowjob. Stretching my legs a little, I start rubbing his dick with my boots. Diablo's moan rumbles across my cock, adding to the sensation. You are such a good boy, Diablo. Sucking your master's penis so reverently. You are a real cock slut, aren't you? His eyes were sparkling with joy and lust. Well, here comes a big load. Make sure to swallow every drop, my adoring dog. Releasing a huge load into his throat, I can feel him swallowing. Hmm, good. Keeping his head moving, I smirk down at him. I see you came all over my boots. Did it feel good, being pleasured by my feet? A few hip movements was my answer. I see. Then feel free to coom as much as you'd like. After all, caressing his face gently, I always take care of my beloved pets. And that's how we spent the next few hours. Vitandi. Vitandi where is my yaoi footage? Great sage. Notice. Memory has been copied and sent to individual, Vitandi Tempest. Vitandi that's hot. I feel like we are going through some drastic changes in personality. Vitandi I feel like it's obvious why. Why? Vitandi we were two virgins before with ordinary lives. Now we found true love and gained nearly 200,000 loyal followers. Who, I'd like to add, happily put it out for us. It also helps that they look good. So it got to our head. Vitandi I don't think it's a bad thing. Everyone is happy with the arrangements. You know what? You are right. We should just enjoy our lives to the fullest. Vitandi exactly. Now what do you think about having a threesome with Ultima? Another time, I kinda emptied the metaphorical tank today. Vitandi okay, I'll go play with her anyways. Have fun kitten. Love you. Vitandi love you too. Small source, big headache. 
sky crimsons pov, up in the far north, deep in the frozen continent, stood a castle of ice. This was a domain of two of the strongest beings in the world. The white ice dragon, Velzard and the first demon lord, Guy Crimson. In the throne room of the grandiose frozen palace, a demon with a crimson mane sat atop his throne, looking utterly bored out of his mind. Nothing special happened in the last few centuries. The only mildly significant thing being Voldora's disappearance. But even if died, he should revive soon. The only interesting thing about him is the fact that it takes him this long to come back. As for the rest of the world, nothing is happening. Rudra and I are still trying to one-up each other. The younger demon lords are playing among themselves. The older ones don't do anything new. Well, Milam has been surprisingly quiet recently. Maybe she found a new toy. If so, I might have to welcome a new new demon lord on the council in a few decades or so. I just hope it won't be boring. As for Ramorous, hmm, she moved to a different place. Jura? And Milam is also there. Maybe those two are playing together. I just hope it won't make my work more difficult. As if on cue, the ring that allows the demon lords to talk with one another started glowing. Yo, guy, how did Leon say it? Speak of the devil and they shall appear? Ramorous, it's been a while. To what do I owe the pleasure? Knowing her, she is going to brag about something she did. I just wanted to let you know that Milam and I adopted two magins. What? They will probably awaken in a few years at most. Once that's done we'll introduce them to you and the others. I can feel a serious headache growing. Is this how Veldanava felt when he ruled over everything? What do you mean you and Milam adopted two magins? How did she convince Milam to do that? What does Milam think? Don't sweat the details. My baby and her mate are already amazing. Since Milam started training them. They became stronger than the younger demon lords. Her face looked not smug, but actually proud. Just who are these two magins? And did she just say Milam is training them? They even tamed two primordial demons. I am really glad I wasn't drinking anything, because I'd have spat out all of it. What? Who? How did they do that? Just who are these magins? Noir and Violet. Noir was always weird. So I can see him choosing to serve a random magin for fun. But Violet, just how did they convince her? If they just became stronger than the younger demon lords, they couldn't have defeated her. Did Milam tame her for those two? Oh, but my baby and her mate named them. Without even drinking, without even needing to breath. I felt myself choke on my own spit. Noir's name is Diablo, and Violet's name is Ultima. How could two demon lord seeds tame and name two primordials? Ramorous, explain. She just waved her hand dismissively. You are getting worked up over nothing. Nothing explain. Now. Sheesh. You are so pushy. Fine. Ultima wanted to become my baby's sex pet, and Diablo, well, Diablo had some dignity in the beginning. But he took a liking to my baby's mate so much that he is basically his dog now. A well-kept, happy dog. What? What? What's going on? I can feel my mind hurting. What the hell? Like I said, stop working yourself up over it. Once they awaken you'll get to meet them at Walpurgis. Okay guy, focus on information gathering. Ramorous, please explain in a cohesive manner. Who are these magins to you and Milam? And how did two primordials became their pets? She looked ready to just cut the communication link. Ugh, what did you not understand? You are so stupid. I'll explain it one more time. My baby is my baby. She has a mate. Milam adopted both as little siblings. Diablo wanted to be a butler, but he is a pervert like you and became a dog. Ultima wanted to have fun with my baby and discovered that she likes being my girl's sex toy. Do you understand or are you even stupider than I thought? We will talk later. Ramrus shrugged and said her farewells. Just don't bother us until they awaken. You might ruin our hard work. Milam and I are still trying to convince them about becoming demon lords. That's all. Okay, bye. What the hell happened while I wasn't looking? Ramrus referred to one of the magins as her baby. Does this mean she formed a familial pact with her? That girl has a mate who is as strong as her. Milam also adopted them. Forming a familial pack with Milam would speed up anyone's growth. And she also trains these two. As for Noir and Violet no, Diablo and Ultima. Did they really become sexually attracted to these magins? It sounded like that. Noir, I can see. His mind always worked in different ways. But Violet was all about torturing others for her own pleasure. To think someone would interest her this much if they'll truly awaken in a few years at most, I might actually have some fun soon. Ha ha ha, I can't wait to see these two. Just what kind of monsters they'll become? From a portal, a beautiful young girl stepped out in front of Guy. Her short stature, pristine white skin, snow white hair and ice blue eyes, all radiated divinity. You look excited. Velzard, it seems Milam and Ramrus are about to shake the world up. Yes, I'm sure they will entertain you. 
Now that I think about it, those two Magins probably appeared around the time Voldora disappeared. Maybe they know what happened to him. That interested the true dragon a little. Then perhaps I shall accompany you to the next Walper just to ask them. To think such great news and headaches could come from such a small source. Despite her looks and demeanor, Ramrus is still a terrifying individual. No matter what I have to do. Milam's Pov. I was sleeping peacefully in my bed when Ramuru and Vitandi rudely bursted into my room, waking me up. Milam, wha what happened? I'll beat them up for you. They bounced onto me in their original form, talking over each other. Guys, guys, I can't understand what you are talking about. Slow down. What's wrong? We sat down on my bed. Turning into their human form they showed their head to me. Ramuru spoke up first. Do you see this? Looking closer, I could see some different colored strands of hair. They were pink. Vitandi showed her hair next. In his hair it kinda blends in, but in my fur it's glaringly obvious. She also had some pink strands. You look cute with it. But why did you have to wake me up for this? I asked them grumpily. Vitandi just tackled me in a hug. What do you mean? We didn't wake you to show off our new hair. It turned pink on its own. And it's Milam pink your hair color. What happened? Pulling my hair forwards I looked at mine, then at theirs. Huh. It really is the same color. Ramuru bounced unhappily next to me. Why did we start turning pink? You never said we'd change color like this. It even shows in our original form. Look. He turned back into his slime form, and sure enough, I could see some faint pink lines running down on his left side. Looking at Vitandi she also turned back, and I could see pink lines in her fur, running along her back. My fur is dark blue, which means it shows a lot. But more importantly, what does this mean? We asked our skills and they didn't have an answer. It was Ramuru and I that figured out it's your color. I hugged them close to calm them down a little, while I was thinking. This seems odd, but I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Let's see they've been receiving my magicules for months now. This doesn't just strengthen them, but also affects their evolution. But my pink hair isn't dragon related. Hmm, but pink is my color, I got it. They looked at me expectantly. Remember how our connection affects your evolution? Yup. Yeah, that's because of my nature as a dragonoid, which is slowly absorbed by you through my magicules. Uh, huh, okay. But because Ramuru is a slime, basically liquefied magicules held together by a soul. And Vitandi is a Nekamata, a species very close to spiritual beings. My very essence is showing in you too. That's why we got pink? Yup. Look, I collected some magicules in my hand. It's pink, the color of my aura, and my hair too. Because your bodies are so full of magicules, taking after me you started to get pink. Vitandi bumped her head into my chin. So it's not something dangerous. Like we are too weak and your magicules started to take over our bodies? Wahahaha, <laughs> of course not. Don't worry, you two are perfectly fine. Even better. This means you are adapting to my power. You'll get stronger even faster than before. They sighed in relief and relaxed in my arms. Rimuru asked me as he snuggled closer. Does this mean we'll fully turn pink? I don't think so. That would mean you two fully adapted to me and became dragonoids in essence. For that to happen, you'd have to grow on my magicules for centuries. And besides, once you two awaken as demon lords, your souls will be too strong to get influenced by me. They hummed in response and got comfortable in my lap. These two are really kids. Huh. Do you two want to sleep with me? Rimuru hugged me with his little slime hands. Yeah. Vitandi just purred in response. Laying back down I hugged them close. You don't have to worry about anything. I'll protect you too. I'm their older sister now. So I'll make sure they aren't just safe. But also feel safe to think anyone would ever grow on me this much. But I don't regret it. Ever since I came here, my life has been so much better. I have a lot of friends. I have a family. And they care about me just as much. I love you too. Good night. Love you too, sis. He, I definitely made the right choice. And I'll make sure I won't lose you like I dot. I won't lose you too, no matter what I have to do. Memories. Ramrus's Pov. I've been around for a long time. I was among the first beings created by Veldanava, the queen of spirits, maker of heroes, the one who ensures balance is kept in this world. But a lot of things happened since then. I created many many children of my own. Spirits governing aspects of reality. Their many offsprings that followed only expanded my family. All the way down to lesser spirits. In the circle of life, death and reincarnation, a lot of things changed. And the world moved on. During the immeasurable amount of years, 
I only experienced loss three times. The first time was also the most devastating of them all, because I lost an entire species of spirits to the cruelty of this world. To witness my children being stripped of their rights, the lives they were meant to spend with me for eternity, I was heartbroken. It took my beloved creator countless years to bring back some of the vigor I lost back then. And so the world moved on. The second time was when that very same creator lost his life, the person who brought creation to be, the one who granted me life, the one who consoled me when I was ready to give up, lost to the cruelty of this world. All who knew the creator mourned him, even that demon who got appointed as a mediator of mankind, to honor his memory. We continued our duties in keeping his most beloved creation safe, and so the world moved on. The third and last time was the one a young girl, merely a child, haunted by her loss, left alone in a world that knew no mercy. Her powers were above everybody else's, but she was just a child. She wasn't asking for this power, she just wanted her family. But her family was lost to the cruelty of this world, taken by mankind in an attempt to gain her powers, much like my children. She lost control, rampaging across the land, destroying everything in her path, unable to hear or see what was happening around her. So me and that demon set out to soothe her. While the demon battled her in an attempt to bring the girl back to her senses, I protected the world. The amount of power released in that battle would have gave birth to countless terrifying monsters. And to prevent that, I absorbed all the energy released during the confrontation that lasted seven days and seven nights. And in the end, all that negative energy tainted my very being, reducing my very existence, weakening me, taking away what was rightfully mine, turning me into a shadow of my former self. Even after everything I've done, everything I went through, it didn't matter. And so, when I lost to the cruelty of this world I moved on. I joined the mediator and the girl as a founding member of the Demon Lord Council, abandoning my original duty. I still helped people who wanted to become heroes, but I couldn't care less about the rest of the world. Why should I care? It took and took and took from me, hurting me, leaving me alone and broken. I don't care what happens to this godforsaken creation anymore. I remember the superior spirits surrounding me, once I returned. My queen, did you really join hands with the demon lords? Why do you care? Yes. But what about the balance we were meant to keep? The world can burn for all I care. What about it? My queen, you are supposed to be impartial. And I'm still impartial. The world will do what it wants anyways. And my queen, do what you want for all I care. My queen, what happened to you? What happened to me? What happened to me? What happened to me? I lost everything. That's what happened. No matter how hard I worked, no matter what I did, this world kept taking away the things most precious to me. All because this world that I kept in balance is built on cruelty. I lost my children. I lost my beloved creator. My very being was tainted and partially destroyed. My queen. Shut up, shut up. Shut up, shut up. I don't care anymore. I hid myself away in the depth of my labyrinth. Avoiding the superior spirits. I wept for hours, days, weeks, years. I couldn't stop the flow of tears. Why? Why did you make this world like this? Velda you said this world was meant to be our home. The place where we can all live freely. Didn't you say, you love this world? Us. Then why did you made the world hurt us so much? Hurt me so much? After many years. I started coming out of my isolation. It's not like I had death to await me. Before I fell from grace I was truly immortal. Now that I became this thing even if I die, I just come back. I don't even have the mercy of forgetting who I was. To let a new queen of spirits take my place. I'm bound to this existence. No matter how much I wish to end it. So I started taking care of the lesser spirits, dedicating my time to nurture and protect them. From time to time, a human came to attempt becoming a hero, and from time to time, I met up with the slowly growing circle of demon wards. And as the years passed, turning into centuries I started to smile again. Some of the demon wards were my friends. The lesser spirits I raised grew into splendid spirits of their own. I started to feel like the maelstrom in my soul finally calmed. I built myself a circle of friends I can have fun with. My children were happy. The superior spirits also shared in my joy even after I was so mean to them, leaving them alone for decades. And one fateful day, that I knew marked a change for the better. Boom Ramorous. Ramorous, I came to visit. I brought a friend too. And with the same abruptness I experienced all those devastating losses. 
and Nekamata, the first thing that was ever taken from me returned, waving shyly at me, with those beautiful deep blue eyes looking at me innocently. That was when I knew it. The inherent law of this world was built on cruelty, but in that instant, I saw the change. The change that would finally bring back my happiness. The change that would abolish the darkness I desperately tried to ignore in my heart. And every day I spent with my beloved child and her found family, I felt the light that once shone from my soul reignite. Haha <laughs> thanks, mom. My life, after so many tormented years, became filled with joy. Every second of it taking over a year of damnation. And I knew for a fact, I'd gladly destroy this creation for you. My beloved Batandi. Ramura's Pav. Buam buam buam. The sound of enormous explosions could be heard echoing through the forest. Ominous black light glowing from a large clearing, blinking in and out of existence. If you were to pay close attention though, you could hear the sounds of metal clashing against rock, just before an explosion followed by the light. These phenomena were coming from a large clearing where a lone figure could be seen standing. His red hair that usually stays chaotically styled, sticks to the figure's forehead from sweat. In his right hand a katana, clad in deadly black flames. He raises his sword once again, moving faster than the eye could see as he dashes forward. Cutting through several boulders in less than a second, all gets consumed by the fire. Clapping my hands, the figure turns his head towards me. I can see you are hard at training, Benimaru. Benimaru gives me a smile in return, his breathing heavy. Lord Ramuru. Yes, I thought that since we are having peaceful times, I can leave my duties as the army general to my subordinates and train on my own. It's okay to work hard, but don't forget to take proper breaks. Seriously, you guys don't know when to rest. Benimaru chuckled at the familiar chastising. I know, my lord, I know, but I can't help myself. Letting out a small sigh I shake my head. I swear I'm surrounded with battle maniacs. Ha ha ha, it is true, I enjoy a good fight. But it's not just that. Hmm, don't leave me hanging like that. Tell me. He gave me a smile and sat down on a relatively intact rock. To be honest, it's hard to put this into words. Plopping down next to him and leaning on his shoulder, I nudge him a little. I have a lot of free time, you know. Being used to me and Vita acting so physical with everyone, he pats my head. I found it annoying at first, but it sure as hell was a step up from being openly worshipped. Thanks to you and Lady Vitandi. We have found a new home, a new goal. We became much stronger than before. We also reunited with the other ogre villages. A fond smile appeared on his face as he spoke, but it quickly faded as he continued. But from time to time, I still have nightmares. I'm back in our old village, everything is on fire. People are dying all around me, and I stand there helpless, only capable of running away. I could see the guilt in his expression. Reaching an arm around I hugged him. It wasn't your fault. No, it wasn't. But I was still powerless. Even after gaining all this power from you, I feel like it isn't enough. I have to become stronger. To make sure that hellish scene never happens again. He regained some of his previous cheer. I know that with you and Lady Vitandi, we are guaranteed a safe life. But I still wish to better myself. So when I arrive home at the end of the day, I can confidently tell my sister and the others. Everything will be alright? It was an unexpected heart to heart, but I'm glad he trusts me like this. I think you are doing great, Benimaru. Giving an encouraging squeeze into the half hug, I pat his head as I stand up. You have nothing to worry about. Thank you Lord Ramuru. Waving back at him, I say my goodbyes, have fun, and don't forget to rest. That's an order. Ha ha ha. How cruel, forcing me to rest when I want to train. Ha <laughs> ha, what can I say? I'm a really cold slime. Brute force. Ramuru's Pav. Sitting in my office chair I was doing paperwork. It's quite a big shock to think about. Doing paperwork in a world of magic and sword as a monster who leads other monsters. Honestly, it says more about me than this world. I know for a fact that Vita hates paperwork with a flaming vengeance. Literally, she set stacks of documents on fire multiple times when she got fed up with it. Watching Shuna scold her was hilarious though, but she managed to lessen her workload in that regard thanks to me, Diablo and Ultima. Those two demons made my work easier as well. I guess when you are older than the material world itself, things tend to stuck to you other than dust. The sound of the door opening had me look up, and to my surprise Xion walked in, looking exhausted and slightly limping. This wasn't the first time something like this happened. In the last couple of weeks she came into work with varying degrees of tiredness, but today was a whole new level. Xian, what happened? You look like you fought for your life and lost. Laughing cheerily she tried to wave away my concern, but winced from pain. It's nothing, Lord Ramuru. You don't have to worry about me. Sighing from her stubbornness, 
I got her to sit down on a couch. She tried to protest, but my glare silenced her. Giving her a full potion I wait for her to drink it. She again tried to tell me it's fine, but a simple drink it, or I'll make you. Convinced her otherwise. Rubbing my temple I look into her eyes. What happened? It's really nothing. You looked beat up. Did you get into a fight? She shook her head, vehemently denying it. No, my lord. I was simply training. Of course she was. And why didn't you get yourself healed up afterwards? She looked like a child getting scolded. To be fair, I was feeling like I'm scolding a child. I could handle it. Hua it's not about whether you can handle it or not. I don't want you guys to hurt yourself this much. And especially don't leave yourself injured like that. She fidgeted in place, hanging her head down. I just want to keep up with Benamaru and the others. Ah, here is the issue. I think you are already on par with the others. But it's not enough. She suddenly blurted out. Benamaru is the strongest of the Kijin, making him the fifth strongest person in Tempest, not counting Lady Milam. Sawe is doing all those secret missions and protecting everyone from the shadows. Hakuro might be weaker than us, but his experience with the sword more than makes up for it. She was close to tears. I can't do any of those things. What am I gonna do with them? Xian, you are one of the strongest warriors in the entire forest of Jura. You are literally in the top 10. But for how long? Everyone is training hard to get stronger. They are mastering new techniques I never managed to learn them. No matter how hard I tried with Hakuro. I don't have a talent for magic like Shuna. That's why I'm using a berserker sword. If I can't master the sword or magic, I'll be the strongest by brute force. Dot. But I can't even be useful in that regard. Delivering a chop to her head, she yelps out mostly from the surprise of it. All of you put too much value on power. I didn't accept you because of your strength. I did it because I like you guys. Tears slowly leak from her eyes. B, but what if I won't be strong enough when something happens? Dropping a hand in her head, I pet her hair. Then I'll protect you all. Because that's what I promised you guys. After a few seconds she laughed a little. I know. With you and Lady Vitandi, we have nothing to fear. Spreading my arms out, I smile at her. I'm not Vita, but if you want a hug she didn't let me finish and hugged me tightly. It took her a few minutes to calm down. Thank you Lord Ramuru. You're welcome. Listen, I know you still want to get stronger. I only ask you to take care of yourself. Don't grit your teeth to endure pain, when you can heal up without issue. Nodding back with a smile she stood up. I will, Lord Ramuru. She turned to leave, but before she could do that I stopped her. And Xian. Yes, my lord, no more training for today. Rest, that's an order. B, but, no buts. Today you rest. She looked a little dejected, but it's for her own good. Yes, Lord Ramuru and so, she sulked out of my office. Heaving a heavy sigh I can't help, but mutter to myself. I swear if I have to order one more person to rest. What's it like to have a father? Ramuru's pov. On one of my nightly outings, I noticed sounds coming from the training grounds. It was weird, considering it was the middle of the night. Taking a detour, a surprising sight welcomed me. There, standing alone and swinging a wooden sword with the most focused look I have ever seen on his face stood Gopta. Every swing was performed with such force that it pushed the air away, making a clean path in the dirt. And judging by the depth, Gopta was swinging that sword for a while now. Approaching silently I waited for him to notice me. But after 10 minutes it became clear, Gopta is in his own world now. Clearing my throat, I speak up. KHM, it's a lovely night, isn't it? The sword stopped mid-swing. He looked at me surprised. Lord Ramuru, what are you doing here? It's a bit late for a walk. The irony of that elicited a snort from me. Like you are one to talk. Why aren't you sleeping? Hakuro's training ain't enough for you anymore. I was expecting vehement denial, but I only got a chuckle in response. I guess if you look at it in a way, it isn't. Oh wow, that's new. What got into you? He scratched his head bashfully. It's nothing. I'm just having some extra training. Yeah, right. I am not buying it. If anything, you just made me even more curious. He looked around, probably searching for an excuse. But in the end he just sighed and started swinging his sword again. It's I don't know how to describe it. An urge? Desire? For what? Gobda hummed and thought. Forming his deeper emotions into words was never his forte. If I start ranting please stop me, okay? Yeah no. I wanna hear it. Ha ha ha. If my lord says so, who am I to decline? He sighed again, struggling to find a good starting point. I guess it starts from me being a goblin. Tell me Lord Ramuru, what do you know about goblins? 
Nothing. I only know the things I saw from you guys. Goblins, we are usually the weakest of the monster races. We live with the knowledge that any day can be the last. The term family is loosely defined because of that. We are raised together since most of us don't have both or any parents for that matter. His swing slowed for a moment. I never knew my parents. My mom died giving birth, and my dad died to some big monster, or so I've been told. This took a heavier turn than I thought. My condolences. It's not like I knew them, and it's a common thing for goblins. Not many would bother protecting us, much less giving us names. He gave me a small grin. You and Lady Vitandi are quite the weirdos. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I guess we are. His grin went as quick as it came. Anyway, when it came to life, I never thought too much about it. I'm gonna end up as something's meal. Might as well enjoy my life while I can. That's what I was thinking. Goofing off and stuff. Just living in the present Dottie got silent for a minute. But you two came along and changed things I suddenly had a future. A chance for something meaningful had not like I had any idea what to do with it. His face took on traces of melancholy, but it faded quickly. But things changed, haven't they? Yeah, they did. The ogres came along, and I thought, maybe I could become an actual warrior, the best swordmaster of this forest, if not the whole world, did end up here. So I started training, and maybe the old man saw something in me, I am not sure, but he gave extra attention to me. It felt nice. He likes to hide his praise and encouragement as taunts, but I can see it, feel it. Gobda had a genuine smile on his face. Hakuro really expects me to come through. Not because he wants to produce results. He does it because he believes in me. I see. You really look up to him, don't you? Yes. Which is why I work this hard. For the first time in my life, I feel like there is something I want to achieve. But that's not all. You look worried about something. The sword swing stopped. Gobda looked down, deep in thought. Hakuro is the best swordsman. Period. But still, he is getting older. He is leaving his prime. And he won't be able to fight in our stead forever. He looked up with determination. I could clearly see the fire in his eyes. So before the day comes where he'd have to face a challenge he isn't strong enough for anymore. I have to become stronger than him, so he can retire and enjoy the rest he deserves. His sword slashed a swing stronger than the previous ones, and another, and another. It seems that while we weren't looking, Gobda grew up. Hakuro means a lot to you, huh? The warrior, because Gobda wasn't just a goofy kid anymore, kept up his sword swings. I never experienced it myself, but when I'm with Hakuro when we talk when we train when we banter, I think I finally know what's it like to have a father. Hearing that, a warm smile spread across my face. I'm sure Hakuro is proud of you. A confident grin appeared on Gobta's face. A large, wide-open smile. I'll make him even more prouder. I'll defeat him while he is still in his prime. And show him that he has nothing to worry about. Even though our lord and lady will always be here, the next sword saint of the Jura Forest will also be by their side. How could I order you to rest after hearing this? Workaholics, all of you, turning around to leave, I wave back at him. Don't go overboard. No promises, my lord. Cheeky little green midget. Hua, standing between the trees, an old swordsman watched the two young men's conversation. What's it like to have a father? HMPH, my foolish student, I am already the proudest father I could be. To have met such a talented and dedicated young man, it seems that this old man is still favored by fortune. And I know I'll rest easy once you take up my mantle and rise to heights, even I couldn't reach. Breakdown. Ramuru's Pav. Wahahaha. You two are really putting your backs into this, aren't you? The dragonoid from hell laughed cheerfully. Hehag, <laughs> and that was my utmost effort put into replying. It's quite difficult to form coherent words when you are an amorphous blue smear on the wall. Goo it seems Vitandi is on the same page with me on this. She is currently buried under some rubble with only her head and an arm sticking out. We will go another round before taking a break. Ramura you are evil, a tyrannical demon lord. Wahahaha, I'm not called the destroyer for nothing. Come on, get up. Unsticking from the wall I take on my human form to dig out Vita. She looks like just how I feel. Vitandi mood. Yeah, ready or not, here I go. And with that measly warning, the pink-haired menace shot forward. Both of her fists charged up with her magicules, she rained down a hundred or so punches on the both of us. Dodging with all my might, I tried to attack back with gluttony to at least leave maybe a scratch on her. During our training I quickly discovered that my strongest skill for dealing damage is gluttony, because it apparently holds a skill seed. Which is a very fitting name, by the way. If a skill holds a skill seed, it has the potential to evolve into an ultimate skill. Whether it will turn out to be a sin or virtue skill, 
depends on the unique skill itself. Well, gluttony is kinda obvious, it's definitely a sin series, and because of that, it's superior to most unique skills. Not all of them though, as I learned that there are unique skills on par with ultimates, which sounds overpowered as hell, but me and Vita are also in that category. Turns out Great Sage and Akasic Records are truly the embodiments of the term unique. But let's focus back on the here and now, because even if it isn't permanent, I'm you know fighting for my fucking life. If I didn't have ultra speed regeneration, I would have turned into a beautiful paint job for the walls. Milam attacks relentlessly, not slowing down for a second. I dodge and weave, occasionally sending back a gluttony covered fist or kick but the sheer amount of power in Milam just prevents any damage. Sure, I drain some magicules, but it's like throwing cotton balls at a dragon. If anything, it just prolongs my demi, and I'm smeared onto the wall again. Milam, without even blinking, rushes Vitandi. She was forming an enormous spell in an attempt to fight back. It looks new. Great Sage, notice. The spell is a modified version of Nuclear Cannon. The properties infused into the spell are Black Flame, Black Lightning and Yaokai Flame. So all the big guns she has. Let's see what happens. Fuck this shit I'm out Vitandi's muffled voice echoed, while she didn't even try to get out of the rubble she got buried under. Wahahaha, that was a really good spell. It could damage any of the demon lords other than me or Guy. Yup, the spell that could damage any other demon lord the spell she quite literally blew away with an exhale and redirected it upwards. Milam scooped us up and left the labyrinth. On the journey back to the city she recharged us with magicules. As for the fright of flying with Milam that wore off after all this time. Landing down at city hall, we march off to eat. Welcome back. Lunch is almost ready. I prepared some refreshments and a change of clothes. Shuna, you are an angel. Thank you Shuna. You're welcome Lady Vitandi. Getting cleaned up and eating, we conclude our routine of training with Milam. I'll go back to the labyrinth. It's been a while since I hung out with just Ramaris. In these few months, Vita and Ramaris got closer. Now they are really like a mother-daughter duo. It's really sweet. Have fun. Now then, what should I do today? I have some pent-up stress to relieve. Actually, Milam, you are a girl who traveled the world a lot. Do you know any strong monsters? I could beat up? Yes, we could beat up some dragons. Um, aren't you a sort of dragon? Is it really okay for you to beat them up? Wahahaha, <laughs> I'm a dragonoid, silly. I'm related to true dragons, not those weak imitations. How cold? Anyway, then let's beat up some dragons. And with that, she already took off into the horizon. Hugging her tightly, I just enjoy the view as it rushes by. How fast are we going? Notice, approximately seven times the speed of sound. Jesus, by the way, where did this urge to fight come from? Milam looked at me curiously. Now, I could come up with a believable excuse, but our unique skills can tell if someone is lying. So, it's frustrating to get utterly defeated by you on a daily basis. So, I want to blow off some steam on monsters that I actually stand a chance against. Telling half-truths it is. She rubbed her face against mine with a smile. You're growing stronger at an impossibly fast rate. Trust me, you'll be a match for me in no time. Yeah, I know that's not the point. That's not the entire reason behind this though, is it? And with the same sharpness she likes to showcase from time to time, she sees through me in an instant. Hiwua, no, it's not. She slows down a little, paying more attention to me. What's wrong, Ramuru? It's just how should I say this? I don't feel good enough. I feel like I'm still not strong enough. Especially after seeing how everyone in Tempest works so hard. So they can show off their progress to a specific person. Gabda has Hakoro. Benamaru, Xian, Zawe and Shuna have each other. Vesta has Kajin. Gabiru has Vitandi. Vitandi has Ramrus Dot. I love every one of them. But I don't really have a specific person that I want to prove myself to. Vitandi is my girlfriend so of course I want to prove myself. But that's not the same who would have thought I'd get myself into an existential crisis like this in a fantasy world. In the end, I don't have bonds like them a certain someone to make proud. Coming to an abrupt halt, Milam lands down on the ground. Whoa, did we airy? I didn't get to finish because Milam enveloped me in a really tight hug. I could feel her face pressed into my hair. Rimuru, I am proud of you. Huh? W-H what? She repeated it in the same serious tone. I am proud of you. You are amazing. You keep showing me just how exceptional you are. I couldn't be happier to have you as my younger brother. After a few seconds, I bury my face in her neck, hugging her strongly. Feeling how genuine Milam is, I felt something come loose in me. Staying like this for a few minutes I try to relax into her hold. Rimuru, if you ever feel like you are down, you can always come to me. I'll be there for you, no matter what. You are a part of my precious family. 
I could feel some stinging in my eyes. I guess some phantom feelings remain from my life as a human, even if slimes can't cry. Rubbing my back and patting my head, Milam continues. I am and always will be proud of you, because you are a strong and amazing person. You are kind. You always look out for everybody. You always look after me, even though I'm stronger. You have a heart I can only admire. It's because of you and Vita I found a reason to live again, not just exist. M. Milam for some reason it's hard to talk. My throat feels tight, and my eyes hurt too. A weight I didn't know was in my chest, started rising. I want you to know that it's because of you too that the emptiness finally left from my heart. I am not just proud of you, I am grateful. Thank you. Sniff sniff I I couldn't form words. Only a choke sob escaped me. Clinging to Milam like my life depended on it. The weight I've been feeling formed into a lump in my throat. I it's been over a year since I got reincarnated here. Sniff I thought of this as a new world new me thing. But somewhere along the way, I realized that I am scared. And I don't have anyone that I could run to. I felt like a dam inside me just broke. Milam held me close, stroking my hair. I miss my family. Even if I was a middle-aged adult, I could always seek them for comfort. But in a brand new world with brand new people, I got thrown into many unexpected scenarios life or death situations. Sniff I tried to make a new home here, but I was at the top. I couldn't just break down in front of the people who rely on me. The emotions I tried to bottle up kept pouring out. I'm sure it was the same with Vita, but she found a mother figure. I couldn't just throw my burdens on her. I'm supposed to be the ruler of monsters. I have to be the strong and unbeatable leader for them. The great Lord Ramuru. I can't back down from a promise like that. And every time something happens, it's always our lord and lady will deal with it. I am not even an all-powerful demon lord. And suddenly they make me the guardian of the forest that was protected by a fucking true dragon. I never asked for this. I never wanted this. I just wanted a place to call home. A peaceful life. But I can't quit now. They look at me like I'm some kind of savior, putting me on a goddamn pedestal so high. I never wanted to imagine I was squeezing Milam's back, desperate for some form of reassurance. What if I'm not strong enough when a real danger appears? What if we lose people because I failed? I was breathing erratically, crying out all the doubts that kept growing in my heart. I am scared. I don't want to lose my friends. What do I do? Milam, I don't know what to do anymore. My mind is a jumbled mess. I want to protect everyone. I want to run away from all of this. I want to stop being this great overlord they think I am. I want to live up to all of their expectations. I, I, it's okay to cry. Milam said in a gentle tone, halting the unending stream of words. I know you worked incredibly hard. I know that since you don't need to sleep, you spend many nights working or training only to slip back before Vita wakes up. I know you always think about how to improve the lives of the people under you. I know you do anything to protect them. I know that even though you receive such a huge responsibility, you do your best. I know that even if it's too much, you would never abandon them. I know that you are scared after suddenly becoming the ruler of so many people. I know that despite all of your fears, you still stand tall, unwavering and strong. And I am the proudest older sister because of this. I am proud of you. Do you understand? I am proud of you. Crying loudly I bury myself in Milam's hug. I don't know how long we stood there in the middle of nowhere, but eventually I calmed down. Milam gently lowered us to a sitting position, still holding me in her embrace. Sniffling a little, but feeling like a huge weight has been lifted from my heart. I nuzzle my face against hers. Thank you, sis. I can feel her smile as she answers. No need to thank me. I just told you the truth. Milam if I ever feel like this again. I'll hold you until the last of your tears dried up, I promise. Thank you I collected myself slowly, trying to regain my composure. But a childish voice in the back of my head still craved for more Milam? Hmm. Are you really proud of me? Planting a kiss on my head she answered me with nothing, but pure kindness, making my heart soar from joy. Yes, I am proud of you. The small feeling of doubt vanished from my mind after hearing her words. I was wrong. Milam looked at me curiously. About what? Pressing my face against hers I told her, I have a certain someone I want to make proud. We enjoyed each other's presence for a while. Relaxing in her arms, she eventually asked me, Do you still want to fight some dragons? Haha, <laughs> I completely forgot about that. You know what? Why not? Maybe I'll get some cool dragon skills. Wahahaha, <laughs> that's the spirit. We are close anyway so let's go. And so, after my very much needed heart to heart. We continued our quest to slay some fearsome dragons, which went way easier than I thought. I just swallowed up a dragon that was breathing lightning with gluttony as my newest victim. I thought these dragons are super strong. 
Well, ha 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 ha, they are, you are just way stronger, but I'm only a few times stronger than before you. Milam flew around, laughing like a maniac. Well, ha 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 ha, well, ha 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 ha, when was the last time you checked your progress? Uh, around Charybdis, I think? Ask your skill. It will explain to you why was this so easy, great sage. Notice, compared to the strength you possessed before meeting the individual Milam Nava, your power is 2046% greater. I felt myself choke on air. I'm 20 times stronger than before I met you how. Well ha 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 ha, it's because of all the extra training you do on your own. You are almost twice as strong as Vita. Wait, really? Notice, individual Vitandi Tempest has grown 1238% stronger, compared to her power before starting training with individual Milam Nava. Dear Lord, just how strong are we? Milam was having trouble floating in one place from laughing too hard. Well, ha, ha 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 at this point you can count the people who can defeat you or at least have a chance. What? I mean it. Me, Guy, Dagrul, Luminous, Dino, Leon, Rudra, Velzard, Velgrind, Voldora, and maybe four or five more people I don't know about. That's about 15 people holy shit I'm broken as fuck. We are broken as fuck. Milam crashed into me with a hug. See, you don't have to worry about anything. You are really strong. Reciprocating the hug. I'm not in a daze. I guess I really am strong, but I can't forget the reason for that. Thank you Milam. I wouldn't have gotten this strong without you. She giggled at me. Of course you would have. You are amazing on your own. I just sped things up. Well thank you anyway sis. MHM, how about we head back home? I'm sure Vita wants to know what happened. Crap, I completely forgot she can feel my stronger emotions. My draconic big sister picked me up, like the little kid she liked to treat me as. You should talk about everything you told me with her. She is your mate. That doesn't just mean a partner in body, but in soul too. You shouldn't hide it when you are feeling down. She said it in a serious tone. I know that you are right, but sometimes I wish you were as childish as you sometimes act. Haha, <laughs> no matter what, my sisterly instincts will always kick in to help you with your problems. She booped me on the nose, and I let out a surprised yelp laugh dot. Why can't I be mad at her for treating me like a toddler, even if you feel like hiding it from everyone? Did I mention that Milam is holding me like she would a little kid? As in, I am held up by her left hand and laying against her front, my head resting on her shoulder. If you want to treat me like a kid, then I will also go along with it. Hey sis, can you carry me like this, while we get back? She nuzzled me with a happy smile on her face. Of course. And she took off, holding me tight and steady, soaring across the sky, back to Tempest. To her home. Vitandi's Pav. Milam and Ramuru went dragon slaying while I visited M. Ramaris. We were chatting about her new golem when I felt that something is wrong. Ramuru was incredibly sad and scared. I immediately reached through our connection to check up on him. Milam was with him, and from what I could gather, she was in the process of calming him down. After a while, things went back to normal, but I was still worried. What could have happened? When I felt them returning, I rushed to their landing spot. Spotting them I jumped on Ramuru, trapping him in my hug. Are you okay? He was stunned for a moment before hugging me back. I am. I just had a small breakdown with Milam. Glancing at Milam she gave back a smile. I'll leave you two to talk things out. And with that, she flew to her house. We also went home. Sitting down in the bedroom I waited for Ramuru to start talking. Laying on my lap he gazed into my eyes. Can I just send you the memory? Yes. In many ways, it means even more. Instead of trying to hide anything, he shares his mind with me. Infitmation has been received from Great Sage. Seeing what caused his breakdown, I couldn't help but glare at him. Giving a smack to his forehead, he yelps. Rimuru, I am going to quote you. I don't care how insignificant you view your problems. I'm always here to help. So talk to me. He snuggled a little before turning back into a slime, getting comfortable in my arms. I know. Hua, do you want to talk about anything? He remained quiet for a few seconds before answering. Am I doing a good job? I mean am I a good leader? Am I good enough? Yes. To all of your questions. You are amazing. I think I'll skip tonight's extra training. Petting him tenderly I lay down, hugging him like a pillow. Do you want to do anything? Can you keep holding me like this? Like I'm something precious? This silly slime. You are something precious. You are the love of my life. I love you, Vitandi. I love you too, Ramuru. The end thanks for watching subscribe our channel for more.